Shen Yin Wanzla. Chapter 751 to Chapter 800. Have fun reading as well as listening. Hey guys. Can I trouble all of you for a moment? Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you won't miss new audiobook updates. That's all. Thank you. Throne for Dragon, 1. The spiritual energy and realm were constantly increasing, while the light god domain was merging with the power of the eternal realm. The divine throne of eternity and creation was fully embodying the power of its role as a superdivine equipment, and its imposing aura was not the aura that other divine thrones could compare with. Ding! A melodious sound resounded, spreading over a thousand miles, and the divine throne of eternity and creation suddenly split apart. The thirteen lumps of pure white light rose into the air. At the moment they ascended into the air, the sunlight in the sky dimmed due to the suppression. It was as if it no longer existed, and thirteen new suns had replaced it. Long Chun raised his head to the sky, his eyes showing a fanatical look. At the same time, he raised both his hands, fall down, my eternal star. Those thirteen balls of eternal star shone with incandescent luster as they descended from the sky, rapidly fusing into Long Chun's body one after another, and his five hundred meters tall body rapidly shrank after each of them merged. When the thirteenth eternal star merged with his body, he had already returned to the size of an ordinary person and no longer felt illusionary. Everything returned to normal. Long Chun was still clad in his divine unicorn armor, but the divine throne of eternity and creation disappeared completely. Hitting his right fist against his chest, Long Chun performed a knight salute to all the knights in the dragon-resisting mountain pass. Clang! 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 The sound resounded at the dragon-resisting mountain pass. This was the knight temple's response to him from all the knights at the fortress. Not only these knights, but also the three divine knights in the air. From this moment onwards, Long Chun wasn't only the president of the new federation, but also the unprecedented divine knight of excellence and leader of the knight temple, the leader of the six divine knights. Dad, I've succeeded. Long Chun looked at Long Xingyu, who looked at him with a dull look. His eyes were filled with complicated emotions, such as gratification, excitement, and confusion. Han Yu and Zhang Fangfang had a completely different reaction. The two of them rushed to Long Chun's side, grabbing him and tossing him in the air, before retrieving their divine thrones. However, Long Chun didn't join his two brothers in celebrating. With a flash, he returned to their side, and after saying something in a low voice, Han Yu and Zhang Fangfang's expressions changed at the same time. The three of them greeted Long Xingyu, then rapidly flew back to the dragon-resisting mountain pass. Long Xingyu didn't understand what was going on either. He quickly followed them back. Although the four divine knights didn't display their might for a long time, the shock they brought to the dragon-resisting mountain pass caused the morale of the powerhouses from the knight temple to rise by an unprecedented amount. Kai Air when Long Chun returned to his comrades, he impatiently called out. Kai Air was just like a swarming swallow, fiercely rushing into his embrace, tightly hugging him. He couldn't say a word. The two of them had just had the most intimate relationship, and then Long Chun was disappearing for over a month. What a torment it was as to Kai Air. She kept herself strong, not wanting her companions to panic. After all, Long Chun wasn't here, she was the vice captain. But when her lover finally succeeded and returned, she could no longer suppress her emotions. Long Chun held Kai Air tightly, gently caressing her long hair. The others pretended not to see and turned their heads away. Clapping Kai Air's back, Long Chun declared in a deep voice, My apologies, everyone. I have been taking part in the examination for too long, making everyone worried. But we are afraid to act immediately. Hao Yue was already unable to suppress his own breakthrough. We've already started to break through the bottleneck. We have to get there immediately, or we won't make it in time. Originally, everyone was immersed in Long Chun's excitement and joy at his return. Hearing him say that, their expressions immediately became serious. They had followed Long Chun before, and faced the undead creatures of Yue's world several times. They were very clear on just how terrifying these undead creatures were. In particular, every time Yue evolved, the enemy's strength would get stronger. There was even a time when Yue's power had completely evolved, almost injuring his vitality after being interrupted. Yue's strength could destroy demon god pillars, and his evolution was of utmost importance to the entire light demon hunt squad. Boss, we are ready. Lin Exian had a complacent look on his face. Judging from his appearance, it was obvious that his cultivation had improved. Everyone had serious expressions, but after hearing Long Chun's words, their eyes were filled with excitement. Even Han Yu and Zhang Fangfang were no exception. The undead army was indeed powerful, but their demon hunt squad of light was incomparable to the past. In particular, everyone had just changed their equipment. Which one of them wasn't ready to make a big move? He would also be able to feel the might of his new equipment. Kai Air also stood up from Long Chun's embrace, her pretty face reddened, and she didn't say anything. Long Chun turned to Long Xingyu and said, Father, my mount is a creature from another plane. It is about to complete its evolution, and is very possibly the last time. I will take my companions to guard it. Protect it. 
Long Xingyu didn't expect that his son would immediately leave after completing the test of the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation, and couldn't help but ask with some concern, Can your body bear it? Long Haochen replied, Don't worry, I am currently at my peak condition, there won't be any problems. We'll be back in a minute. It shouldn't take long. Long Xingyu nodded and said in a deep voice, Pay attention to your safety. Long Haochen revealed a smile, full of confidence. It wasn't only his comrades who were full of confidence in the upcoming battle, but he was as well. He possessed the divine snail shield of sun and moon and the divine throne of eternity and creation. Even if he faced the demon god emperor, he had the confidence to challenge him. Furthermore, right now, he was still in the process of fusing with the divine throne of eternity and creation, and his cultivation kept increasing. At his current rate of fusion, when he successfully fused with it, he would probably break through the fourth rank of the ninth stage. A purplish golden glow shone on Long Haochen's forehead, nine purplish golden patterns shining with a mysterious luster. Long Haochen's chest flashed continuously, and nine rings of light fell on his comrades. This was the ability of the epic tier team they bought in the Demon Hunt Transaction Center, the Flash Domain. Under the effects of the Flash Domain, each of the members of the Light Dawn Demon Hunt squad gained a silver-white halo around their feet. Immediately, the purple-gold pattern on Long Haochen's forehead shone brilliantly, instantly fusing into the silvery-white of the Flash Domain. In the next instant, the Flash Domain turned completely purplish-gold. Throne for Dragon, 2 With Long Haochen as the center, the radiance flashed once again, and the halos under everyone's feet lit up. The space split open, and everyone disappeared without a trace. Long Xingyu was also a divine knight, so he naturally knew how difficult everything Long Haochen had just done was. The domain of instant flash could only strengthen the connection between him and his comrades. The collective teleportation, on the other hand, depended entirely on his own strength. With nine people, they broke through space and began to traverse planes. Even if he had the coordinates, this was too risky. Even starry sky holy knight Long Haoyu didn't dare to do such a thing. Long Haochen naturally wasn't afraid. The divine throne of eternity and creation had the wonders of shuttling through space, not to mention that his current cultivation and control over his domain had reached a whole new level. After everyone entered the spatial turbulence, Long Haochen's body immediately let out a luster as white as jade, enveloping everyone inside, forming a white barrier of light. They didn't suffer any impact. In the time it took to take a few breaths, they had already broken through the space once again, arriving in the space Haoyue was in. With a flash of white light, Long Haochen and his comrades separated from the spatial shuttle. Even though they were mentally prepared, when they saw the situation in front of them, they couldn't help but be shocked. From afar, the mountains were filled with undead creatures, and not only on the ground, but in the air as well. It was as if the entire space had been filled with undead creatures. This time, Haoyue didn't evolve in the cave, but just calmly crawled on top of a small hill, letting out a dense violet golden radiance that faintly sparkled on his body. All the undead creatures within a hundred meters of it immediately transformed into a violet gold-colored flame. There was not even a speck left. The sudden appearance of Long Haochen's group of ten naturally attracted the attention of the undead creatures. Immediately, undead creatures attacked them. Flapping their wings, at least a thousand flying devil puppets soared in the sky, spitting out crescent-shaped dark green radiance at them. Although the undead creatures attacking Haoyue didn't have any powerhouses of king level present, they were at least at the fourth or fifth step of cultivation. And they had only just arrived. The attack on Haoyue had yet to be fully launched. Long Haochen raised his left hand, and a layer of multicolored light turned into a huge barrier of light, enveloping everyone, including Haoyue. The green light from the crescent moon bombarded the colorful light barrier, but not even a ripple was formed. Haoyue's body glinted with a violet golden luster, making Long Haochen feel some fluctuations in his emotions. Because of their arrival, he had to wholeheartedly break through the bottleneck. Originally, Haoyue was still able to suppress his own breakthroughs, so there was no need for him to be in such a hurry. However, after devouring the sapling of the Tree of Destruction, its strength instantly reached a critical point. Even with its strength, it could no longer hold back this breakthrough. The message Haoyue gave Long Haochen was very simple, this time's breakthrough would take a very long time. Haoyue didn't say anything else, because it trusted Long Haochen completely. Even though the Flying Devil Puppets' attacks were numerous. But for the Divine Snail Shield of Sun and Moon to transform into a barrier of light, it was undoubtedly like a dragonfly shaking a stone pillar. After passing the test of the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation, Long Haochen was still in the process of fusing with the throne, and immediately arrived at this place. As a result, his right hand was still holding that golden sword glinting with an eight-colored halo. At this moment, he smiled at his companions and said, Let me introduce you to a friend. As he spoke, he tossed up the king's sword in the air. With a flash of golden light, twelve wings spread out. Yiting appeared in front of everyone. All of them were stunned when they saw this peerless woman that they had never seen before. Yiting inherited the body of the Queen of the Moon. In addition, she had her own special qualities, whether it was her appearance or her temperament. It was completely not inferior to Kai Er. Seeing her, Kai Er was startled, giving a puzzled look to Long Haochen, but didn't doubt him. In terms of feelings, she had absolute trust in Long Haochen. It was no longer possible for them to hold each other in their hearts. Long Haochen pulled Kai Er's hand, telling Yiting, pay respects to your sister-in-law. 
Yating smiled sweetly, bowing to Kair, hello, sister-in-law. I am Long Yating. The other's expressions became strange, and Lin Xian couldn't help but whisper in Sima Xian's ear, boss is indeed domineering, bringing this lady back for vice-captain to see directly. Sima Xian nodded in deep agreement, we can't match him in this aspect. Chen Ninger let out a laugh, the two of you are talking nonsense, be careful that Kai Er would cope with you. Was boss that kind of person? But Long Yating, Long Yating, why does that sound a little familiar? At this time, Kai Er was also looking at this beautiful girl in front of her with a surprised face, you are. Outside, the undead army was pressing down, so Long Hao Chen naturally wouldn't let her guess. With a smile, he said, it's Yating. Back then, when I was killed by the demon god emperor, her elemental body was destroyed, and only a trace of her soul was attached to the sword of life and creation. At the time I accepted the test of the divine throne of eternity and creation, the sword of life and creation was broken, and I drew out Yiting's soul, using the power of her domain to help her rebirth. Her current body came from the eternal realms the queen of the moon. Yiting's body was originally of the darkness attribute, so I used my own blood to change it. My blood was flowing in her body, so I let her use my surname. I therefore had her as my sister. Only then did everyone realize that Long Yiting was the light elemental fairy from back then, Yiting. Chen Ninger said with a face full of envy, Yiting, your wings are really pretty. Long Haochen replied, Yiting, Lin Xian. Let's do it. More and more undead creatures appeared, their ranged attacks focused on the divine snail shield of sun and moon, unceasingly releasing dazzling light. Long Haochen's consumption of spiritual energy increased accordingly. Lin Xian and Yiting nodded at the same time. Lin Xian lifted his right hand, and a ball of orange light appeared in his palm. Immediately, an orange glint appeared in his eyes, forming a two-meter-long huge staff. The fiery red core on the tip of the staff was at least the size of a human head. It didn't look like a staff, but more like a scepter. This staff had a domineering name. It was called, Eternal Dragon's Fire. Ten Kings, I. Lin Xian's current appearance was absolute eye-catching, clad in the golden red gradient of the Holy Fire, holding the Eternal Dragon's Fire in his hand. Among the fire mages of this world, there was probably no one who could match him in terms of equipment. Two pieces of eternal equipment, that was the same as two pieces of semi-divine equipment. The eternal dragon's fire was held high in the air, and Lin Xian kept chanting non-stop. His chanting speed was extremely fast, but it carried a special rhythm. The eternal dragon's fire's peak released a bright red glow, illuminating the entire rainbow dome in a fiery red color. The plane Haoyue was in was a black and red world. Lin Xian was chanting under the protection of the divine snail shield of sun and moon. However, as the incantation continued, a dense amount of fire elements started to rise from the cracks in the ground outside, and the cracks enlarged, while magma gushed forth. Immediately, quite a few undead creatures of low level fell into the lava, turning into ashes in an instant. Lin Xian was chanting an incantation on the other side, while Yiting immediately took actions. When Yiting was a light elemental fairy, she was mainly focused on magic, and more on supporting Long Haochen. As for now, she was completely different. She was the queen of the elves of light, and her domain had already determined the direction of her abilities. Pointing her right hand forward, golden flames rose from Yiting's whole body. With a flash, she left the protective area of Divine Snail Shield of Sun and Moon. A golden great sword appeared in front of her, and its size skyrocketed in the wind. In the blink of an eye, it had already grown to a thousand meters in length. Yiting twirled her hands, swinging her golden great sword in the air. Immediately, the sky filled with undead creatures became clear. She's too strong. Sima Xian opened his eyes wide, and not only him, but the others were also dumbstruck by this scene. The power of the attack Yiting unleashed was already above them. Furthermore, Yiting didn't have any equipment. Of course, they didn't know that Yiting's ability was similar to Chiu Yonghao, the head of Warrior Temple, and didn't need the assistance of weapons. In front of the King's Sword, undead creatures of low level were unable to resist at all. Yiting kept changing gestures with her hands in front of her chest. The huge King's Sword was already in the air looking down at her with the power to sweep through everything except for herself. With each swing of the sword, more than a thousand undead creatures turned to dust. In just a short time of a few breaths, the pressure the divine snail shield of sun and moon was bearing was greatly reduced. Little sister Yiting, save some for me. Lin Xian's anxious voice sounded out, and at this time, his incantation was completed. Above Lin Xian's head, a scorching sun appeared. Wasn't this the Saint Yang curse that his grandfather came up with? Only the difference between Lin Xian and Lin Chen was that the sun above his head was blue, the color of the heart of fire. At this moment, even the eternal dragon's fire had turned into the same blue under the influence of the heart of fire. The burning sun slowly rose into the sky. Its body continued to grow larger and larger. In just a short moment, it was already ten times the size of Lin Chen's fiery solar curse. Inside the divine snail shield of sun and moon, the temperature rose rapidly, and Sima Xian, who was the closest to him, even had a slightly burnt smell. Without waiting for his comrades to dodge, Lin Xian took a step forward, just like Yiting before, stepping out of the barrier. The difference was that he appeared above the barrier, not in front of it. A sneer appeared on the corner of Lin Xian's mouth, your world doesn't have the sun, so I'll give you one. 
As he spoke, the eternal dragon's fire pointed upwards. Immediately, the huge blazing sun rose into the sky. In the process of ascending, a blue pillar of fire descended from the sky, enveloping Lin Xian's body. Withdrawing the pillar of fire, Lin Xian's body disappeared. Within the range of the blue light, all the cracks in the lava instantly cracked, and a large amount of lava spewed out. The area within a radius of tens of kilometers instantly transformed into a sea of fire. Sima Xian asked in surprise, how did Hasdra Bro disappear? This guy can't be playing with fire and self-destruct, right? Han Yu laughed out loud, can't you just hope he good enough? Lin Xian also comprehended domain. Furthermore, he is imitating the self-incarnating domain. This Saint Sun curse is truly magical. If Grandpa Lin knew that the magic power he had been researched for whole life was growing on Lin Xian, he would definitely feel proud of him. The eruption of lava immediately caused the large group of undead creatures to panic. Even those at the 6th or 7th level didn't dare let lava fall on their bodies. For a moment, the pace of their attack slowed considerably. When the lava erupted, the concentration of fire elements in the air increased rapidly. One could see that around the saint sun above Lin Xian's head, rings of fire started to converge, and the saint sun's radiance became even more blazing. Borrowing the power of the heavens and the earth was what mages were best at, and a mage who had a domain was absolute terrifying to the extent that he could play a role in the battlefield filled with enemies. Lin Xian's attack started, and small blue sparks started to fly out from the saint sun. These sparks were very small when they appeared, but as they flew, they rapidly absorbed the fire elements in the air, increasing in size at an alarming rate. When they crashed into the ground or in the air, they had already turned into terrifying fireballs with a diameter of more than one meter. The Heart of Flaming Meteor Shower of the Saint Sun Curse Terrifying explosions started to erupt in this black and red world. In the ear-splitting explosions, large groups of undead creatures fell down like wheat being harvested. Because the nearby undead creatures had been completely wiped out by Yating, Lin Xian's Heart Flaming Meteor Shower flew even further away. Every time a flaming meteor fell, it would at least blast a hundred meters wide open the earth, and more lava would gush out from the ground. And Lin Xian's heart flaming meteor shower seemed to have no end. With a frantic bombardment, the hill Long Houchen's group was and gradually became an island in the middle of a sea of fire. Seeing the fighting strength of Lin Xian and Yating, Long Houchen became even more confident. In the demon hunt squad, he wasn't the only powerful one. However, he was also clear that the battle had only just begun and the truly powerful undead beings had yet to appear. For example, the terrifying Lich King who summoned the Bone Dragon Legion previously had yet to appear. Looking through the flames, and looking even farther away, Long Houchen's heart immediately sunk. Under the attacks of Lin Xian and Yating, the undead creatures were dwindling at an astonishing speed. However, on the horizon, more and more undead creatures were rushing towards them. It covered the sky and the earth. Could it be that for the sake of Haoyue's evolution, all the undead creatures in this world were mobilized? He looked back at Haoyue. At this moment, it was like a sculpture lying there. Golden purple scales covered his entire body, and his six heads were intertwined with each other. My good brother, no matter how difficult it is, I will protect you thoroughly and will not let the scene of you being interrupted when you evolve to six heads repeat itself. Right at that moment, a monstrous pressure appeared in the distance. It didn't come from the same direction, but from all directions. In the face of this terrifying pressure, Lin Xian's originally bright and resplendent holy sun immediately became much dimmer. Even the saint sun domain he had just comprehended was unable to resist this pressure, and had no choice but to interrupt his attack, falling back into the divine snail shield of sun and moon. Compared to Lin Xian, Yating's cultivation was a lot stronger. Staring into the distance, the king's sword returned to its original position, hovering in the air. Here it comes. The real powerful enemy had finally appeared. The black sky gradually turned grey due to that terrifying aura, and the terrifying oppressive feeling caused the entire space to warp slightly. In the distance, the undead army that was advancing forward suddenly stopped. Even the flying undead flying in the air quickly returned to the ground. They were kneeling, prostrating themselves on the ground, devoutly kneeling. Nine rays of light appeared from different directions. Long Haochen narrowed his eyes, Yating, come back. With a flash, Long Yating withdrew her king's sword, returning to the divine snail shield of sun and moon. Long Haochen murmured, nine balls of light, but ten balls of aura. The weakest one had more than 200,000 spiritual energy. The strongest was probably at the level of 700,000 spiritual power. These guys should be the masters of Hao Yue's world. They should also have sensed that Hao Yue's evolution was reaching its final stage, and this time, he was going in full force. Although Long Haochen's voice wasn't loud, everyone in his comrades could clearly hear it. However, no one showed any signs of nervousness on their faces. Ten undead powerhouses, all with cultivations above 200,000 spiritual energy, were already above them in terms of strength. This was a world of undead, and their recovery of spiritual energy was a lot more troublesome. But would they be afraid? Back then, when they helped Long Haochen revive in the Tower of Eternity, they didn't have the word fear in their hearts. Although the enemies were strong, they had more confidence in themselves. And furthermore, they had more confidence in Long Haochen. He was the divine knight of brilliance and leader. He had the approval of a super divine artifact. So what if the enemy was powerful? They could also persevere until the moment of their victory. 
The nine figures gradually became clearer. Long Hao Chun immediately saw the Lich King whom Hao Yu had battled against during his evolution last time. He still couldn't see his appearance, but the Lich King's aura seemed to have become stronger. Just by floating there, there seemed to be countless vengeful spirits wailing around her. However, her aura was so powerful that she couldn't be ranked in the top three of these nine figures. Long Hao Chun's gaze flashed past the Lich King's body, immediately landing on the figure in front of him, as well as the combination of two powerful auras. Ten Kings, Two The first thing he saw was a special bone dragon. The skeleton of the bone dragon was a strange color of blue-white. Although its bones were white, there was a layer of sparkling blue light around it, and its skeleton was strong. Under its huge wings, there was a skin membrane. Surrounding the bone dragon was a thick, dark aura, like a black cloud, slowly spreading outwards in a black halo. Within the eyes of the bone dragon, a faint blue flame was flickering. And on the back of this bone dragon sat a man clad entirely in black armor. This person was over two and a half meters tall, sitting upright on the connection part of the back and neck of the bone dragon. In his right hand was a heavy sword that was even taller than he was. The heavy sword flashed with a dazzling dark purple light. That's right, it was him. It was his aura that made Long Houchen's expression turn serious. A knight riding a bone dragon? No, it should be said to be a knight riding a bone dragon king. The bone dragon king under him alone had more than 300,000 units of spiritual energy. And he himself, as Long Houchen had said before, was an existence whose spiritual energy could possibly surpass 700,000. Other than him and the Lich King, the other undead creatures represented the pinnacle of an undead race. They were. A skeleton emperor who was over 30 meters tall and whose entire body was gleaming with a white jade luster. The underground demon spider emperor, whose purplish black body was covered with gray spots, who was 20 meters long, with 12 long legs standing in the air. The zombie emperor, with a height of 5 meters, his whole body exuded a dark golden luster, his eyes were lifeless, and his four limbs were stiff. The loathsome emperor, whose body was the largest, more than a hundred meters tall, the size of its waist even larger, was covered in pale white flesh. The specter emperor, who looked like a mass of dark green fog, but constantly emitting shrill cries. The shadow emperor, whose body was completely black but was as illusory as a shadow, his features could not be seen. One was a hundred meters tall, somewhat thinner than the loathsome emperor. However, he looked even stronger, and his entire body was covered with flashing purple red stones. He was the hellfire emperor. If the Bone Dragon King under that night was included, at this very moment, the members of the Demon Hunt Squad of Light would be facing the ten most powerful emperors of this plane. The ten emperors slowly drew nearer and nearer in the vast grey skies. It could be seen that beneath them were the undead races that were under their control. That endless army of undead, how could it be merely a million? Why? Why do you protect the evolution of Austin and Griffin? Don't you know that it is a symbol of destruction? Get out of the way, ectopic experts. Otherwise, today would be the day of your destruction. I am the dreadful Night Emperor, the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures. My words represent the ten great kings of our clan. With a flash of holy armor, Long Houchen returned to his original form as Holy Unicorn. Riding on the back of the Divine Unicorn Star King, he looked at the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures before saying indifferently, I don't know what kind of destruction you guys are talking about, and I don't know either about Austin or Griffin. I only know that Haoyue is my comrade, my brother. Those who destroy its evolution will be my enemies. The purplish black flames in the eyes of the Undead Sentinel jumped violently, and the auras of the other nine Undead Emperors became even more intense. As he shouted, he pressed his way over. Previously, with Lin Exion and Yating's strength, they had already witnessed the strength of these ectopic experts. Otherwise, the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures wouldn't have called them ectopic experts. They knew very well that the number of undead was completely useless against these experts. Only they had the possibility of defeating them. Long Houchen replied in a deep voice, Wen Zhao, Duan Yi, the two of you stay by Hao Yue's side, in case any other undead creatures attack. The others were all looking for their opponents. The Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures is mine. Don't go all out against your opponent, try your best to preserve yourself. What we need to do is to give Hao Yue some time to evolve. Including Ya Ting, the Demon Hunt Squad of Light had a total of 11 people. Although Yang Wen Zhao and Duan Yi were on the verge of breaking through the ninth step, their strength was, after all, still lacking compared to the others. In a one versus one battle, the Demon Hunt Squad of Light definite wouldn't have the upper hand. However, since the enemies were too strong, Long Houchen didn't dare let them focus their attacks on their side. He had to pull the battle apart. Silver rings of light appeared below everyone's feet. This was Domain of Instant. Flash. With the existence of Domain of Instant Flash and Soul Sharing Chains, Long Houchen was confident in his ability to protect his comrades. Just like how the ten undead emperors clearly knew that these low-level undead creatures weren't enough to threaten Long Houchen's group, Long Houchen also clearly understood that if his opponent let go of his attack, their pure defense wouldn't last for too long. After all, not everyone in the Demon Hunt Squad of Light was good at defense. Only by enlarging the battlefield could one avoid the concentration of the enemy's power. Long Houchen's opponent was without a doubt the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures and the Bone Dragon King. These two experts could be said to be the backbone of the ten great emperors of undead creatures. 
With their combined spiritual energy, the two of them were probably close to a million levels. Facing it alone, Long Houchen had to bear the greatest pressure. However, in retrospect, this was also the best opportunity to test his own strength, and to combine it with the divine throne of eternity and creation. After all, without a sufficiently powerful opponent, how could he unleash all his potential? This time, the divine unicorn didn't transform into a godly armor, but when Long Houchen flew out, he remained there, his wings wide open, and the horn on his head emitted a soft multicolored brilliance. Strange sounds kept coming out from his mouth, as if chanting, but it wasn't as distinct as the holy dragon's magic of draconic rain. This process lasted for about seven seconds, and just as Long Houchen was about to face his enemy, he transformed into a multicolored godly light, chasing after Long Houchen's body. The divine unicorn disappeared, and what was left on Long Houchen's body was a necklace made of seven colors flashing on his neck. A dense and pure light essence instantly filled Long Houchen's whole body, increasing it at full speed. As Long Houchen's abilities became stronger and stronger, the divine unicorn's assistance to him was diminishing. It knew that whether it was armor or weapons, it was already not Long Houchen's best choice. Therefore, he used this mimicry technique to transform himself into a necklace, fully amplifying Long Houchen's strength. No matter what was said, a ninth-ranked divine unicorn was still more than enough to be a divine artifact. Furthermore, at the time Long Houchen obtained the divine throne of eternity and creation, the divine unicorn had already created its own domain. Holy domain, converts all attributes into the power of holy light. It seemed to be a simple transformation ability, but the consumption of the divine unicorn in this domain was extremely small. In this world where light essence was scarce, it had an extremely huge effect. Therefore, when the divine unicorn turned into a necklace wrapped around his neck, letting out the might of the holy domain, Long Houchen's face was already filled with surprise and joy. The judgment knight of undead creatures watched as the enemy troops split up and went to face the ten monarchs. He understood that there was no point in negotiating. Only by killing these enemies from other worlds would he be able to prevent the terrifying Austin Griffin from successfully evolving. The six wings on Long Houchen's back flapped, and the divine unicorn's necklace glittered with a rainbow of colors. Coupled with his handsome looks, he was absolutely eye-catching. But when the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures saw him fly towards him, the spirit fire in his eyes throbbed, showing a look of disdain. His cultivation was the strongest, and thus only he could feel that this evolution of Hauyuez was bound to take a considerable amount of time. However, he did not dare to be negligent. If he had interrupted its evolution a second earlier, the chances of it being completely destroyed would have increased. Ho! The Bone Dragon King let out an icy blue breath, heading straight for Long Houchen. Through the perception of the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures, he understood that Long Houchen's cultivation wasn't even at the fourth rank of the ninth stage, so he wasn't that much stronger than him, let alone the fact that he thought he had the advantage of a physical body. Facing the Bone Dragon King's breath, Long Houchen didn't dodge. Lifting his left hand, the Divine Snail Shield of Sun and Moon released its rainbow-colored light, forming a two-meter-wide shield that completely protected his body. The icy blue breath bombarded the seven-colored Divine Snail Shield of Sun and Moon, immediately letting out an icy blue fog around Long Houchen's body. The temperature dropped sharply. There were even countless ice shards in the air. Even the divine snail shield of sun and moon in Long Houchen's hand was covered in a crystalline blue ice color. What a powerful combination of darkness and ice. This should be the Bone Dragon King's innate magic. Compared to him, the ability Queen of the Moon displayed back then was far inferior. At the same time the Bone Dragon King breathed out, its massive body brazenly charged at Long Houchen. At the same time, the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures took off his purplish black sword. Behind him, a black fog surged, turning into a sinister ghost face. The terrifying pressure caused the air around Long Houchen to emit a dark corrosive sizzling sound. A golden halo spread out from Long Houchen's body, and it was precisely the Light God's domain. Pure light essence instantly dispersed the darkness surrounding his body. At the same time, a bright white halo spread out from Long Houchen's body, mixing with the rainbow light from the Light God's domain, directly colliding with the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures and the Bone Dragon King. As two kings of this plane, the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures and the Bone Dragon King were slightly shocked and the sparkling white light appeared. This was because they felt an indescribable fear. The flames of his soul seemed to be greatly threatened. What kind of aura was this? Ten Kings, Three. The Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures didn't dare to be negligent. Pointing his great sword in the air, he released his own domain. A purplish-black halo spread out, enveloping him and the Bone Dragon King within. The two domains collided violently in midair. Hiss hiss. A large amount of light mist filled the air. There were no collisions, but it was as if ice and fire were clashing against each other. Within a kilometer radius, purplish-black mixed with golden mist rose up. It could clearly be seen that the purplish-black color was suppressed by the multicolored golden light. With every dot of the multicolored golden light, the purplish-black light was consumed at least three times. Domain Suppression The clash of light and darkness should have been evenly matched, let alone the fact that the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures relied on a cultivation far superior to Long Houchen's. However, he never expected that under the circumstances of their domain collision, he would be the one to suffer. The fact that two completely opposite attributes were suppressed only proved one thing, Long Houchen's domain was far higher than his domain. However, Long Houchen didn't feel good either. Even though the Light God domain was on a much higher level than the Darkness Trial domain of the opponent. However, at the same time, his cultivation was greatly inferior to his opponent. 
Above the ninth step, step by step. The Judgment Knight's cultivation just broke through the seventh rank of the ninth step not long ago, who was the number one expert of this plane. Although his domain was inferior to the Light God domain regarding to level. However, the total amount was also more than three times stronger than the Light God domain. Therefore, Long Houchen didn't have the upper hand in this field collision. Furthermore, don't forget, under the Judgment Knight, there was a Bone Dragon King with the same cultivation level. Roar, roar, roar. The Bone Dragon King let out three roars in succession, letting out three icy blue breaths at the same time. However, it wasn't aimed at Long Houchen. Three breaths formed a triangle in the air. Icy blue light shot out from each of them, connecting the three breath support points. Immediately, an extremely cold feeling appeared on Long Houchen's body. In the middle of the ice blue triangle, a dark blue black hole appeared. A blue light flashed. In the next instant, a dark blue ray of light in the size of an arm was shot at Long Houchen's chest. Domain Skills This was clearly the Bone Dragon King's domain skill. Right this time, Long Houchen didn't dare show the slightest reservation. The layer of silver-white light radiating from his body was incandescent, and his towering aura transformed into a crystalline pillar of light that burst forth from his body. Following that, in midair, a thick multicolored flame spewed out from that glowing white pillar of light, rapidly shrinking. When it got contact with the frozen blue ray of Bone Dragon King's domain skill, it had already shrunk to the same thickness as its opponent. Boom! The sky was filled with flashes of light, and the icy blue triangle formed by the Bone Dragon King was instantly shattered. The multicolored light also spread outwards, forming layers of rainbow luster in the air. And at the same time when White Pillar of Light appeared, Long Houchen's Light God domain instantly ignited, which gradually suppressed the opponent's domain. This greatly shocked the Judgment Knight. He had no choice but to do his best to control his domain to fight against it. A huge throne appeared in the air, glowing white and radiating with the radiance of nine colors. On the back of the chair, there were many minute reliefs that gave off an indescribable sense of beauty. At the top. It was the sun, the moon, and the stars. Birds and beasts were in the middle, and what was attached to the seats were the scenes of nature. On the arms of a pair of seats were the statue of the Holy Dragon and the Twelve-Winged Angels. As soon as it appeared, the nine-colored halo instantly became the center of attention. Fortunately, the undead creatures below were still very far away, and not directly affected. Still, when it came, this black and red world seemed to have been purified, and the air became much purer. Long Houchen's body floated in front of that throne, and this was the first time he activated the power of the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation. This feeling was wonderful. It was as if he had an invincible backer. No matter how powerful the enemy was, the instant the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation appeared, all the pressure vanished. The Judgment Knight and Bone Dragon King were truly stunned. The aura radiating from the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation was just too terrifying. They were all undead creatures, and their most fundamental power was the flame of their own soul. And at the instant the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation appeared, the flames of their souls trembled violently. Even a Judgment Knight with such powerful strength was no exception. The trembling in their souls made them want to turn and run, not fight. However, they couldn't run. Austin and Griffin were about to complete their evolution. Once their cultivation levels increased once again, no one in this world would be able to control them. At the same time, based on its habits, all the undead creatures at the scene probably wouldn't have any chance to live. Sooner or later, they would be destroyed completely by it. Since that was the case, he might as well give it his all. Long Houchen calmly said, Undead monarch, I didn't intend to make you my enemy. As long as you leave and don't disturb how you as evolution, we won't harm any of you. The Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures coldly replied, Retreating is the same as dying. Do you think you can stop us with just a super divine artifact? No, you're wrong. We are the true masters of the earth, which is already covered in darkness and fire. As he said that, he slowly raised the purplish black sword in his hand. On the ground, all the knights of fear let out an angry roar at the same time, and immediately afterwards, countless streams of dark energy swept up from below, assaulting the judgment knight of undead creatures' body. In the face of the pressure of the divine throne of eternity and creation, a strong will of indomitable will was released. With the help of his subordinates, he was able to stabilize his spirit fire. With a roar, the Bone Dragon King brought the Undead Knight to launch another attack at Long Houchen. Since he couldn't stop his opponent with his words, he could only rely on his own strength. The Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation instantly turned into 13 balls of white light, separating behind Long Houchen. Time seemed to slow down at this moment, and the speed at which the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures and the Bone Dragon King advanced greatly decreased during this strange time change. And that milky white radiance was just like a hundred rivers, finding different parts of Long Houchen's body. The first white light fell on Long Houchen's chest, and immediately, a huge transparent gem appeared on his chest. It was as if a complete round gem had been split into two, embedded in his chest and back. The gem was almost half a foot in diameter, almost covering the majority of Long Houchen's chest. When the mosaic is complete. Immediately, a sparkling white radiance spread to the surroundings, turning into a special kind of metal covering Long Houchen's front and back. What appeared on the surface of the metal was a pattern of the sun, moon, and stars, as well as an innumerable amount of strange markings. The second ball of white light fell on Long Houchen's head, turning it into a sparkling white crown. On the crown were nine gems, glinting with nine colors, red, orange, yellow, green, green, blue, purple, black and white. Nine colors flashed, and within the nobility, there was an aura of absolute domination. 
The Emperor's crown bound Long Houchen's golden hair to the back of his head, and the instant he landed on Long Houchen's head, a sparkling white mask was placed on the front of his head. As the mask fell off, Long Houchen's body was immediately filled with endless dignity. The third and fourth balls of white light landed on Long Houchen's shoulders, and a sparkling white glow spread out, forming a perfect necklace for his chest armor. The left shoulder armor was a huge dragon head, while the right shoulder armor was a twelve-winged angel statue. It was clearly the armrest of the divine throne of eternity and creation. The sparkling white armor extended all the way to his arms, completely covering both of Long Houchen's arms and hands. It was engraved with a fine pattern of countless living creatures. There were too many types of living creatures. If one didn't look closely, it would be impossible to see the patterns clearly. One could only feel their nobility and magnificence. The fifth ball of white light landed on Long Houchen's waist, and the armor on his waist was in the shape of a fish scale. Every scale was engraved with a pattern, looking like a kind of plant. The waist armor spread downwards, forming a pleated battle dress. The battle dress seemed to be coiled with the picture of a divine dragon, turning into a white halo of light as it spiraled around. The sixth and seventh clumps of light landed on his legs, covering Long Hao Chen's legs and feet completely. At this point, Long Hao Chen's entire body was completely enveloped by this eternal armor. The eighth and ninth clumps of light covered the eternal card before landing on his back. Long Hao Chen's original six golden wings vanished, to be replaced by a pair of huge white wings. This pair of wings was even larger than the previous three teams combined, completely covering Long Hao Chen's back. Even when he was folding his wings, he kept his head high above him. The tenth ball of light fell in Long Hao Chen's hands. It transformed into a huge glowing white sword. The design of the great sword was very simple and unadorned. There weren't even any patterns. However, on its sparkling white body, there was a flash of nine colors. This was the only weapon that the divine throne of eternity and creation had given Long Houchen, the eternal sword. The last three lumps of white light clashed against the huge gem protecting Long Houchen's chest, before bouncing back. During the rebound, only one ball of white light remained glowing white, while the other two balls were split into seven colors and jade green. These three balls of light were just like loyal guards, circling around Long Houchen's body, and going back and forth. The whole process sounded complicated, but it was actually completed within a few breaths' time. This was the super divine artifact, the power of the divine throne of eternity and creation. C-756, Bright Rays of Sunlight vs Undead Monarch The Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation transformed into an eternal armor covering his entire body. Long Houchen felt as if he had really reached the level described by Scion of Light Alux, grasping the sun, moon, and stars. The eternal sword in his hand swept out in front of him, and a monstrous sword intent seemed to materialize in the air. Clang! With a crisp sound, the eternal sword blocked the purplish black great sword belonging to Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures. A pitch-black fog formed the most malevolent demon, crazily engulfing Long Houchen. Nine colored lights bloomed, clashing against the black fog, instantly shattering it. Long Houchen shook his arm, launching an inexhaustible force to repel the Judgment Knight riding the Bone Dragon King a hundred meters back. At the same time, the darkness elemental essence in the air fused with Long Houchen at great speed. After passing through that nine colored halos, it turned into a pure elemental essence, fusing into Long Houchen's body. Holding the eternity, one had the world. Long Houchen didn't know which level his own strength had reached. He could only feel that the Light God domain had completely merged with the Eternal Realm, and he seemed to be able to command an unending stream of power. This was the first time he used the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation, and countless experiences kept appearing in his heart. Countless pieces of information from the Divine Throne entered his soul, which he kept receiving and absorbing. In this way, he didn't take the initiative to attack the Judgment Knight. The Judgment Knight was a little anxious, the power of the Super Divine Equipment was greater than he had expected. Long Houchen's cultivation was clearly far inferior to his, but under this exchange, he didn't gain the slightest advantage. He and the Bone Dragon King roared at the same time. Once again charging at Long Houchen, he launched an all-out attack. The Eternal Sword in Long Houchen's hand flew up and down, as if he was taking a leisurely stroll, unceasingly defusing the attacks of these two undead emperors. They could attack however they wished. Long Houchen was still floating there. The nine-colored sword beams opened and closed, blocking again and again the attacks of the opponent. At the same time Long Houchen stabilized the situation, the other party's battles were already in full swing. The one Kai Air was looking for was an illusory figure whose body was completely black, making it impossible to see its facial features. This was because she could sense that the Shadow Emperor's power was extraordinary. It was even more terrifying than the Lich King. Indeed, just as she met the Shadow Emperor, an accident occurred. With a flash of the sickle of the God of Death, Kai Air was like a bolt of lightning, dodging the opponent. However, she was shocked to discover that her sickle of the God of Death didn't hit the actual body but seemed to fly across the air. When she turned around, she only saw that the Shadow Emperor was already less than a hundred meters away from the evolving Haoyue. Not good. Kai Air was greatly shocked. A powerful white light burst forth from her body, spanning a thousand meters in an instant. It formed a white curtain of light, blocking the Shadow Emperor. However, the Shadow Emperor didn't seem to care at all, charging straight towards the purifying light. But this time he didn't succeed. 
Seeing his black figure colliding with the purifying light, a mournful soul whistle erupted, and the Shadow Emperor's body bounced back even faster than before. Kai Air coldly snorted, thinking that if the opponent can avoid being affected by her physical attack, does he still want to avoid being affected by the purifying light? As for the battle against undead creatures, no one was more suited to her strength than Kai Air. The strongest ability of the inheritance from the God of Death was purifying the undead. Although the Shadow Emperor's cultivation was extremely high. However, due to his carelessness, his soul was still burnt by the purifying light. At the same time, Kai Air lifted her left hand, and with a flash of golden light, a small golden pagoda with seven floored appeared on her palm. Flashes of different colors of light were released from the pagoda, flying rapidly towards Hauyue on the ground, while the sickle of the god of death in Kai Air's hand transformed into 10,000 figures of light in the air. There was a total of 12 flowing lights shot out from the Tower of Eternity, and when they landed on the ground, they coincidentally formed a circle, protecting Hauyue. Weren't they the 12 holy guards who tested the bright rays of sunlight many times in the Tower of Eternity? The Scion of Light Elux didn't only leave Kai Air with this divine equipment of the Tower of Eternity, but also with the 12 holy guards who had fought on the battlefield with him in the past and made countless contributions. However, because the Tower of Eternity was lowered from the edge of a super divine equipment to the level of a divine one, the strength of these twelve holy guards was weakened to a certain extent. They were powerhouses of the ninth level, but only at the early level nine. But even so, they still twelve powerhouses of ninth level with thousands of years of combat experience. During the great battle in the temple, if it weren't for the fact that she was not allowed to use weapons, Kai Air would have been invincible against all opponents even if she only relied on the Tower of Eternity. Of course, after obtaining the divine throne of eternity and creation, the strength of Long Houchen's group was already incomparable to other teams. The Twelve Holy Guards had thousands of years of battle experience. With them guarding Hao Yue, even if these emperors broke through the seal of the Demon Hunt Squad of Light, they wouldn't be able to directly harm Hao Yue. Yan Wan Zhao and Duan Yi stood at the closest place to Hao Yue, and seeing the great battle in the sky, both of them were dazzled. In particular, the instant the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation appeared, the shock in their hearts reached its peak. Until now, Yan Wan Zhao gave up have any thought of comparing Long Haochen with him, because he knew that even if he had paying his lifetime for preparing and training, he wouldn't be able to catch up to Long Haochen. The strength of the Shadow Emperor was indeed as great as Kai Air expected. After his soul was injured, he quickly stabilized his position. Gray streams of air spread out from his body. Even when they met with the purifying light, they did not dissipate. Instead, the area they covered grew larger and larger. They formed a battlefield between Kai Air and him. A dark and cold aura assaulted Kai Air, who held the sickle of the God of Death, but didn't act rashly. The purifying domain continued to spread out, but it didn't spread too far. It only maintained a diameter of 20 meters. With such a distance as a buffer, no matter which side the Shadow Emperor attacked from, she would still be able to react in time. Suddenly, a chill ran down his spine. Kai Air almost instantly turned around without hesitation, the sickle of the God of Death carrying with it a sharp and cold glint of lightning. It was the seven arts of the God of Death, the Death Sickle of Death. Ding, with a crisp sound, the body of the Shadow Emperor flashed and disappeared. The gray luster surrounding his body actually blocked the purifying light of Kai Air, but he didn't stay in the purifying domain for long either, retreating immediately after his attack. Kai Air's eyes narrowed. She knew that she had met an unprecedented enemy. As an assassin, she was ambushed and attacked by the Shadow Emperor. But she had no other choice. In terms of hiding abilities, she was far inferior to him. The Shadow Emperor's domain might not have anything to do with his attacks, but it had a huge effect on his ability to conceal himself and increase his resistance. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to block the purifying light. However, in terms of physical and mental strength, Kai Air, this Emperor of Shadows was an undead creature no matter what. As long as it was an undead creature, there was no one who wasn't suppressed by the purifying light. His opponent might be able to preserve from the purifying light for a short period of time, but after a long time, he still couldn't resist. Otherwise, with the strength of the Shadow Emperor, he would have chosen to go head to head with him long ago instead of engaging in a battle. Do you want to use up all my spiritual energy? Kai Air revealed a cold smile from the corner of her mouth. Although her cultivation was far inferior to Long Haochen's, the recovery ability of the purifying domain was in no way inferior to Long Haochen's light god domain. In this place full of undead creatures, the purifying light was always purifying the aura of death. At this very moment, a sudden chill appeared from the side, and Kai Air's sickle of the god of death was once again launched. There was another crisp, ding, sound. This time, Kai Air's body shook violently, and her complexion changed. The Shadow Emperor's attack power was very strong, and even with the sickle of the God of Death in his hand, Kai Air was greatly shaken. Moreover, she could only discover it when her opponent was close to her. She was, without a doubt, very passive. The Shadow Emperor did not have a main body, and only seemed to exist in the form of a soul. This caused his physical attacks to have no effect on him. If she continued to be passively attacked, Kai Air's situation would only become more and more disadvantageous, because she would only be able to avoid being at a disadvantage if she relied on the seven arts of the God of Death to clash with her opponent. One could imagine how much of the seven arts of the God of Death had consumed. Just like Long Haochen against the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures and the Bone Dragon King, Kai Air was in a deadlock. The only difference was that Long Haochen was the one suppressing his opponent, while Kai Air was being suppressed on the other side. Kai Air was looking for the Shadow Emperor, while Yiting was looking for the Spectre Emperor. 
The two emperors had one thing in common, and that was that they did not have a physical body. They were the two that were the most difficult to deal with, with the exception of the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures. The King's Sword was no longer a single one, but a thousand. It connected in the air and continuously blocked the Spectre Emperor's path of escape. Yiting's light attribute ability inherited Long Haochen's bloodline's purity. Although the Spectre Emperor was powerful, his offensive power was mainly displayed on his soul. As the Elf King of Light, Yiting's soul was extremely stable. And furthermore, the body of the current the Queen of the Moon wasn't her own. So when she was a light elemental fairy, she also took the form of a soul. After fusing the two swords, she had the ability to solidify her soul. It could be said that it perfectly countered the attack of the Spectre Emperor. In this way, Yiting completely suppressed her opponent, and the Spectre Emperor tried to break through as well. But under the attack of the King's Sword, he was completely unable to approach Yiting's body. He could only dodge continuously. He was truly in a sorry state. C-757, Bright Rays of Sunlight vs Undead Monarch 2 However, it had to be said that on the battlefield, aside from Long Haochen and Yiting who occupied the upper hand, the powerhouses of the Demon Hunt Squad were suppressed to varying degrees in all aspects. Chen Ninger faced off against the Lich King. They were all good at summoning. In terms of domain, Chen Ninger's Beast God domain was unable to suppress her opponent, but it was able to strengthen her summoning creatures. But the undead creature summoned by the Lich King, in terms of its rank, was superior to her summoning object. The space they occupied during the battle was also the largest. On Chen Ninger's side, through the amplification of her domain, she summoned 36 magical beasts of the ninth step to attack the Lich King, while the Lich King showed no signs of weakening. Making use of the absolute advantage of Bong Dragon Legion, she suppressed Chen Ninger in numbers. At Chen Ninger's side, six orange-red, epic-grade crystal balls unceasingly revolved, glinting. The over a hundred spiritual cores on her spiritual saint robe shone even more brilliantly, helping her recover her spiritual energy. She had to complete the second group summoning before the Bone Dragon Legion could defeat her summon. The Lich King didn't stay idle either, launching a string of offensive spells at Cheninger. All of them were blocked by the Devil Dragon which McDull had transformed into. Although she had a divine equipment on her, the gap between them was too great. One could foresee that as time passed, Cheninger would definitely be defeated by the Lich King. Wang Yuan Yuan's situation wasn't much better than Cheninger's, and her opponent was that Skeleton Emperor. At the beginning of the battle, the Skeleton Emperor took out a huge black bone blade, relying on his body's absolute advantage to launch a violent attack against Wang Yuan Yuan. The gigantic divine soul shield in Wang Yuan Yuan's left hand and the bloodstorm in her right, she used all her strength to resist. However, she was still being pushed back bit by bit. The Skeleton Emperor was too powerful. With every bombardment, Wang Yuan Yuan would retreat a few steps in the air. Her blood domain was offset by her opponent's soul devouring domain. The two were completely colliding in strength. If not for the fact that the gigantic divine soul shield had reached the level of an undying grade after being embedded in the spatial crystal, and had launched several powerful attacks, Wang Yuan Yuan probably wouldn't have been able to withstand them. Even so, she still had to occasionally use the spiritual stove of spatial gates to change her position before she could make Skeleton Emperor move. She won't let him get any closer to Haoyue. Bang! A loud explosion was accompanied by a strong burst of purple lightning, illuminating the whole battlefield with a purple hue. Those terrifying bolts of lightning erupted from Sima Xian's gigantic ball of light. Holding the gigantic ball of light in both hands, he pressed the huge metallic ball against his chest. Through the amplification of the gigantic ball of light, the offensive power of the thunder manipulating spiritual stove increased to an extremely terrifying degree. A hundred meters in front of him, the loathsome emperor, whose body was covered in white flesh, looked down at his own chest. In the middle of its chest, there was a black burn wound that was several meters in diameter. He could even see deeper inside his organs. Roar, roar, roar. The loathsome emperor pounded its chest with its left hand, while its right hand was in contact with its chest. A huge rusty iron hook was thrown out, and a scarlet luster reached out from the chain behind the hook to the very front of the chain, in pursuit of Sima Xian. His pounding against his chest wasn't completely useless. He could clearly see that a large amount of disgusting yellow fat had been squeezed out of the wound, completely burying the wound and healing it at an alarming rate. What the hell? It was too disadvantageous. Sima Xian was currently very depressed. The reason why he went to find Loathsome Emperor was because this fellow seemed to be big enough, so it should be good enough to fight. But who would have thought that he would run into a metal plate? The defensive power of this Loathsome Emperor was extremely terrifying. Sima Xian's gigantic ball of light fell on him several times. The effects of crushing and triple blasting had an extremely limited effect on his body. Even if he was beaten to a pulp, his body would be able to repair itself in a very short periods of time. Sima Xian had just used the thunder manipulating spiritual stove, and although the damage was a bit greater, it still wasn't enough to inflict heavy damage to Loathsome Emperor. What made Sima Xian most disgusted was the huge hook of Loathsome Emperor. Thought the Emperor was huge in size, he was extremely agile in controlling the metal hook. Especially for the red glow on the metal hook, once touched, it would immediately produce an effect like that of the energetic ball of light. Even if one wanted to run, it would be difficult. If not for the fact that Sima Xian's equipment had some special effects, he would have suffered a great loss long ago. Seeing the iron hook swing at him once again, Sima Xian let out an angry snort, facing the sky with a valiant look on his face. 
The gigantic ball of light in his hand swept horizontally, directly colliding with it. He was also furious. The two long-ranged weapons clashed in midair, creating countless sparks. Be it in size or weight, the gigantic ball of light didn't have the slightest advantage. However, it had already reached the epic tier. The power attached to it was incomparable to the abomination of Loathsome Emperor's Hook. One after another, explosions rang out, and in the end, the metal hook was still knocked aside. Sima Xian flapped the wings on his back, flying even higher as he glowered at the Loathsome Emperor, it's just that he's older than me. Was the weapon big? Then I'll compete with you and see who gets the bigger one. As he said so, Sima Xian threw the gigantic ball of light in his hand upwards. A strange golden luster shone from the core of the gigantic ball of light. This kind of golden light actually flickered with a faint rainbow of colors. Undying? The gigantic ball of light had actually risen to the level of an undying equipment? At the same time, Sima Xian's own body shone in the light. With a shake of his body, his body instantly swelled up, and in the blink of an eye, he reached a height of a hundred meters, almost on the same level as the loathsome emperor. The most terrifying thing was that the size of his gigantic ball of light also rose rapidly. The diameter seemed to be around 50 meters. The loathsome emperor looked at Sima Xian, looking at the hook in his hand, and couldn't help but stare blankly. Feeling a sense of danger, a pair of small eyes flashed fiercely, and a dark green fog burst out from his body, rapidly covering Sima Xian. This was the blight domain that was unique to it, and it was best at group battles. Experts of any attribute would be eroded by this plague. The longer it lasted, the stronger the erosion. Sima Xian's eyes lit up, but he didn't avoid the plague domain. Taking a step forward, he covered his head with the gigantic ball of light, and aimed it at the loathsome emperor. In the Demon Hunt Squad's transaction center, Long Houchen purchased two precious pills, pills that could help powerhouses of the Ninth Step condense their domains. One was given to Sima Xian, and the other to Lin Xian. Lin Xian had already completed his Saint Sun domain, and with the help of his little white flower, Sima Xian's weapon not only improved in quality, but also gained his own domain. Accurately speaking, it was a domain weapon, just like Long Yating. He was too fond of his gigantic ball of light, and as such, his domain was completely in keeping with his own thoughts as it evolved. His body expanded rapidly, increasing his strength and defense, as well as the strength of the gigantic ball of light. The bald priest Sima Xian simply took the shape of a humanoid ominous weapon. There were flaws as well, which prevented long-ranged attacks. Unable to use any skills, the consumption rate of spiritual energy was extremely high. The two colossi brazenly clashed there, engaging in the simplest and most direct of physical battles. It was the clash of flesh and flesh. From time to time, he could even see the fat of the loathsome emperor splattering. In the entire battlefield, this battle could be considered an extraordinary one. On their side, their bodies collided, and on the other side, between Lin Xian and the underground demon spider emperor, there was a battle between magic and them. The Saint Sun Curse hung high above his head, and Lin Xian's two undying equipment shone brilliantly. The undying fire of the dragon kept pointing forward, and at the Saint Sun Curse, a tyrannical blue flame was constantly emitted, aimed at the underground demon spider emperor. After learning the Saint Sun Curse, Lin Xian was like a tiger in wings to him. In particular, the domain he had mastered was based on the Saint Sun Curse, raising this absolute art to an unprecedented level. The cultivation of the underground demon spider emperor had also exceeded 300,000 spiritual energy, and its powerful undead poison spell was extremely powerful. But unfortunately, the flames had a certain degree of restraint against the undead, and the holy fire's comfortable brilliant holy fire also had a light effect. The two sides were actually evenly matched. And furthermore, Lin Xian seemed to hold an advantage. In this black and red world, Lin Xian's recovery speed was very fast. He didn't care about the consumption of his full power in his frantic attacks, which caused the underground demon spider emperor to be in a flustered state. Wearing the divine throne of fear and grief, the divine throne of fear and sorrow, Hanyu was clad in a dark green divine armor covering his entire body. His weapon was only a shield, and on the dark green shield, there were two designs on it, on one side, a demon of fear, and on the other, a sorrowful angel. His opponent was the zombie emperor. The zombie emperor's movements were inversely proportional to himself's stiff body, as fast as lightning. But no matter how he moved, Hanyu was always in time to block him. Every time the attack of the zombie emperor landed on that heavy shield of fear and sorrow, his spiritual flame would shake violently. Inevitably, his body was sluggish. After that, he would immediately be knocked aside by Hanyu. Hanyu didn't take the initiative to attack either, only taking a firm defense, leaving the zombie emperor completely at a loss as to what to do. Wearing the divine throne of wisdom and spirit, and possessing the title of the Night Temple's teachings and divine Knight of inheritances, Zhang Fangfang did the same on the battlefield as Hanyu. Both of them were extremely steady knights. The divine throne of wisdom and spirit gave him a hammer and a round shield. Each time the warhammer was swung, an extremely intense burst of light essence would be released. That explosion was even more powerful than the gigantic ball of light. The Hellfire Emperor's attacks were equally powerful, but there was nothing he could do under Zhang Fangfang's solid defenses. C758, Bright Rays of Sunlight vs Undead Monarch, 3 From the battlefields of Han Yu and Zhang Fangfang, one could see how much the Divine Thrones increased the strength of knights. Regardless of whether it was the Zombie Emperor or the Hellfire Emperor, their cultivation was at least 300,000 units of internal spiritual energy. 
In addition, they were all experts who specialized in close combat. But in front of the two divine knights, they were unable to take a single step forward. The situation was barely able to maintain a balance, but once a gap appeared in this situation, it was likely to be a complete defeat. This was especially the case for the members of the Demon Hunt Squad of Light. After all, they were fighting in someone else's territory. In the distance, a large number of undead creatures were eyeing them covetously. After the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures and the Bone Dragon King's Berserk attacks were fruitless, they retracted their attacks. Looking at Long Houchen, whose whole body was covered in white armor, they couldn't help but feel powerless. As the strongest emperor of this plane, the Judgment Emperor had been controlling everything for the past thousands of years. The cultivation of this powerhouse from another world couldn't compare to his own, but his light attribute spiritual energy was terrifyingly pure. Even he, a powerhouse of the seventh rank of the ninth step, couldn't see the limit. Long Houchen had been calmly comprehending the many amplifications brought to him by the divine throne of eternity and creation, while at the same time, his perception covered the whole stadium. He could clearly feel every change on the battlefield. Wearing the eternal armor, both Judgment Knight and Bone Dragon King could no longer bring him any pressure. But it wasn't easy for Long Houchen to defeat them either. These two tyrants' cultivation bases were close to a million units of spiritual energy, and their strength was extremely formidable. Moreover, they should not have done their best. Long Houchen's goal was only to keep Hao Yue's evolution intact, not to risk his life against these emperors. Therefore, preserving one's own strength and letting the critical moment break out was the best choice. He, too, had a unique skill that had not yet been used, and this was not the time to use it. After reaching the ninth step in cultivation, his teammates hadn't gone through enough tempering. This life and death battle before him was far better than the one occurring in the great battle in the temple. At the same time, it would allow them to merge with their new equipment. Therefore, Long Houchen wasn't in a hurry to go all out. It was an existence that shared the life force of both domain of instant flash and soul sharing chains. He wasn't worried that his companions would really be in danger. Hao Yue calmly crawled on the hill. At this time, it seemed as if all the vitality in his body had disappeared. Amethyst colored scales lost their former luster, and only silently laid there. Yan Wen Zhao and Duan Yi were the closest to Hao Yue, and they kept a close watch on his changes. Although the two of them hadn't yet broken through to the ninth step in cultivation, they were still powerhouses of the younger generation of the Night Temple. When their eyes landed on Hao Yue, they had an indescribable feeling of fear. Hao Yue seemed to be calm, like a black hole was gradually forming. Yan Wen Zhao once tried to use his perception to investigate Hao Yue's state. However, he had only just started when he realized that his soul seemed like it was about to be sucked away. He was so scared that he hurriedly retracted his perception. He didn't dare to investigate any further. Hao Yue, soundless and motionless caused Yang Wan Zhao and Duan Yi to bear a heavy responsibility. No one knew how long this battle would last. Before Hao Yue completed his evolution, the battle would continue. At the same time, the two of them were deeply ashamed. No matter how they wished they could appear in the sky on the battlefield and fight against the undead emperor. However, their strength was far from enough. The soul fire in the eyes of the Judgment Knight was constantly flickering, exuding a cold aura. After their attacks had retracted, his momentum was slowly increasing. Long Houchen could feel that the next time he used his full strength, he would be even more ferocious than before. The Judgment Knight was waiting, waiting for an opening to appear on the side of Demon Hunt Squad of Light. As long as one of them was breached, they would have the advantage in all aspects. Although Long Houchen relied on his superdivine equipment to block him, the Judgment Knight had full confidence in his own strength. It was a crucial moment. Even if he couldn't defeat Long Houchen, he could still restrain his opponent. Among these powerhouses from other worlds, the only one that he felt was a real threat was Long Houchen. It turned out as expected by Judgment Knight that a flaw appeared. It was Wang Yuan Yuan. The Skeleton Emperor's attacks were extremely ferocious, and its huge body didn't affect his movements in the slightest. The Black Bone Blade kept producing black bolts of lightning in the air, attacking Wang Yuan Yuan. Wang Yuan Yuan herself was also good at attacking, not defending. Therefore, she released her blood domain at the same time. She could only fight back. Crack. The Black Bone Blade became a black bolt of lightning in the air, heavily chopping at Wang Yuan Yuan. Wang Yuan Yuan didn't dare use the relatively weak storm of blood to resist. The gigantic divine soul shield in her left hand swept out and instantly clashed with the black bone blade. With seven spatial crystals embedded in it, the gigantic divine soul shield was already able to display its full might. It was capable of unleashing a layer of spatial turbulence to block the enemy's attacks. However, this time was different. The skeleton emperor's attack had clearly been premeditated. The moment his black bone blade was ejected by the gigantic divine soul shield, the bone blade suddenly became illusory. It flashed three times at a speed that was hard to see with the naked eye, and once again ferociously stomped on the gigantic divine soul shield with three blades. With a stuffy groan, Wang Yuan Yuan could no longer bear the terrifying force of this attack. Her whole body was cut in the air, falling down to the ground. The skeleton emperor didn't spare her, and with a flash of lightning, he caught up to Wang Yuan Yuan in midair. A thick layer of black color instantly rose from his feet, before completely concentrating on the bone blade. At this moment, the color of his originally dark bones seemed to have faded a bit. Only the bone blade emitted the color of an abyss. At this moment, Wang Yuan Yuan's left arm was in great pain, and her vital energy and blood were surging inside of her. 
Clearly, the skeleton emperor had been waiting for this opportunity for a very long time. At the same time as storing his power on the bone blade, his domain was fully activated, and he didn't hesitate to use up a large amount of spiritual energy to lock Wang Yuan Yuan, making the opening time of her spiritual stove of space sluggish. In this way, Wang Yuan Yuan had no other choice but to block the attack head on. Wang Yuan Yuan clenched her teeth, her heart filled with unwillingness. She knew that no matter what, she wouldn't be able to block this attack. Although Long Haochen would definitely save her, she wouldn't be satisfied if a gap appeared in her path. A pitch black bone blade silently swept through the air like a ghost, and right at that time, a golden figure suddenly appeared in front of Wang Yuan Yuan without any warning. A strong aura of light instantly erupted. The twelve bolts of lightning viciously bombarded the black bone blade. Bang! In the golden figure's hand was a massive golden shield of the legendary level. After being bombarded by twelve bolts of golden lightning, it blocked the falling bone blade. An intense golden light flashed around him, and the bone blade was knocked aside. However, the giant shield in the hands of the golden figure was reduced to smithereens. A piece of legendary equipment was damaged just like that. This golden figure was the avatar of Zhang Fangfang's second spiritual stove of life. Placing himself on the battlefield, Zhang Fangfang kept a close watch on Wang Yuan Yuan's side, and with the help of the Divine Throne, he blocked against his opponent's impregnable defense. He had long seen the danger Wang Yuan Yuan was in. At this critical moment, he decisively took action. He released his clone, who was carrying his former giant shield, and rushed over. Those twelve pillars of light had been gathering and unleashing their power for a long time. It happened to save Wang Yuan Yuan. Yuan Yuan storing power. Zhang Fangfang's voice resounded in her ear, and that doppelganger glinted with a golden light, brazenly charging at the skeleton king. She used all her strength to launch a counterattack at him. Along with the rise of his cultivation, the spiritual stove evolved, and Zhang Fangfang's second spiritual stove reached its peak. Right now, his doppelganger was at least 90% of his cultivation base. He had been able to maintain it for four hours. At the same time, he could wear other equipment. It was just that he couldn't inherit Zhang Fangfang's ability to equip his own equipment. However, the doppelganger was after all a doppelganger, and Zhang Fangfang had to be distracted in order to control it. To block the attacks of the Hellfire Emperor was a bit too much of a stretch. But he mainly focused on defense. He didn't strive for success but couldn't make any mistakes, and finally made up for the gap on Wang Yuan Yuan's side. Wang Yuan Yuan and Zhang Fangfang's time together wasn't short, and they immediately understood what he meant. Instead of attacking together with that doppelganger, they focused on recovering spiritual energy, while raising the gigantic divine soul. Shield in their hands high in the air. A silvery-white radiance started to spread from Wang Yuan Yuan's feet, slowly rising up, and igniting a layer of silver-white flames all over her body. What was even more bizarre was that her eyes were actually blood-red, and they glittered with a bloody light, just like two rubies. With the silvery-white halo surrounding him, he looked even more ferocious. Wang Yuan Yuan had the nickname, Bloody Goddess of War, how could this be called useless? Having suffered a great loss at the hands of the skeleton emperor, the unyielding fighting spirit in her heart was ignited. The silvery white spatial spiritual energy became more and more intense, and Wang Yuan Yuan suddenly let out a shriek, before her eyes instantly burst out, turning into two beams of bloody light that soared to the sky. In the sky, a silver door of light opened under the illumination of the blood light. Immediately, tens of thousands of rays of silver light burst out from Wang Yuan Yuan's body. The intense spatial fluctuations caused everything around Wang Yuan Yuan to look distorted, and only the two blood-colored lights dispersed when they came in contact with the silver space gate, turning into a blood-colored barrier that fell from the sky. Wang Yuan Yuan suddenly stomped her right foot on the ground, letting out an even more intense scream. The gigantic divine soul shield in her left hand was lifted up, and a thin layer of blood-colored veined patterns covered the huge shield. C-759 The bald brute pushed the fatty down. I. Boom! An enormous pillar of silver light soared into the sky, devouring the silver door of light that opened in midair. The distorted spatial fluctuations caused everyone on the battlefield to shudder as they all looked towards the spatial fluctuations at the same time. The silver light gradually weakened, and a huge figure appeared within it unknowingly. This figure was at least 10 meters tall, whose whole body was clad in silver armor. Outside of the armor, there was a bloody aura, not a silver glint. To save Long Haochen, in the Tower of Eternity, Wang Yuan Yuan had used her spiritual explosion to ignite her spatial attribute spiritual energy, thus completing the God Descent technique on the gigantic divine soul and defeating a holy guard in a single blow. She almost got killed in that battle but stayed alive because of Zhang Fang Fang. At this very moment, Wang Yuan Yuan didn't repeat everything that happened back then. Right now, she was already a true powerhouse of the Ninth Step, possessing her own blood domain. She already had the qualifications to use the gigantic divine soul shield, an undying shield. That's right, after being embedded with seven silver crystals, the gigantic divine soul shield is at the undying level, not the epic tier. This time, the descending gigantic divine soul was clearly different from before. She was clearly a female warrior, and this was precisely the enlarged version of Wang Yuan Yuan. A silver light flashed in her eyes, and the spiritual energy fluctuations coming from her body was completely blood-red. A thick bloodthirsty aura gushed out, and her ferocity caused even the undead emperors to feel fear. 
At this time, under the skeleton emperor's ferocious attacks, Zhang Fangfang's doppelganger was already unable to resist the attack, and his body was wounded in many places, just in time to be sent flying by the skeleton emperor's blade. The avatar formed from the spiritual stove of second life would disappear in advance if it was injured too heavily, and this was exactly the case at this time. The doppelganger vanished into specks of golden light in the air. With a flash of silver light, Wang Yuanyuan stood in front of the skeleton emperor. Even in the form of a gigantic divine soul, Wang Yuanyuan wasn't even half the height of the skeleton emperor. However, her gigantic divine soul shield was even taller than herself. The huge shield swept across and ferociously clashed with the bone blade of the skeleton emperor. This time, Wang Yuanyuan didn't retreat. With a violent rumbling sound, the body of the skeleton emperor swayed from the shock. Immediately, Wang Yuanyuan's right hand enlarged countless times, and a blood-colored storm appeared, violently erupting. From the very start, it was the most powerful innate ability that Bloodstorm could use, Dimensional Storm. After transforming into the gigantic divine soul, Wang Yuanyuan didn't only increase her strength, but also her weapons. The Bloodstorm's attack power didn't increase at all, but as it grew by size, it increased the range of its attack. In midair, the Dimensional Storms tore through the air like crazy. The Skeleton Emperor struggled violently, but the sharp teeth of Bloodstorm's attack left marks on it. In their battle, this was the first time Wang Yuanyuan took the initiative. However, this skeleton emperor was indeed very powerful. One had no idea that how his skeleton was cultivated, but its toughness was comparable to an epic tier equipment. Under the violent and insane collision. Nor did it hurt the root. Domain clashed with each other, weapons and even the body constantly let out violent clashing sounds. This time, Wang Yuanyuan didn't give a single inch of ground, and after her incarnation as gigantic divine soul, her strength increased at its entirety, not losing out in the slightest to her opponent, to go head on against the skeleton emperor. The Judgment Knight felt disappointed. Originally, he had found a breakthrough, but was already prepared to stop Long Haochen. But who would have thought that the enemy would be so tenacious? He forcefully withstood the pressure. However, he still felt disdain in his heart. He knew the Skeleton Emperor very well. In terms of endurance, the Skeleton Emperor was definitely the strongest amongst the undead emperors. He didn't have any more skills, but he trained his body as a body for attacking and defending, making it extremely sturdy. But Wang Yuanyuan now seemed to be on the same level as him. However, it was clear that this was just a temporary burst. Once this burst ended, the Skeleton Emperor would still be the final victor. Moreover, there was more than one breakthrough. At the same time Wang Yuanyuan took on the Skeleton Emperor head-on, Chen Ninger and Sima Xian both became anxious. At this time, Chen Ninger had already completed her second summon. Another 36 creatures of the ninth rank charged out of the creature summoning gate and began to fight to the death with the Bone Dragons summoned by the Lich King. The number of Bone Dragons was also being consumed. However, it was a lot less expensive than her summoned beast. After all, these bone dragons were of the same species. Furthermore, they hadn't been summoned twice by the Lich King. Their attributes were the same, so their attack and defense were rather high. As for Chen Inger, she had no problem summoning them, and could use her domain to amplify these magical beasts. However, to speed up the recovery of her spiritual energy, she was somewhat unable to command her troops properly. If not for the triple summoning from the spiritual stove of time replication, she probably wouldn't have been able to persevere for a long time. Actually, the difference between Chen Inger who owns the beast god domain and the Lich King shouldn't be that great. The main reason was because the battlefield before her wasn't suitable for Chen Inger to fight in. This was a plane full of undead. If she wanted to summon creatures, she had to summon them from other planes, and not randomly call them from her own plane. This way, not only would it consume a lot of power, but she would also have to chant for a longer time. This was why she was completely suppressed to the point of being at a disadvantage. However, McDull's performance was very eye-catching. At the beginning, it transformed into a devil dragon, blocking the Lich King's attacks multiple times, but seeing that the situation wasn't looking good, it transformed into four chimera, and its four attributes displayed their might at the same time, barely helping Chen Inger maintain the situation. The soul flame in the Lich King's eyes violently throbbed. The bone cane in his hand pointed forward, and sharp howls continuously rang out. Immediately, the bone dragon's attacks became even crazier. Because the bone dragon king was subdued by the judgment knight of undead creatures, he became the mount for the undead sentinel. As a result, the Bone Dragons under him had become the subordinates of the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures. The Lich King and the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures have a close relationship. When the two of them were alive, they were a couple. Thus, the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures handed the Bone Dragons to the Lich King. Otherwise, with the Lich King's current strength, he wouldn't be able to summon so many Bone Dragons in one go. The Lich King's cultivation could only be ranked fourth among the Ten Great Kings, but in addition to the Bone Dragon Legion, it was a combination that was second only to the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures and Bone Dragon King. Not only did the Bone Dragon in the sky launch an attack with all of its strength, even the Bone Dragons that had been shattered earlier began to slowly reassemble on the ground. As undead creatures, if they wanted to kill these Bone Dragons, they had to completely extinguish their soul fires. And how could Chen Inger, who was currently at a disadvantage, do such a thing? On the other side, Sima Xian was also in danger, hating the intrepid defense of the loathsome Emperor's body. At the time Sima Xian released his domain, he had the upper hand. Relying on the strength of the gigantic ball of light, he managed to beat the loathsome Emperor. But the loathsome emperor was like a tumbler, unyielding thing. 
Every time I looked at him, he looked like he was about to be knocked down, but then he recovered. The gigantic ball of light continued to crush his body unceasingly, creating large windows on his body, but these wounds were quickly healed. Along with the passage of time, the plague poison cloud's attack on Sima Xian gradually intensified. Although the light element could purify a part of it, this was after all the domain of Loathsome Emperor. After a long time, Sima Xian started to feel dizzy. Moreover, he had just obtained a domain not long ago. Although his burst power was strong enough, his domain weapon consumed a lot of spiritual energy, so it wouldn't last for too long. Seeing the consumption of more and more spiritual energy, Sima Xian's massive body was already somewhat unstable. This time, however, Loathsome Emperor was not aimed at Sima Xian's body, nor was aimed at the gigantic ball of light. Ding! With a crisp sound, the metal hook smashed into the chain behind the gigantic ball of light. The front end of the iron hook suddenly closed, directly locking onto it. The Loathsome Emperor pulled back with all its might, and the metal hook slid along the chain, bringing up a series of sparks. In the end, it stopped right where the gigantic ball of light was, and immediately grabbed hold of the huge metal ball. Even though he looked fat, he was actually quite calculating. Sima Xian's attack was indeed very painful to him, and he couldn't resist the power of his domain weapon. However, his greatest advantage was his endurance. His body's fat was comparable to the defensive capabilities of divine armor, and he had finally grasped this opportunity. And furthermore, he had taken a fancy to Sima Xian's gigantic ball of light, planning on snatching it to use as his own weapon. From his point of view, this was because the weapon itself had the ability to grow bigger. The two huge forces were pulled back at the same time, and the two chains instantly straightened. The difference in cultivation levels between the two sides was just right there. In terms of pure strength, how could Sima Xian be a match for Loathsome Emperor? Immediately, his body was pulled back bit by bit. And Sima Xian couldn't let go. The gigantic ball of light could be said to be his ability to settle down. If he gave up, it would be an incomparable blow to him. Even his domain depended on this equipment. When it could form an artifact soul inside of the gigantic ball of light, this weapon with a terrifying destructive power could possibly evolve into a divine tool. The soul fire in the loathsome emperor's eyes throbbed, turning into a deathly white light, triumphantly pulling Sima Xian closer and closer. The plague domain emitted a stinky stench, unceasingly corroding Sima Xian's body. Right at that moment, a huge blue fireball suddenly flew across the sky and ferociously struck the loathsome emperor, chain. A series of violent booms, accompanied by countless blue sparks, rang out. Quite a few of the loathsome evil's body had been stained by the flames, causing its entire body to emit crackling sounds. At the same time, a layer of holy golden light surrounded the blazing blue flame, reducing the number of the blight poison cloud by half. C760 The bald brute pushed the fatty down. 2. The one who suddenly intervened to help Sima Xian was undoubtedly Lin Exion. At this moment, the glorious holy fire of praise on Lin Exion burned violently, turning into circles of gold-red flames and soaring to the sky, making the saint sun curse above his head appear even more golden-red, which looked even more gorgeous. His attack also instantly became berserk. A huge dragon head emerged from the holy sun and shot towards the underground demon spider emperor. The high temperature caused the underground demon spider emperor to have no choice but to retreat. The perfect combination of light and fire finally gave Lin Exion the upper hand for the time being. However, the underground demon spider emperor wasn't easy to deal with either. The patterns on its body sparkled as it spat out a huge spider web. The spider web floated directly in the air, blocking its gigantic body behind it. Under the combination of Lin Exion's glorious holy fire and the Saint Sun curse, he was unable to destroy this spider web. After filtering each spell with the spider web, its power was greatly reduced, being disintegrated one by one by the four forelimbs of the underground demon spider emperor. However, by this way, Lin Exion finally took the initiative for a short period of time, taking advantage of this opportunity to fully display the superiority as a mage. The fireballs didn't only appear on Sima Xian's side, but Lin Exion's Saint Sun Curse erupted with full power. A pillar of fire was spat out from the Holy Sun, rising high into the sky. Soon after, the pillar of fire broke into hundreds of fireballs and scattered in all directions. Lin Exion's precise control over magic was undoubtedly manifested. These fireballs looked messy, but looked as if they had eyes, and each one could find their target. Among them, the most concentrated one was Chen Inger, who had at least 50 immense blue gold fireballs gathered in the Bone Dragon Legion. For a moment, a violent explosion resounded in the air. More than a dozen of the Bone Dragon Legion Skull Dragons had been caught off because of the attack of the fireballs burst from the Holy Sun, breaking them into pieces, which was under the effects of the glorious Holy Fire. Although their souls were not directly burnt to ashes, they were still severely injured. The other was Sima Xian and Wang Yuanyuan's support. After taking the shape of the gigantic divine soul, Wang Yuanyuan meet force with force against the skeleton emperor, gradually forcing the opponent to retreat. Bombarded by this fireball, the skeleton emperor's solid body finally couldn't resist anymore. A layer of black light was emitted from his body, and he retreated a hundred meters away from the sound of the angry roars. Only then did he stabilize his position. Wang Yuanyuan didn't give her opponent any chance to react, launching the space-splitting saute at the skeleton emperor's right arm. Finally, a large crack was left there. Sima Xian benefited even more from this attack. As the first fireball hit the chain, the scorching heat immediately slowed down the loathsome emperor's pulling motion. Following that, more than ten fireballs were shot at its massive body. 
Although the loathsome emperor was resistant to fighting, he was not willing to be barbecued by this high-temperature fireball filled with light attribute. The fat on his body glowed with a deathly white light, and he rushed to the side. As he rushed forward, a series of afterimages appeared behind him. His speed was comparable to teleportation and was in stark contrast to his enormous body. Lin Exion didn't care about controlling these fireballs to chase after him. However, after losing their target, these fireballs all bombarded the chains of Loathsome Emperor. Loathsome Emperor turned pale with fright. To him, this steel hook was a very precious treasure. It was countless that how many undead creatures he had absorbed for the soul fire to have the might it had today. He abruptly pulled back, wanting to pull the hook back. But this time, Sima Xian didn't do it. The passive state became active, pulling the gigantic ball of light with all his might. The taut chains were under the bombardment of the fireballs at the same place. Seeing that part of the chain had already been burned to a crimson hue, mournful wails rang out from the chains, which was the result of the glorious holy fire purifying the spirits of those wronged souls. Sima Xian shouted loud, the muscles on his arms tightened, and at the same time he pulled back, a dense golden light rose from his back, forming a huge blade aimed at the place where the chain was burning red. Right now, the loathsome emperor was completely panicking. He couldn't let his weapon be destroyed just like that. A pair of thick arms went all out, and a deathly white light flourished from his body. The spirit fire in his small eyes danced wildly. It was obvious that he had used his full strength. No matter what, he had to change the position of the chain, and he couldn't let Sima Xian's attack hit it. However, the loathsome emperor never expected that Sima Xian's heavy power would suddenly disappear at this moment. This time, without the slightest forewarning, and because of the excessive force exerted, loathsome emperor's body was like a rolling gourd, rolling on the ground in a series of rolls. And Sima Xian, who suddenly stopped exerting his strength, was pulled high into the air by this immense force, showing that he collided with the gigantic ball of light, before falling in the direction of Loathsome Emperor. To take back his hook, the Loathsome Emperor used up all of its strength and spiritual energy to pull it back. Sima Xian's body seemed almost like a cannonball as he charged at him. At this moment, almost half of the powerhouses of both the human and the undead who were fighting on the battlefield witnessed this strange and shocking scene. The huge bald man held a terrifying metal ball with a diameter of 50 meters in the air, before pressing it down on the fatty lying on the ground like a mountain of flesh. Puff, the bald-headed brute carried the metal ball and ferociously smashed it on the mountain of flesh, letting out an extremely unpleasant sound. What could be seen was that at the center of the collision, a layer of yellowish-white fat was ejected. The force of the collision was simply too great, and this yellowish-white fat was forcefully squeezed out from the wounds on the loathsome emperor's body. Even with his level of defense, he almost lost his breath after being hit by such a terrifying force. Sima Xian's attack that he had been planning for a long time was naturally not so simple. The scene was like this, Fatty was below, with his fat flowing, and in the middle was the huge metallic ball pressed against his chest and abdomen, while on the other side was the bald priest Sima Xian. A purple bolt of lightning flashed, and immediately, the gigantic ball of light between the two powerhouses turned purple. The metal surrounding the gigantic ball of light opened wide at the same time, letting out a violent explosion in the next instant. Boom, 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 boom. The nine terrifying booms, accompanied by countless bursts of violet lightning, caused the body of the loathsome emperor to twitch and tremble violently. He wanted to struggle, but Sima Xian, who was pressed down with all his might, was firmly holding him back, unable to move no matter what he said. The two of them were too close, and this caused Sima Xian to bear the aftereffects of the purple godly thunder cannon, letting out crackling sounds from his whole body due to the lightning bolts. Beneath the epic tier armor, there was a faint smell of burnt flesh. But Sima Xian was just so valiant, letting the terrifying bolts of lightning keep bombarding between them. Fortunately, neither he nor the loathsome emperor had any hair on them, or else these two would have had explosive hairstyles. This scene was simply too valiant. No one could have imagined that their battle would develop into such a scene. Sima Xian had suffered quite a bit, but the one who suffered the most was the loathsome emperor. The terrifying purple godly lightning cannon continued to strike the core of his body, and the fat protective layer in his body had been squeezed out quite a bit. The soul fire of the loathsome emperor throbbed intensely. Every time its gigantic body trembled, a large amount of fat would spill out. This time around, it suffered a heavy injury. However, this fellow was one of the undead's ten great kings, and would definitely not just wait helplessly for death. At the end of the ninth explosion, Sima Xian suddenly felt his massive body tense up, completely different from the previous softness. Before he had the time to react, with a flash of silver white light, Sima Xian's body disappeared along with his gigantic ball of light. In the next instant, a frantic explosion erupted from the loathsome emperor's body. It was fat, fat, flesh, organs, and bones. It transformed into a terrifying storm that swept across a thousand meters in diameter. As a result, the humans and undead warriors on the other battlefields kept dodging in panic, afraid of being hit by the fat fatty who was filled with poison. When Sima Xian reappeared, he was already by Long Haochen's side. However, his body was shrinking rapidly, and his face was pale. The eternal sword in Long Haochen's hand drew a beautiful arc in the air, and a 100 meter long blade of light appeared out of nowhere, forcibly pushing back the Judgment Knight of Undead Creatures and Bone Dragon King. 
At the same time, among the three balls of light circling around him, that green ball of light instantly flew out, falling on Sima Xian's body. Sima Xian had already exhausted all of his strength when attacking the loathsome emperor. At this time, not only was his spiritual energy consumed excessively, but he was also suffering from the corrosion of the plague. As soon as the green ball of light landed on his body, he immediately felt a cooling sensation enter his body, making him feel indescribably comfortable. Soon after, the poison in his body was completely sucked dry. With a flash of green light, Sima Xian was pushed back by a gentle force, falling in the direction of Haoyue's evolution. Long Haochen kept a close watch on the whole battlefield, and naturally saw the fatal clash between the hateful king and Sima Xian. In the instant that the loathsome emperor's body froze, he could sense that something wasn't right. If Sima Xian were to remain there, even with the soul-linking chain's life force, he would be severely injured, and at the same time affect the others due to the soul-linking chains. Therefore, he immediately activated the flash domain, transferring Sima Xian to his side. Chapter 761, The Baldi Pushed Over the Fatty? 3. Was the Abomination King dead? No, the answer was no. As an undead creature, how could the undead kings die so easily? The Abomination King's original body had blown up, but the deathly pale soul fire immediately vanished. In the distance, among the army of abominations, the largest abomination's body suddenly trembled violently. In the next moment, its soul fire became deathly white. Clearly, the Abomination King had possessed it. With one in each hand, the Abomination King clutched two abominations beside him. A dense, deathly white light immediately covered them and very soon, the two abominations became shriveled up, while the Abomination King swelled up a lot. Although the other abomination were fear-stricken by this sight, none of them tried to run away, surprisingly. They could only let the Abomination King drain them one by one as he recovered his strength. However, it was impossible for the Abomination King to recover his original strength in a short amount of time. After all, he had just blown up his original body. After possessing a new body, he needed a long period of time to grow used to it. In that battle, he had basically matched up to Sima Xian evenly. Sima Xian had overexhausted himself and he was injured, so he was unable to keep fighting, while the Abomination King had lost his original body, which was a slightly larger loss. The nine battles turned into eight, but it made the bright glimmer of hope's danger even more obvious. Due to Lin Xian's burst of power, the glorious praise's length shortened. It had reached the end now, while the pit demon spider king he had kept at bay began to move. Its cold eyes stared at Lin Xian like he was a corpse. Although Chen Inger was able to catch her breath with Lin Xian's assistance, the Lich King's attacks became even more vicious. Now, dark purple bubbles constantly surged on McDull's body, creating huge wounds. It could not last much longer, while her summoned army was thrown into disarray by the Bone Dragon army. Wang Yuan Yuan's burst of power was ending as well. The gigantic divine soul began to fade, while the skeleton king who had managed to recover his strength grew closer, beginning a counterattack. Chen Inger's forehead was covered in sweat. She had always been seated in the air, but she had stood up now. The six crystal balls in her surrounding sewn with a hazy white light simultaneously. The Lich King obviously saw this from the distance. She cunningly retreated to the back of the Bone Dragon army. She could obviously tell that Chen Inger was about to throw her life on the line, but it was very likely her final strike as well. If she could block this attack, the human would be dead for sure. The light in the depth of Chen Inger's eyes flickered with uncertainty. The 108 spiritual pellets on the spiritual saint robe all lit up, while a ball of light had appeared near her chest. This was her spiritual pellet. Raising her right hand, the six crystal balls shot off as a streak of white light together. Afterwards, a dignified figure appeared behind Chen Inger. The beast god's descent. The six crystal balls gathered on McDull. Immediately, his wounds closed up at an astonishing rate and it also purged all of the death magic and dark magic that originated from the Lich King. Chen Inger drifted forwards, landing on McDull's back slowly. The Lich King sneered in the distance, if I don't show you what's what, you won't know what is a spiritual saint girl. Extending her right hand forward, Chen Linger mumbled a chant. Immediately, a white light shot across the sky, directly toward a bone dragon in the center of the bone dragon army. These bone dragons had very powerful battle instincts, so they obviously would not just let it happen. Several bone dragons exhaled on the white light. However, a sight that struck fear into their hearts happened. Their breaths failed to obstruct the white light at all. It did not even weaken it. The white light seemed to be completely immune to them, directly passing through and landing on the head of the targeted bone dragon accurately. The bone dragon immediately seized up. In the next moment, it went crazy, at least to its companions, it appeared to go crazy. As it went crazy, it swung its huge tail around, striking the neck of another bone dragon and forcefully sending its skull flying. At the same time, it collided with another bone dragon and unleashed a breath on the head of a dragon below. It was always easier to take a fortress from the inside. The crazy bone dragon basically heavily injured three companions in a single moment. And that was only the beginning. Chen Inger extended her right hand again and another streak of white light flew out. It also landed among many dragons, just to another location. The outcome was the same as before, another bone dragon had gone insane. With two bone dragons on a rampage, the entire bone dragon army immediately descended into chaos, as the attacks directed at Chen Inger's summoned beasts obviously weakened as well. 
Now, only around a dozen summoned beasts remained. Obviously, they fought back violently now that the opportunity had presented itself. The Lich King immediately returned to her senses after momentary shock. She quickly directed the Dun Dragon army to rip the two Bone Dragons to pieces. However, it still resulted in a loss of a few Bone Dragons. At the same time, Chen Inger's third ball of white light had shot out already. Now, the Bone Dragon army began to feel dread. As one of the strongest creatures in the undead world, the Bone Dragons were highly intelligent. When they saw how they were targeted by the white light, they knew their fate would be predetermined. Who was willing to just sit there and take the attack? In that moment, the entire battle descended into chaos and Chen Inger managed to reverse the situation. What no one saw was that her back was already drenched in sweat. She seemed calm, but she was actually so weak right now that she relied on the power that McDull constantly offered just to stand straight. Having lasted so long in battle, she was close to collapsing from the exhaustion of spiritual energy and effort despite the constant support of the spiritual saint robe. Without a doubt, the three balls of white light came from her innate ability as a spiritual saint girl, spirit bestowal. No matter how powerful the bone dragons were, they were still once magical beasts. Faced against someone chosen by the beast god, Chen Inger could still use her spiritual bestowal. However, not only were the bone dragons powerhouses of the ninth step, their powers originated from their soul fire. If Chen Inger wanted to use spiritual bestowal to control these bone dragons, she would have to expend a tremendous amount of spiritual energy. After driving three bone dragons crazy, she had reached her current limit. However, at least she managed to stabilize the situation temporarily. At this moment, something else happened on the battlefield. A golden pillar of light filled with a holy aura suddenly descended from the sky and landed on each member of the bright glimmer of hope. The golden pillar of light was filled with the aura of the light element. Enveloped by it, everyone felt warmth. Han Yu's shield of terror and sadness sent the zombie king flying once more as golden light curled around his chest. The light in his eyes flickered, clearly releasing his mental force. That was right. The golden pillar of light originated from the power of his spiritual stove of light blessing. Buffed by the spiritual stove of light blessing, the incapacitated Sima Xian recovered his spiritual energy rapidly, Wang Yunayun's gigantic divine soul stabilized and Lin Xian and Chen Inger's situation grew stable, such that their spiritual energy rose back up. Kaier, Long Yating, Han Yu, Zhang Fangfang, and Long Haochen who had managed to remain in a stalemate against their opponents recovered their spiritual energy as well. Just like how Zhang Fangfang's spiritual stove of second life had evolved to the highest level, Han Yu's spiritual stove of light's blessing had done the same. Back then during the war against the demons, Han Yu had already decided on the direction he wanted to develop in the future. The whole squad supported him. Now, with the power of the spiritual stove of light's blessing unleashed, the scales of battle immediately balanced once more. It was basically turning around the situation at the brink of collapse. Now, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead finally became a little worried. Nothing went on near Hao Yu as he evolved, which gave the Knight of Judgment of the Dead the opportunity to wait calmly. The humans were just about to collapse and his objective was just about to be fulfilled, but he never thought Han Yu's technique would immediately bring the humans back from the brink of defeat once again. As it seemed, they would not be defeated anytime soon. As time went on, it would only benefit the humans. If Hao Yu had completed the Golden Flower, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead refused to imagine it. In that moment, he finally stopped holding back. Letting out a great bellow, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead's aura suddenly surged. Hearing the bellow, the soul fire in the eyes of the nine other undead kings also surged. They each let out a bellow as well. Immediately, the undead king in the distance which had been watching this battle quietly moved. Under the orders of their respective kings, they surged toward Hauyue like a tide. The reason why the Knight of Judgment of the Dead was reluctant to do this before was because he knew this would definitely result in a heavy loss in stronger undead creatures. It would affect their future reign. After all, none of them knew which race would suffer the most. As a result, before the ten kings had arrived, the nine other kings had already agreed that they either did not mobilize their armies, or they mobilized everyone together. The Bone Dragon King's Bone Dragons were the only exception to the agreement, as they had been used by the Lich King against Chen Inger. Now, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead could see how the humans' lines of defense would not shift so easily, so he finally could not help but use the armies. The bright glimmer of hope immediately felt heavily pressured. They were basically fighting an entire realm right now. Even though all of them were powerful, they felt that both their abilities and mental fortitude were insufficient to resist an entire plane. After the Night of Judgment of the Dead's furious bellow, his attacks had changed as well. The leaping soul fire in his eyes suddenly became scorching and his body grew once more, doubling in size to 5 meters tall in the blink of an eye. Chapter 762, Long Houchen's Trump Card, Kyer. I. Contrary to the Night of Judgment of the Dead's expansion, the Bone Dragon King shrunk at an astonishing pace. Afterwards, its bluish-white skeletal structure actually disassembled and its soul fire immediately flew forward, directly landing on the Knight's huge, dark purple sword. Like it was set on fire, bluish-white flames immediately arose on the huge sword. At the same time, the bones from the Bone Dragon King stuck to the Knight's body, transforming into a set of bluish-white armor. A terrifying aura of darkness erupted from the Night of Judgment of the Dead like a geyser. As the true ruler of this realm, he obviously had a way to make the other undead kings yield. 
In this moment, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead gave Long Houchen a false impression that he was currently facing the Demon God Emperor. Perhaps, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead was unable to rival the Demon God Emperor in cultivation, nor did he possess a divine tool like the Demon God Pillar, but currently, he was the most powerful person Long Houchen had witnessed aside from the Demon God Emperor in Alux. The suppression of aura and domain from the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation clearly weakened and Long Houchen became stern. His opponent was going all out. Annihilation, intangibility, domain seal, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead said with a deep voice. Afterwards, a huge, dark purple symbol appeared behind him. At the same time, the same symbol actually appeared behind Long Houchen. To Long Houchen's shock, the domain formed from the combination of the Light God domain and domain of eternity actually became useless in that moment. Was his domain sealed? What was this ability? After all, in the human world, no one had ever managed to surpass the sixth rank of the ninth step. Obviously, no one was able to tell him that upon reaching the seventh rank of the ninth step, they would gain a special ability, which was sealing domains. Sealing domains could only be used on those who were weaker in terms of cultivation. It would normally be used on opponents with weaker domains but greater strength in combat. The Knight of Judgment of the Dead's cultivation had only just reached the seventh rank. If he forcefully used this domain sealing ability, there was a great chance of failure. However, the result was completely different now that the Bone Dragon King had fused its power with him. Although it was still not enough for him to overcome the tough bottleneck of a million spiritual energy, it did make it significantly easier to seal domains. Long Houchen's Light of Eternity domain had weakened his just too much. Even after being strengthened right now, he had no confidence in defeating Long Houchen. As a result, he sealed up Long Houchen's domain right from the start. Although he could not use his domain either, their battle would become a clash of strength. Domains would no longer be able to disturb or influence them anymore. Not only did the Knight of Judgment of the Dead burst with power, the other undead kings unleashed a full scale of violent attacks as well. They all understood that if the humans managed to free up some additional time, even if it was just an additional technique, it would cause huge losses to their subordinates. It would also get in their way of destroying Austin Griffin. If they did not use their full strength right now, when else were they supposed to? Responding to the Knight of Judgment of the Dead's burst in strength, Long Houchen only had a single action. He went from wielding the Sword of Eternity with one hand to both hands. To the Knight of Judgment of the Dead's surprise, it was as if his full strength suppression was nothing to this human. He remained just as calm as before, only that the human had now locked onto him. Was he not afraid that Austin Griffin and his companions would die? No, this was impossible. No matter what he thought, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead would not stop his attacks. In the air, he raised the heavy, flaming sword slowly and swung it towards Long Houchen from a certain distance away. As soon as the simple attack was completed, a resonant dragon's roar boomed through the air. The icy blue flames assumed the shape of a huge bone dragon, burning with dark purple flames as it flew towards Long Houchen. With the attack, the advancing undead army below slowed down for a moment. All of the darkness element in the air seemed to be drained by the attack. Long Houchen only felt his surroundings distort as a huge, bottomless mouth charged towards him. The armor of eternity was immediately covered by a dark purple light which attempted to penetrate the protection. Hum. A strange vibration rang out from Long Houchen's chest. The huge gemstone on his mirror armor suddenly became milky white and afterwards, light poured out from it. Long Houchen took a step forward in the air and raised the Sword of Eternity slowly. As the sword was raised, the spiritual energy from the Knight of Judgment of the Dead slash seemed to slow down. Only when Long Houchen raised his sword completely and that all of the Light of Eternity from his chest was absorbed by the sword did the huge dragon head arrive before him. Nine-colored golden light formed a straight streak in the air and the figure of the huge bone dragon immediately froze. As the light extended toward the Knight of Judgment of the Dead, the ruler of this world swung his huge sword and severed the connection with his attack just them. Spurt. The figure of the bone dragon exploded and the golden light vanished with a flash as well. Long Houchen staggered three steps back before stabilizing himself. What a powerful super divine tool, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead could not help but sigh inside. Looking at Long Houchen, the knight could tell that the spiritual energy he had released in that clash was much lesser than the knight himself. He had used the might of the super divine tool to nullify the attack. However, this was only the beginning. The Knight of Judgment of the Dead moved with a flash as the soul fire burned his eyes. This time, he did not launch a long-range attack and instead arrived right in front of Long Houchen. He swept his sword vertically, straight at Long Houchen. Not only was this slash fast, it bore the principles of the world as well. The perfect trajectory made Long Houchen's expression change slightly. Parrying with the Sword of Eternity, a great clang rang out. Long Houchen shone with nine-colored golden light as he was pushed a hundred meters away. Clearly, he had suffered from the attack. A super divine tool did not mean invincibility. The difference in their cultivation was perfectly displayed in that attack. However, while a super divine tool did not equate to invincibility, it did mean strength. When the two swords collided, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead only felt a heavy aura of life surge forth, disturbing the Bone Dragon King and his aura of death drastically. He could not help but seize up and it was that moment when Long Houchen had appeared before him once more. Without domains, their battle became even more intense. Every time they clashed, the air would flash with bright light. Once darkness had reached its limit, it would no longer fear light. 
The Night of Judgment of the Dead used its terrifying strength of almost a million spiritual energy to knock Long Houchen away again and again, but due to the powerful suppression in terms of element from the divine throne of eternity and creation, he was unable to take a single step closer to Haoyue. After their strength had both increased, they were still stuck in a stalemate. However, the situation elsewhere became rapidly. Chen Ning'er was defeated first. Using her spirit bestowal, Chen Ning'er sowed chaos into the Bone Dragon army, making them lose at least a dozen dragons, while her summoned beasts managed to gain some advantage under a furious counterattack. However, her final attack could not last for very long. After gaining a momentary advantage, the Lich King had erupted just like the Knight of Judgment of the Dead. The bone staff in her hand suddenly cracked and soon afterwards, the remaining forty-odd bone dragons rapidly retreated. The Lich King herself flew to the very front. Extending her bone staff forwards, she mumbled something and afterwards, over ten thousand streams of dark was rose up from the ground and surged towards the Lich King. This was the power from the Liches under her. The power from a single much was nothing, but if thousands of liches offered their powers to the Lich King at the same time, it was an indescribably terrifying sight. This was their territory after all. The Lich King produced a complicated symbol with her hands and the flame of soils in her eyes suddenly became white. Afterwards, a huge, vertical eye appeared in the air. It stood twenty meters talk and looking in McDulla's direction. Immediately, a hazy color made its way over to McDull with a strange pulse. Chen Inger had pushed her beast god domain to the limit and had unleashed all the spiritual energy she had recovered from the spiritual drive of light's blessing, but she was unable to block the attack. The Lich King clearly did not plan on giving her the chance to summon a third wave. In order to protect Chen Inger from heavy injury, McDull directly landed on the hill where Haoyue resided. Due to expanding too much spiritual energy, Chen Inger was temporarily incapacitated. Now that a gap in their defenses had finally appeared, the Lich King lead the Dragon Bone army into this breach, correctly towards the hill. She seemed to be able to see when Austin Griffin died in her hands. She was not the only one who had used this breach. The Abomination King rushed over as well. After spending this period of time absorbing the powers of its clansmen, he still managed to return despite his awkward body and losing over 40% of his strength. He picked up his metal hook and rushed through the breach behind the Lich King as he tottered about. However, with the appearance of the breach, someone freed up on the side of the bright glimmer of light. Kyer had always been stuck in battle with the Shadow King, where the Shadow King primarily attacked and she primarily defended. Using the power of the sickle of the God of Death, Kyer was unable to catch her opponent, but she did not suffer under his attacks either. Chapter 763, Long Houchen's Trump Card, Kyer. 2. The Shadow King could not press Kyer too hard either. He feared the purifying aura from the sickle of the God of Death very much. Regarding elements, a purifying power was much more terrifying than light. Although the Ten Kings had reached an agreement in destroying Austin Griffin completely this time, their lives were still their own. The Shadow King was unwilling to use his soul fire as a wager in this gamble. He could sense that once this purifying power seeped into his soul fire, his strength would dull drastically even if he survived. Just as the Lich King had erupted in strength by absorbing the powers of her fellow Liches, something happened to Kyer's battle all of a sudden as well. Kyer raised her left hand and a streak of golden light suddenly shot up, appearing before her. Afterwards, the resplendent golden light expanded and a huge tower with seven floors appeared in the air. A great force of suction appeared from beneath the tower. As the Shadow King fought against Kyer, he never would have imagined that she would suddenly do something like that. The Tower of Eternity was a divine tool and one that had almost evolved into a super divine tool in the past. The Shadow King was powerful, but from a certain aspect, his body was basically a kind of specter, rather similar to the Specter King. The Tower of Eternity used to be a powerful divine tool used by the Holy Necromancer, slumbering Calamity Alux to suppress specters. Although neither Longhouchen nor Kyer had inherited Alux's necromancy, the Tower of Eternity was still in existence that could deter all undead creatures. With the Tower of Eternity out now, the Shadow King only felt its soul fire tremble uncontrollable. Surprised, he hurried to stabilize it. However, his original body began to appear as well. He had managed to avoid being sucked away by the Tower of Eternity through his powerful cultivation, but it did immobilize him temporarily. Kyer took a step and appeared before the Shadow King. Now, the Shadow King was out of option apart from throwing his life on the line. The Tower of Eternity shone once more and severed the Shadow King's connection with his clansmen, preventing him from erupting with power like what the Lich King had done. In the next moment, the light of purification from the sickle exploded before him. The first five arts of the seven arts of the god of death, death in childhood, death in purification, death in hissing, death god's kiss and death silent annihilation, were unleashed consecutively. It formed a beautiful image of the god of death's purification in the air. The domain of purification became pure in that moment, enveloping the shadow king completely. When her final strike struck into the shadow king's body, the shadow king's soul fire was unable to avoid it at all, stabbed by this blade of purification. A shrill scream resounded through the entire battlefield, such that even the lich king halted her charge towards Haoyue. She stared at the Shadow King in disbelief as he was being purified by her sickle. In terms of pure strength, the Shadow King should have been slightly stronger than her. How did he just die? The sickle of the God of Death could even purify the slumbering Eternity Alux, let alone the Shadow King. 
Having purified the Shadow King, Kyr's light of purification became extremely powerful. She stowed the Tower of Eternity away and with a flash, she blocked the path of the Lich King and the Bone Dragon army. Afterwards, she held her sickle behind her in her right hand and extended her left hand slowly. A small, white lotus flew out quietly, directly towards the Lich King. The Lich King was a highly intelligent intelligent king. She had personally witnessed the Shadow King being purified and now, she saw the seemingly harmless white lotus which also made her soul tremor. She immediately used her teleportation without any hesitation and with a flash, she appeared thousands of meters away. That's right, Kyer's tiny white flower was her domain technique, the flourishing lotus flower. The terrifying might of the domain of purification was carried along by the tiny flower, erupting among the bone dragon army. Pure white petals flew outwards, landing on the bone dragons one by one. The powerful bone dragons trembled in the air. All of them, amounting to over forty. They just froze up after the inconspicuous petals landed on them. Nothing happened to their colossal bodies, but the soul fire in their eyes slowly extinguished. The armor on the Night of Judgment of the Dead immediately exploded with dazzling, icy blue flames. The Bone Dragon King was going crazy. Although he had placed all his subordinates under the command of the Lich King, they were still his clansmen. In the battle earlier, he had suffered huge losses, but most of these Bone Dragons could slowly recover, as they would not truly die until their soul fire were not put out. However, Kyer's attack was completely different. The Bone Dragon King could clearly sense that its subordinate souls were being purified. That was true death. There were only a little over a hundred soul fire that belonged to Bone Dragons, so the attack had just killed off half of them. How was it possible for him to not go crazy? The Knight of Judgment of the Dead also realized the severity of the issue. When the Bone Dragon King had erupted, he raised his heavy sword high up in the air and a storm of dark purple and icy blue surged from his body and towards Long Houchen recklessly. He seemed to want to knock Long Houchen away, and then go save the Bone Dragon army. However, how could Long Houchen let him succeed? His lover was over there as well. I'm your opponent, Long Houchen said very calmly, but it was like deciding the fate of the Bone Dragon army. Afterwards, the green ball of light out of the three that revolved around him suddenly lit up. It immediately merged into the Sword of Eternity, dying the Super Divine Tool Green. Receive my attack, Nature's Bloom. In that moment, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead suddenly felt everything change around him. The darkness and redness immediately vanished, replaced by a world of nature. Tall trees stood everywhere, with a bed of vegetation covering it all. The faint smell of flowers combined with the smell of soil and plants permeated over. The sunlight illuminated the earth and warmth swept over gently. The Knight of Judgment of the Dead was stunned. The Bone Dragon King also became dumbfounded. They were not born as undead. When they saw this scene of nature, their souls trembled and most of their fighting intent vanished. However, they were pulled back into reality in the next moment. The threat against their lives allowed them to snap out of the illusion. Agony made their soul fire waver. Now, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead was 3,000 meters away from Longhouchen. He had been knocked away. A total of 18 green wounds crisscrossed on his body. Every wound gave off a powerful aura of life, eating away his aura of death. The Knight of Judgment of the Dead stared at Long Houchen blankly, W what did you say your attack was called? Long Houchen was rather taken aback. He knew his attack was very powerful, but he never thought the Knight of Judgment of the Dead would suddenly become stunned like this, forcefully enduring the attack without even trying to dodge. Although the armor from the Bone Dragon King had blocked most of its power, the attack still should have injured him quite a lot. Long Houchen answered the Knight of Judgment of the Dead's question, that's one of the three great sword techniques that comes with my divine throne of eternity and creation, Nature's Bloom. The Knight of Judgment of the Dead's soul fire suddenly revealed deep sorrow, Nature's Bloom, Nature's Bloom. If you really can make Nature Bloom, how good would that be? Is the realm that you're from really that green? Long Houchen nodded, of course. That's a scene of nature. The Knight of Judgment of the Dead's emotions suddenly changed. He let out a furious bellow all of a sudden, why must we lose this greenness that is teeming with life forever? Austin Griffin, Austin Griffin, you must die. You must die. Aaea Warp. As he called out crazily, the 18 slashes on his body actually closed up at an astonishing rate. A heavy aura of darkness surged out from his body wildly, completely expelling the aura of life that had been embedded on his body. He charged towards Long Houchen once more. Long Houchen was stern, but he was in no hurry. He did not worry about the situation behind him at all. As long as Kyer was there, Haoyue would be fine. Just when the Knight of Judgment of the Dead had been repelled by Long Houchen, the Bone Dragon army had completely collapsed as a well. The flourishing lotus flower's powers of purification was like water to soil, cleansing their souls completely. The bone dragons fell out of the sky one by one and landed on the ground. Their skeletons rested peacefully as their souls were also peacefully purified away. After being purified, they only felt relieved. They felt no fear. The Abomination King watched in awe as the bone dragons fell down before him. He was not stupid. He was not in his peak condition in the first place, so he immediately turned around and fled. He dared not to charge towards Kyer. Kyer stood in the air as all the purified souls in the air flowed towards her as powers of purification. Kyer's aura had never been so powerful before. Facing against the ten undead kings, how was it possible for Long Houchen to not know about the situation of his companions? 
However, he remained very composed the entire time. He was not worried about the worsening situation. Why? He could use the domain of instant flash to protect his companions' lives, but that would not necessarily protect Hayue. So where did his confidence come from? It came from his trump card. His trump card was Kyer. In this realm of undead, basically everyone from the bright glimmer of hope was weakened. Most of them were not suited for combat in this place, especially everyone with the light element. Apart from Thru Han Yu's spiritual stove of light's blessing, it was very difficult for them to recover on this battlefield. Chapter 764, Long Houchen's Trump Card, Kyer. 3. However, not everyone was weakened in this realm. Out of the bright glimmer of hope, one person was extremely accustomed to fighting in such an environment. Her strength would even be magnified tremendously, and she was Kyer. Kyer's power of purification was the ultimate weapon against undead creatures. And, she only needed to purify a single powerful undead creature and all of its soul fire would turn into her own power. In the past, the Lux had transferred his own power to Kyer like this, allowing Kyer and Long Houchen to overcome the bottleneck of the ninth step together and rapidly gain their own domain. As a matter of fact, the process of purification assisted her sickle of the god of death in evolving. Before the bright glimmer of hope had arrived here, Long Houchen had already set their objectives and their plan for battle. The plan was very simple, which was to drag out the battle, because their objective was only to block the enemy and made enough time for Hauyue to evolve. It was not to throw their lives on the line against these undead. As a result, although they had clashed with great intensity right from the start, the bright glimmer of hope still held back slightly. It was mainly Kyer and Long Houchen who held back. If they exposed Kyer's purifying ability too soon, it would definitely garner much attention from the undead kings and the undead army would arrive sooner. These undead kings obviously were powerful in certain aspects to be able to reign over this realm. If the bright glimmer of hope could make them erupt with their full strength later, there would be a higher chance of success for Hauyue's evolution. Now that the undead kings had finally unleashed their full force and Chen had been defeated, Kyer erupted with her full power. Combining the Tower of Eternity with the Domain of Purification and the Seven Arts of the God of Death, she managed to purify the Shadow King before he could even respond. Afterwards, she used the power from the Shadow King's soul fire to release a flourishing lotus flower, immediately turning around the entire situation. Not only did she plug the breach, she had reduced the ten undead kings to nine and almost annihilated the Bone Dragon army. Kyer had stunned all the undead kings as soon as she had demonstrated her might. None of them wanted to be the next target to be purified. It was also at this moment that the undead armoy underneath launched their attack towards Hauyue's hill. Six balls of light representing six elements, water, fire, earth, wind, light and darkness, erupted from different directions. Out of the twelve holy guards, six were skilled in close combat and six were skilled in magic. Their abilities were highly balanced. Their souls of powerhouses granted them great battle prowess. In terms of battle experience and actual skill in battle, the bright glimmer of hope was unable to match up to them at all, so they did not need Kyer's orders at all. When the undead army had begun their attack, they were already prepared for battle. Six spells, six forbidden spells, hurled over from six different places at the same time. Large swathes of undead were felled like wheat. The weaker undead directly died, while the stronger undead could no longer afford to attack anymore, devoting themselves to defense in a hurry. However, large quantities of darkness magic, curses and death magic began to hurl towards the hill. The undead army was just too large. It was possible to say that all the strong undead in the realm had gathered there. The forbidden spells of the holy guards could only disrupt their attacks, unable to stop it completely. In particular, the stronger undead that charged at the very front were highly immune to magic. Kyer snorted coldly and raised her left hand, releasing the Tower of Eternity once more. She drifted down at the same time. The Tower of Eternity immediately expanded, enveloping the entire hill. Under the attack of all the magic from the undead, the Tower of Eternity released rings of multicolored light, like it was being buffeted by a storm. Kyer landed on the Tower of Eternity and stood on its very top on her toes. She raised the sickle of the God of Death high up in the air and dense power of purification poured into the Tower of Eternity. A strange hum rang out. The hum was not loud, such that many members of the bright glimmer of hope even failed to hear it. However, it shocked the undead creatures like a huge hammer had struck their chests. Layers of white light expanded from the Tower of Eternity. Currently, it was like a domain amplifier to Kyer. The Tower of Eternity itself had a power special characteristic of being able to suppress souls. Coupled with the power of purification, the two complemented each other and immediately allowed the white light to expand. All of the undead magic mingled with the power of purification. The disorderly magic was unable to break through the Tower of Eternity's defenses anytime soon, but the domain of purification Kyer had unleashed through the Tower of Eternity was like him of death to the undead. All of the undead that had been enveloped by the domain of purification, whether weak or strength, immediately froze up. Afterwards, their soul fire began to experience the pain of purification in the domain. The weaker undead could not even put up the slightest resistance. The purification was completely instantly. Some of the stronger undead charged outwards without any regard of anything else anymore in an attempt to escape from the domain of purification. There were just too many undead creatures. Apart from those that could fly, how was it possible for the undead on the ground to escape? As a result, the sight that shocked all the undead kings appeared. 
Their powerful undead army had collapsed from inside out, felt like wheat on a fine autumn day. Nothing happened to their bodies, but their souls were purified. After their souls had been purified, the soul force returned to the Tower of Eternity, before being passed on to Kyr. There were just too many undead creatures, such that the power released after purification was far too tremendous. Kyr could only absorb a small portion of it, while the rest was released through the Tower of Eternity by expanding the range of the domain. The undead creatures finally experienced fear. They could fight any enemy fearlessly to the death, but faced with a battle where they would die without being able to do anything, which one of them could still maintain their desire to fight? Let alone ordinary undead creatures, even the undead kings themselves were affected by the domain of purification. All of them pulled far away in a hurry. The undead army began to collapse and large swathes of it descended into chaos. Witnessing the fates of their clansmen, the undead behind all fled. Who knew how many weaker undead creatures were trampled by stronger undead creatures? However, the domain of purification continued to spread outwards at a steady pace. Currently, the most terrifying aspect of the domain of purification was the fact that its expansion was never-ending. There were just too many undead creatures there, so the power they gave off once purified was tremendous. Although Kyr could not control this power completely through the Tower of Eternity, she could do something as simple as expand the domain. The power of purification became stronger and stronger and it was no longer just the undead that was being purified. Wherever the white light passed by, even the black rocks on the ground and the flames from the thick lava began to be purified. It was actually reverted to brown soil and the ground leveled out. Currently, Kyr seemed even more like the ruler of the world than the Knight of Judgment of the Dead. As the domain of purification rapidly strengthened, it had already enveloped an area almost 10,000 meters wide. A streak of white light would appear from the heads of the undead once they had remained in the domain for a while, which would then become a part of the domain. The rate of this happening only differed by the amount of time a region had been enveloped by the domain. With the support of the domain of purification, everyone from the bright glimmer of hope fought back as hard as they could. All the undead kings were affected by the domain of purification and their strength decreased drastically. They needed to protect their soul fire from coming into contact with the power of the domain, so they could only retreat, fleeing to places even further away. The powerhouses of the bright glimmer of hope pursued them and left behind wounds on some of the undead kings. Boom! The undead king was sent flying once again by Long Houchen after using his full strength in an attack. As he watched the surroundings become the hazy white domain of purification, he could not help but roar out, No! No! The undead army had been completely repelled by the domain of purification. Moreover, the terrifying domain could not even be sealed up by his technique. After growing in strength, Kyr's domain had become far too powerful. The Knight of Judgment of the Dead raised his sword high up in the air and swung it in Kyr's direction. An icy blue light shot towards her as he roared out. However, before the light could make it a hundred meters away, it was blocked by a jade green figure. Nature's Bloom It was the same technique, but it managed to block the Knight of Judgment of the Dead's attack once more. Long Houchen was unable to do anything to the Knight of Judgment of the Dead due to the huge disparity in their cultivation, but the Knight of Judgment of the Dead was unable to break free from him either. The Armor of Eternity had granted Long Houchen speed that was just as great as the Knight of Judgment of the Dead. Although Long Houchen had only used one of the three sword techniques in his possession, he had managed to repel the Knight of Judgment of the Dead's full strength attacks again and again. Despair began to overwhelm the Knight of Judgment of the Dead's soul. The Domain of Purification had even began to burn his spiritual energy. Although the Domain would not be able to do anything to him any time soon, it would prevent him from absorbing any powers of darkness to recover at the very least. It also cut off his connection with his clansmen. They was done for. They was completely done for. Even if there wasn't Austin Griffin, even if it was just these humans, the Undead King still could not put up any resistance. Was the Domain of Purification really just going to expand endlessly like this? If that really was the case, would this realm be purified? If that was going to happen, being purified would only be an issue of time even for him. Chapter 765, Singular Annihilation, I. As the Knight of Judgment of the Dead began to despair, Long Houchen did not attack him. Instead, he returned with a flash, landing beside Kyr. The green ball of light that revolved around him exhibited its might once more. It landed on Kyr's back quietly and rich vitality slowly poured into Kyr's body. At the same time, the white ball of light landed before his chest slowly and dense, white light poured into the center of the gemstone on his armor. This was a tremendous amount of power of chaos. In just a short while, the space around Long Houchen became riddled with cracks and soon afterwards, there was a clang and the dark purple symbol that hovered behind him shattered, dispersing in the air. Long Houchen was unable to remove the Knight of Judgment of the Dead Seal in battle, but now that he was not fighting, it was just far too difficult to keep the Armor of Eternity sealed. Not to mention, most of the Knight of Judgment of the Dead's efforts were focused on fending off the Domain of Purification. How could he stop Long Houchen? The Domain of Purification suddenly stopped expanding and the white light stopped spreading outwards. Instead, it rose up slowly in the air. Although the purifying power brought agony upon the undead, wherever it passed by, the air would become unbelievably pure. It cleansed the filth of this world on a large scale. Long Houchen and the others were not too pressured in fending off the undead, not to mention the fact that it was the undead who tried everything to stop Haoyue. However, he was the one who had stopped Kyr's attack. He did not do it for the undead, but for Kyr herself. 
Through the connection of the soul-sharing chains, Long Houchen sensed the instability of Kaya's condition and rushed to her side immediately. Touching her body, he discovered in surprise that Kaya was close to losing control and collapsing. He immediately used the light of life from the divine throne of eternity and creation to pour large amounts of vitality into her body, to stabilize her condition and speed up her cultivation. The unsealed light of eternity domain came into contact with Kyer's domain of purification and assisted her in stabilizing the domain, preventing it from expanding any further and dispersing more of the purification power. It was not actually Kyer's fault for losing control of her powers. This was the first time she had ever encountered something like this. She had never thought that the domain of purification would be so terrifyingly effective against the undead after the Tower of Eternity had expanded. The power given off from purifying so many powerful undead in a short amount of time was just too terrifying. Kyer's body had basically been filled instantly. As the inheritor of the God of Death's legacy, all this purifying power should have been good news for Abel, able to propel her cultivation forwards and open up her spiritual cavities one by one. However, there was still a limit to the energy her body could withstand. Once too much purifying power flowed into her and the purifying power outside had exceeded her limit of control, problems would begin to occur. As everything had happened too quickly, the purifying power had already begun to lose control when Kaya realized the problem. She could not even request for help. If it were not for the Tower of Eternity, she probably would have been heavily injured from the returning purifying power alone. Fortunately, Long Houchen had discovered her situation in time. Whether it was in this realm or on the Shinwa Dalu, the Light of Eternity domain had reached the very apex of domains. Kyer did not reject Long Houchen either, so the two domains melded together and Long Houchen used his increased strength from the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation to quickly contain the situation. He first stopped the domain of purification from expanding, so it would stop purifying undead. Only then could he prevent the creation of even more power of purification. Under Long Houchen's assistance, Kyer's condition established quickly. Emotions filled her eyes as she looked at Long Houchen. Long Houchen nodded at her with some reproach, indicating her to maintain her current condition. With danger came blessings. Something like this would only happen out of pure chance. With such tremendous power of purification, Kyer's cultivation would grow with every bit of it she absorbed. It was much, much faster than just cultivating. Long Houchen understood Kyer was in danger, but the undead kings did not. When the Knight of Judgment of the Dead saw the domain of purification stop under Long Houchen's control, some minute changes immediately appeared in the leaping soul fire in his eyes. At this very moment, Long Houchen's voice boomed through the was world of undead. I had no intentions to fight you, nor do I want to kill you all. However, if you keep attacking, you can't blame us for being merciless and completely cleansing your realm. Long Houchen's voice was not particularly resounding. It did not even carry much emotion. However, every single undead king heard it clearly. They found the domain of purification even more terrifying now. The originally pure white domain now possessed an additional layer of dignified gold. All the stronger undead in the domain had their soul fires extinguished quickly basically as soon as the golden color had appeared. It was much more powerful than before. Let alone ordinary undead creatures, even the nine remaining undead kings could only look at the light of eternal purification. They dared not to take a step forwards. This was no longer due to a difference in cultivation. This was just completely dominating them due to their nature as undead. The Lich King's high-pitched voice rang out, You say you're not going to kill us all. Are you saying that Austin Griffin will spare all of us once it awakens? Long Houchen said coldly, I don't know what Haoyue had done to you all in his past life, I only know that you've always been targeting him since he was born. If it weren't for a coincidence, he might have died to your hands a long time ago. The Lich King's voice became even higher, that's because you don't know what it did in the past. You don't know just how terrifying it is once it fully awakens. Long Houchen smiled indifferently, I only know it's my companion, my friend. You should be able to tell that if you keep attacking us, there is no chance for you to achieve victory. You'll only be killed by us. Even if Haoyue wants to deal with you after it awakens, it's better than dying right now. You should be able to determine what is for the best. The Knight of Judgment's voice was rather strange. It was slightly hoarse, yet also slightly deep, Austin Griffin's your companion? Aren't you afraid of suffering from the backlash once it awakens? You aren't weak, but against Austin Griffin that's truly awakened, it's nothing. Long Houchen said coldly, that's my problem, not for you to worry about. However, I can tell you that Haoyue has only returned to this realm because it wants to evolve. In the future, it'll spend most of its time by my side, accompanying me in my realm. If it's really like what you said that this is his final evolution, then it might never have to return to this realm again. The Knight of Judgment of the Dead asked in some disbelief, are you saying that it won't ever come back again? Long Houchen said, I can't guarantee you, but I can say that if you leave here right now and stop targeting Haoyue in the future, it won't target you in the future either. Kyer had gradually entered a state of comprehension. Coupled with losing control earlier, she had become incapacitated from battle, apart from maintaining her domain. Even though Long Houchen still had cards up his sleeve, he really did not the battle to devolve into a life or death struggle. He could not afford a single death in the bright glimmer of hope. How is that possible? Do you have the right to make promises for Austin Griffin? The Lich King's voice was filled with doubt. The mask on Long Houchen's face slowly rose up as the nine gems on his crown flashed with beautiful light. He seemed like a king who reigned over everything. Here is my right. He pointed at his forehead. 
Afterwards, nine streaks of golden symbols slowly appeared under his control. An obscure purple also appeared in the air, connecting him with Hao Yu. What's this? The Knight of Judgment of the Dead leapt in fright, while the other undead kings immediately fell silent as well. Even the Bone Dragon King transformed from its armor form and appeared beside the Knight of Judgment of the Dead. The same emotion appeared in the soul fire in their eyes. A, a blood pact? How is that possible? Austin Griffin actually formed a blood pact with a human? The Lich King even began to stutter from pure shock. The other undead kings experienced the same amount of shock as her. In that moment, the world of black and red actually descended into silence. Long Hao Chun asked sternly, do I possess the right now? The Knight of Judgment of the Dead did not reply immediately. Instead, he gathered with the other undead kings quickly. They were enveloped by a gray haze. Clearly, they were discussing something. Long Hao Chun did not worry at all. Buying time was his best option. Both Hao Yue and Kyer needed time to evolve and comprehend respectively. The bright glimmer of hope also saw the change in the situation. Aside from Yang Wen Zhao, Duan Yi and the Twelve Holy Guards, everyone gathered by Long Hao Chun's side. Under the assistance of Han Yu's spiritual stove of light's blessing, he had recovered around 70 or 80 percent. Although Chen Ninger and Wang Yuan Yuan's situation was slightly worse, they could still keep fighting. Doused by the light of eternity, they did not feel restrained by the realm anymore, allowing them to slowly recover the exhaustion that had accumulated earlier. Chapter 766, Singular Annihilation, 2 After a whole quarter of an hour, the gray haze around the undead kings dispersed slowly. When the Knight of Judgment of the Dead faced Long Haochen again, his prior aggression had vanished completely. Esteemed human king, you have demonstrated your ability and sincerity with your blood pact. Since you are able to form a contract like that with Austin Griffin, we have decided to believe you. We hope you can keep your promise and keep Griffin restrained, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead referred to Long Haochen in a different way, implying their agreement and their recognition of Long Haochen. Long Haochen nodded emotionlessly, I won't repeat what I just said. Although the Knight of Judgment of the Dead was unable to gain a further promise from Long Haochen, he did not pursue the matter. He glanced at Hao Yue in the distance in some fear, before leading the undead kings and their undead army away in a slow retreat. Watching the undead kings vanish slowly, Long Haochen produced a deep sigh. White light expanded from his limbs, before all gathering towards the huge gemstone on his chest. When all the light had been absorbed, the divine throne of eternity and creation vanished silently with the central gemstone. Long Haochen tottered slightly. His face was extremely pale. He only managed to stay on his feet with Han Yu's support. He was not weakened due to overexhaustion of spiritual energy. Instead, the weakness came from his soul. The divine throne of eternity and creation made him feel like he had endless power, but the mental effort required to control this terrifying powerful was horrifying. Even though he had completely fused with the throne, Long Haochen had almost expended all of his mental force in the battle earlier. It was very normal for his soul to be weakened. This was also one of the main reasons why he did not want to keep fighting. If it continued, it would probably take too heavy of a toll on his soul. After a moment of meditation, Long Haochen stabilized his condition. He said to his companions beside him, Han Yu, Brother Zhang, please survey the surroundings. Everyone else scattered yourselves in the outskirts of the domain of purification. Let's wait for Hao Yu's evolution to be completed. All right. Everyone moved quickly. They all took up a particular position, while Kaya remained in the domain of purification. There was not a single undead creature that could enter the domain without alerting them even if they had become invisible. Long Haochen guarded Kaya. His eyes were closed as he continued to recover his mental force. To his surprise, the chain around his neck transformed from the holy unicorn began to give off a gentle, mental pulse, actually connecting with his mind. The unicorn could not help him recover his mental force directly, but it could bear some of his mental exhaustion. That way, Long Haochen would be able to recover his mental force just like when he normally cultivated. It would obviously be much faster. Under Kyer's rapid absorption, the power of purification became thinner and thinner, while Kyer's aura became stronger and stronger. Even the Tower of Eternity beneath her turned into the same white as the Power of Purification. The undead army had indeed retreated and they showed no sign of returning. Long Haochen could guess what the Knight of Judgment of the Dead and the Undead Kings were thinking. Their thoughts were very simple. If they kept fighting, there was no chance for them to achieve victory, nor was it possible for them to stop Austin Griffin from awakening. At most, they would just make Long Haochen lose a few people, but that would be setting their grievances in stone. Once Austin Griffin did awaken, would it still spare them? Long Haochen used the Blood Pact to prove his close relationship with Hao Yue, so the Knight of Judgment of the Dead needed to gamble on it. He gambled that Long Haochen would keep his promise and stop targeting them. The Undead Kings actually had no other choice aside from this after weighing the benefits and consequences. It was impossible for people to tell the time in this world of black and red. Kyer's cultivation increased as Hao Yue continued to evolve, while everyone else remained alert while waiting. However, in another world, a war unfolded. Boom! With a flash of nine-colored light, a beautiful figure fell down in the distance and fell into a forest that covered almost a thousand square meters. The beautiful figure was a special creature. It was very pretty and it was jade green in color with a hint of blue. Its head was very similar to dragons, while it stood around 15 meters tall. Its long tail was covered with rings of dark purple symbols. 
The most beautiful part of it was its wings. On top of the connection between its wings and back was the same color as its body, but it gradually turned pink further down the connection, before gradually become a ruby red. Its wings were especially wide and the part that protruded from the back also gradually changed to a purple. On the edge of its wings were slender spikes, with the spike at the very end of the wings the longest. The wings were also covered by an image formed from golden lines, depicting the moon. Its pupils were jade green as well. However, they were currently filled with anger, while its powerful aura of nature weakened. A burnt black wound existed on its right abdomen. A clear, cold voice resounded through the air, it's useless. You can't stop me. Your cultivation might be something, but there's still a difference if you compare it to mine. Moreover, you're only a fairy dragon. A figure hovered in the air quietly in the distance. His flowing black hair hovered in the form of a wheel behind him, while faint, purple lines of symbols flickered on his long, black robes. It made his skin seem even paler. His eyes seemed to hide the starlight of the universe as his handsome face formed a faint smile. Wasn't this the demon god emperor, Feng Xiu? This was the world of humans and it was very, very close to the southern mountain pass where the priest temple resided. However, the temple union did not receive any news of it. Let alone the humans, even the high-ranking demons, even the moon demon god or star demon god, did not know that the demon god emperor who should have been in seclusion in the demon emperor palace was actually here. The fairy dragon slowly climbed to its feet. It unfurled its wings and took to the skies again. Its flight was clearly rather unstable as it stared at Feng Xiu coldly, Demon God Emperor, you better step over my dead body if you want to enter the illusory shrine. Perhaps you can defeat me, but without the Demon God Pillar, it's highly likely that we'll die together. The Demon God Emperor shook his head gently, no, you're wrong. If I didn't have complete confidence, why would I come? Although I haven't brought the Demon God Pillar with me to fool everyone and to prevent the annoying humans from discovering me, I still have the ability to kill you off completely. As he said that, the Demon God Emperor extended his right hand slowly. Afterwards, a strange black color appeared in front of him. The black light seemed extremely weak, but in the moment it appeared, all of the light in the surroundings seemed to be sucked away. The light there completely descended into darkness. The fairy dragon produced a low roar and nine colored light shone from its body. Powerful pulses of spiritual energy swept out. It was no weaker than the demon god emperor. However, in the next moment, all of the light suddenly vanished. If seen from a distance, the fairy dragon would have seemed like a lantern that was suddenly snuffed out. The light gradually returned. The demon god emperor remained standing there, while the fairy dragon still floated in the air. In that moment, Feng Xiu was even more pale than before. His body actually tottered as he floated in the air. The demon god emperor had actually become so weak. On the other side, many black specks had appeared on the fairy dragon's chest. These black specks were like a disease as they slowly spread out. They did not spread quickly, but the fairy dragon's tremendous vitality slowly declined. Cough, cough, Feng Xiu coughed twice. He actually could not remain in the air anymore, landing on the ground. However, his handsome face still smiled. Your total amount of spiritual energy should be between 970,000 and 980,000, while my spiritual energy had already surpassed a million successfully. I don't belong to this world, so after my spiritual energy has broken through, I won't become a god. However, I have to endure the backlash of spiritual energy every day. This is God's punishment, so I need the status of a god to deal with this issue completely. With the status of a god, I can move through space and the realms and I won't be bound by the principles of any realm, nor will I have to worry about longevity. You should feel honored to die to my singular inhiliation. You are the first and of course, you are likely to be the last as well. There probably isn't another person who's worthy enough for me to do this on the Shengma Dalu. The fairy dragon was rather stunned as it looked at Feng Xiu. The blackness on its chest had already spread to a third of Tiz's body, while specks of light began to drift away from the center of the blackness. Its body was falling apart. Singular Annihilation. You actually have achieved that. You actually managed to endure it despite the backlash of God. You should be the strongest out of all the demon god emperors. Your majesty the goddess of nature, apologies. I have done all that I can. I can't protect your illusory shrine anymore. As it said that, the blackness suddenly spread faster and the fairy dragon slowly disappeared in the air as countless specks of white light. With its disappearance, everything in the surroundings seemed to dim. The aura of nature rapidly declined. Feng Xiu sat down on the ground, as if he felt nothing about everything that had just happened. His face was pale, but extremely calm. Rings of black light began to appear in his surroundings and in just a short while, an invisible pressure expanded from his body once more. All of the plants in the surroundings began to shrivel up. This was a sign of their vitality being taken away. Chapter 767, Singular Annihilation, 3 Whoosh! 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 Three balls of light spray forth and gradually condensed into shape in the air. They turned into three pure and perfect white lotuses. Kyer exhaled and opened her eyes slowly. They were filled with surprise and joy. The fourth rank of the ninth step. Through the purification of the undead army and her understanding that came afterwards, she actually overcame obstacles consecutively and reached the fourth rank of the ninth step. Her cultivation had even surpassed Long Houchens in a single breath. This was a fantastic encounter for her. And, the Tower of Eternity had evolved to a translucent white with her. 
It had basically fused with her completely, breaking free from the shadow of the slumbering calamity Alux entirely. Congratulations, Kyer, Long Houchen smiled at his lover. Joy filled his face. From when she began until now, Long Houchen estimated that roughly ten days had passed on the Shinma Dalu. Kyer was not the only one who experienced a drastic increase in cultivation in those ten days. After the battle with the undead kings, everyone else in the bright glimmer of hope had gained rich battle experience and grew more accustomed to their new equipment. They each increased their understanding and progressed to a higher level. Although the battle earlier was dangerous, it was essentially the testing grounds for the bright glimmer of hope after they had all increased in strength. Kyer smiled sweetly, my spiritual energy should be around the same as your now, but my cultivation might be slightly higher than yours. After Long Houchen had merged with the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation, his cultivation remained at the peak of the third rank of the ninth step. In other words, he was at the bottleneck. Including the Heart of Eternity, his spiritual energy had actually reached over 400,000. Kyer had broken through to the fourth rank, but her spiritual energy was around the same as Long Houchen's. Long Houchen smiled, wouldn't that mean you'll be the one protecting me in the future? Kyer held his hand and smiled gently, of course not. No matter when it is, you should always be protecting me. Who let you become my man? Speaking of which, how's how you as evolution going? The great increase in her cultivation was unexpected joy to her. Of course, it would be difficult to replicate the same incident. However, the Tower of Eternity had also absorbed some of the power of purification, strengthening its element. It brought great benefit to her increase in strength overall. Long Houchen said, how you as should be almost done with evolving. Look. Kyer looked in the direction Long Houchen was pointing in. As expected, Hao Yue who lay there was no longer peaceful. His body had grown much larger once more, even larger than the clansmen of the demon dragon emperor, the devil dragons. It had actually exceeded 40 meters in length and each of its necks had grown thicker. Its purple scales shone with a bright luster as a terrifying aura faded in and out. The twelve holy guards now were no longer willing to remain by its side. The two huge bulges at the very front continued to tremble and purple liquid had even begun to ooze out at the very top. Clearly, they should have been two heads. Once they had grown out, Hao Yue's evolution would be completed. Long Houchen said, as Hao Yue evolves, he seems to be absorbing a special power of this world constantly. I can't clearly identify this power with my connection to it, but I am certain that it isn't the darkness element and fire element this world is contaminated with. It should be another power, and it seems to originate from itself in the first place. Kyer furrowed her brows slightly and said softly, Houchen, whether it's the demon god emperor or the undead of this realm, they all want to do bad things to Hao Yue. It seems like if Hao Yue matures successfully, it'll pose a great threat to them. If Hao Yue really is that powerful, maybe. Long Houchen let out a soft sign and he wrapped his hand around Kyer's thin waist. He said, Hao Yue is a good brother of mine. I can only choose to believe in him. Am I supposed to abandon it just because of my suspicions over its future powers? It's impossible for me to do that, so I don't have any other choice. And, I believe that even if Hao Yue was that Austin Griffin they speak of in its former life, it's only my good brother Hao Yue now. The blood pact has not only brought it our relationship. I've also changed its element in the past. Apart from its noble and powerful bloodline, it also contains a part of my bloodline. Kyer nodded gently, all right. No matter what you choose, I will support you unconditionally. Even now, Long Houchen was still uncertain about Hao Yue's true origins. He was not even willing to investigate. However, it was just like what he had said. Regardless of Hao Yue's origins, how powerful it was in the past and how destructive it was, it was his brother. Was he supposed to turn on Hao Yue just because of his fear of Hao Yue's future powers? He's almost done, Long Houchen said suddenly. At the same time, the nine purplish golden lines of symbols appeared. The intense light illuminated an area of several dozen square meters. Kyer also leapt in fright. An additional, terrifying aura that was the same as Hao Yue's suddenly appeared on Long Houchen. This aura even seemed to make her domain of purification tremble. With a flash of purple light, Long Houchen had appeared above Hao Yue. The purplish golden light began to expand from his forehead, covering him from head to toe in the blink of an eye. He became the same color. The sudden occurrence alarmed the others of the bright glimmer of hope who were cultivating. After rousing, they immediately scattered and paid attention to everything going on the surroundings. Hao Yue had reached the crucial moment of his evolution. Long Houchen seemed to be affected by this evolution as well. Now was the most dangerous time. However, having roused at an appropriate time, Kyer became the backbone of the bright glimmer of hope. Her purification powers gave off enough deterrence to scare away any enemy. Kyer pointed at the air with the sickle of the god of death in her right hand and the three white lotuses condensed earlier immediately flew out. The three lotuses flew off in three different directions, forming a circle far away from where Hao Yue was evolving. Wasn't this the flourishing lotus flower? If the undead powerhouses really had come to attack, they had to consider the consequences of these flourishing lotus flowers exploding regardless of where they came from. The bright glimmer of hope understood each other well. Those adept at close combat remained outside, while the mages remained inside. Chen Ying'er chose to unleash her creature summoning gate without any hesitation once more. After the battle against the Lich King, Chen Ying'er had learned a lot. Now, her summoning had increased drastically. This time, only one creature summoning gate opened up, but an extremely special magical beast emerged from it. 
It was a pure white horse, which shone with transparent light. Apart from its color and the light it gave off, it seemed no different from an ordinary horse, but very soon, it demonstrated its might. With a flash, just like a white bolt of lightning, the white horse arrived in the outskirts. It actually arrived below a flourishing lotus flower and it used its head to nudge the flower gently. Something strange happened. The white light from the flourishing lotus flower did not reject it at all. A ring of white light gradually appeared on the horse's body and below its feet. Wherever the ring of light reached, gentle white light would slowly expand. It was actually the same purifying power as Kyre. This is a beast of purification, Aldo. Rumor has it that it is the god of death's mount, Chen Inger giggled and pointed at Kyre with her right hand. The beast of purification, Aldo, immediately turned back. When it saw Kyre, it immediately found her to be close. It erupted with terrifying speed and directly arrived beside Kyre, nudging her with its large head. Kyre could sense the purifying aura from it and she could not help but become overjoyed. With the assistance of the beast of purification, her purifying powers would strengthen. Obviously, it would be much easier to deal with the undead of this realm. As they carefully guarded Haoyue, Haoyue entered the most crucial moment of his evolution. Purple light constantly surged out from Haoyue's body, gathering above it. Where Long Haochen resided was in the center of the purple. The purpleness was the will of destruction, but due to their blood connection, Long Haochen did not conflict with Haoyue's original powers. The power of destruction was much more brutal than his original power of light. When the will of destruction surged into his body, Long Haochen shattered the bottleneck of the third rank of the ninth step. His spiritual energy rose crazily once more. This time, it was due to the increase in power from merging with the divine throne of eternity and creation, as well as the powers from Haoyue. Haoyue's scales gradually began to crack. The scales which had become huge as they grew with him gradually cracked into smaller scales. Each scale was rough the size of two hands, and the crests on each scale turned into nine crisscrossing crests. The refracted purple light had become iridescent as well. The iridescence constantly changed in color. Every single scale on Haoyue gave off an iridescent purple, such that the purple color would vary in depth depending on the angle. It added a mysterious characteristic to it and it was even more magnificent than before. When the purple had reached its deepest color, Haoyue would become camouflaged in this world of black and red. The two huge bulges trembled more violently as well. Even more purple fluid oozed out. As a matter of fact, cracks became visible. Haoyue's aura erupted like a geyser and immediately broke through the ninth step. Afterwards, it continued to rise. In the blink of an eye, it had surpassed Long Haochen and continued to climb up. Finally, a huge head emerged boldly from the bulge on the left with a spurt. It let out a roar. The iridescent purple scales immediately shone brightly and Haoyue's aura erupted once more at the same time. On the right, another huge head emerged and its powerful aura immediately rose again. Chapter 768, Eight-Headed Haoyue, I. Long Haochen was completely enveloped by the purple light. He was no longer visible. Haoyue's body erupted once more and directly surpassed 50 meters in length. It became a tremendous creature. Haoyue's two new heads were differently colored as well. The left head was dark golden, with only a single eye. Compared to the other heads, the eye was clearly over a third larger. From the top of its head down its neck, there was a neat line of huge, dark golden spikes. The spike at the very top was the largest, spanning two meters in length. The cold, metallic luster was chilling. The single eye constantly shone with a golden luster. The other head was black and purple, but it was not of the dark attribute, because a ball of lightning constantly flickered near its single horn, which demonstrated its element. The single horn on the huge head was very special. Below, it was jagged like lightning, while the top was a ball. It seemed rather similar to a tomato. After the two heads had emerged, Haoyue raised his six other heads as well. It was just too impressive of a sight as the eight heads rose together. It had a mountainous body, strange, purple and iridescent scales and a terrifying aura, as well as eight huge heads that represented eight different elements. Currently, Haoyue's aura had already surpassed the Night of Judgment of the Deads. Its cultivation had probably reached around the seventh rank of the ninth step. Purple light rose up from Haoyue's body, gradually forming a purple cloud above him. As the purple cloud slowly expanded, the terrifying will of destruction forcefully purged all the filth in the air. Very soon, the entire sky became purple. Even the sun had become purple as it hung in the air. When the bright glimmer of hope saw Haoyue, they actually felt like they were almost going to suffocate. It was too powerful. Haoyue really had become too powerful, so powerful that they were unable to properly discern its true strength anymore. Its spiritual energy pulses had surpassed the night of judgment of the dead. Just what level had its tremendous body reached? However, the only thing that the bright glimmer of hope worried about was Long Haochen's control over Haoyue. Having surpassed Long Haochen's cultivation and now in possession of such a powerful will of destruction, could Long Haochen still control Haoyue? The worry that Kyer had expressed to Long Haochen earlier represented what the others were thinking about as well. Haoyue slowly unfurled its two huge wings as its powerful body was supported by its four limbs. Its eight heads let out a furious bellow once more and its pupils which flickered with different colors turned purple at the same time. They all let out a purple breath at Long Haochen together. What's Haoyue doing? Wang Yuanyuan could not help but ask rather nervously. Kyer gazed into the distance and said sternly, we have to believe in Long Haochen's judgment. Actually, she was nervous as well. 
If Hao Yue really wanted to harm Long Haochen, it was already too late for them to intervene. Although they had expected Hao Yue to become extremely powerful after evolving, they never expected it to be so strong. However, Hao Yue made them stop worrying very soon. Purplish golden light flashed in the air under the eight incoming breaths, just like one of the purplish golden scales from Hao Yue's body. The deep purplish gold color flowed around Long Haochen's body and the nine lines of purplish golden symbols on his forehead became brighter and brighter. The nine lines protruded and shrank slightly on his forehead, before remaining there. This time, the nine lines did not just appear temporarily. Instead, they remained there like markings on Long Haochen. Long Haochen's aura changed as well. Although it did not erupt like Hao Yue's, his cultivation did continue to rise. Now, all of the clothes on his body had vanished. They had all become purplish gold. The heart of eternity thumped heavily in his chest. At the same time, a ball of white light appeared in the pupilish gold color. It represented Long Haochen's spiritual pellet, as well as his largest spiritual cavity. His forehead, shoulders, hips, knees and elbows lit up with white light as well, before extending downwards. Every ball of white light represented a cavity, as well as 10,000 of Long Haochen's spiritual energy. At the very beginning, there were only 39 balls of white light, but as Hao Yue's power entered, more and more white light appeared on Long Haochen. 45, 46, 47, 49. In the blink of an eye, Long Haochen's cultivation had reached the peak of the fourth rank of the ninth step. He had surpassed Kyer again and if he advanced further, he would reach the fifth rank. Reaching the fifth rank was a whole new world for powerhouses of the ninth step. It was equivalent to a great leap. The properties of the blood pact was completely exhibited at a time like this. Long Haochen and Hao Yue had always been supporting each other. Whenever one of them increased in strength, the other would gain an increase as well. Now that Hao Yue had directly evolved from six heads to eight heads, the effect on Long Haochen's strength was much greater than all of the evolutions in the past. Suddenly, the purplish golden light on Long Haochen lit up. Afterwards, all of his cavities lit up as well. The white light even managed to push the purplish golden light away temporarily. The fiftieth cavity lit up flagrantly. The fifth rank of the ninth step. Long Haochen had finally broken through to the fifth rank of the ninth step. Hao Yue's power actually assisted him in overcoming two bottlenecks consecutively. His spiritual energy continued to increase, but it clearly slowed down compared to the beginning. 51, 52, 53, upon the appearance of the 57th spiritual cavity, his spiritual energy stopped climbing and the purplish golden light gradually stabilized as well. Now, Long Haochen had truly become the greatest in the Temple Union in terms of the amount of spiritual energy. Coupled with the additional boost from the Heart of Eternity, his spiritual energy had even exceeded the starry ski Holy Knight Yang Haoyu. The light flashed and receded as Long Haochen's aura gradually grew stable. The purpleness from Hao Yue's eight huge heads gradually faded, returning to their original color. However, their eyes shone with intimacy. Clearly, its evolution in strength did not change its feelings toward Long Haochen. The purplish golden light slightly vanished. Only the nine lines of purplish golden symbols remained on Long Haochen's forehead. He slowly opened his eyes. His pupils were still a clear gold, but in the moment he opened his eyes, purple flashed through the depths of his eyes. Looking at Hao Yue below him, Long Haochen was deeply shocked, not by Hao Yue's strength, but by the beauty of body, as well as the effect that Hao Yue had brought onto him. His spiritual cavities had directly jumped from 39 to 57, making him truly become the greatest powerhouse of the human world. Coupled with the divine throne of eternity and creation in Hao Yue, this was the first time Long Haochen had complete confidence in challenging the demon god emperor. And, his soul was growing stronger as well, which was equivalent to stronger spiritual energy. The eruption in mental force shocked him even more. Long Haochen's natural mental force was extraordinary, much more powerful than an ordinary person. After Hao Yue had evolved this time, his mental force had actually increased by more than double, which was more than enough to show how powerful Hao Yue had become. Suddenly, Hao Yue's dark golden head darted to one side. Only that head shone brightly with golden light and in the next moment, Hao Yue's mountainous body just vanished. Hmm. Long Haochen sensed something was wrong. When Hao Yue reappeared, he was several thousand meters away. Dense, purple light appeared in the air. Two figures appeared before Hao Yue under the illumination of the purple light. Weren't they the Knight of Judgment of the Dead and the Lich King? As it turned out, they still did not trust Long Haochen's promise too much, so they had secretly snuck back. Originally, they had considered launching a sneak attack, but when Kyer's three flourishing lotus flowers appeared in the air, they dismissed that idea. They pleaded that Long Haochen would stick to his word. Now that Hao Yue had finished evolving and its terrifying pressure was the same as 6,000 years ago, they were in utter fear. They dared not to move, afraid that Hao Yue would discover them. However, it was impossible for them to hide from Hao Yue with their cultivation. After Long Haochen's strength had increased, Hao Yue immediately set off for them. The newly grown dark golden head suddenly swung itself and the ridge of spikes on its head immediately extended, becoming 18 terrifying metallic blades of light, slashing towards the Knight of Judgment of the Dead and the Lich King viciously. At the same time, golden light poured out from its only eye, towards the two of them. The seven other heads did nothing. They only watched. When Hao Yue had appeared before the two of them, dense purple light had turned into a huge ring to prevent them from running away. The Lich King let out a scream and she crossed her arms before her chest. 
A purple gas surged in an attempt to block the streak of golden light. However, the golden light tore through it without the slightest resistance, directly landing on her body. The Lich King immediately turned into a golden statue and afterwards, the eighteen huge metallic blades rained down. At this moment, if the Knight of Judgment of the Dead insisted on fleeing, he still might have had a choice. After all, Haoyue had just finished evolving, so his powers were not exactly stable, and he had targeted the Lich King first. Even if Haoyue completely overwhelmed the Knight of Judgment of the Dead in terms of his element, it was still possible for him to charge out of the purple light with his cultivation at the seventh rank of the ninth step. Chapter 769, Eight-Headed Haoyue, 2 However, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead did not do that. With a flash, he blocked in front of the Lich King and raised his dark purple sword. He produced a blur of lights and blocked Haoyue's attack. Heavy clangs constantly erupted in the air. The Knight of Judgment of the Dead was actually beaten into a retreat by Haoyue's new dark golden head. Roar. The seven other heads all produced a furious roar. In the next moment, a bright purple light haze expanded from Haoyue's body. Although the people of the bright glimmer of hope did not take part in this battle, they were all powerhouses, so they could sense what Haoyue was about to do in the distance. Lin Xian could not help but say, I, is that an eight element essence of disorder? Have any of you ever heard about magic that mixes elements? Although Sima Xian's eyes had widened in shock as well, he continued to add sarcastically, it's strange only became you rarely see it. Haven't you seen it now? It's far too powerful. Yes, it really was far too powerful. It was an eight element essence of disorder and it was used instantly. When the bright purple light slammed into the Night of Judgment of the Dead and the Lich King, spiritual energy surged out of both of their bodies. In particular, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead who stood at the front had all of his darkness which represented the darkness element Dragent. The huge sword in his hand lost its luster as well. At this moment, the blades of light from Haoyue's dark golden head quickly fused into a huge blade, striking down towards the Knight of Judgment of the Dead brazenly. At the same time, a thick, purple haze spewed out from his seven other heads, such that the Knight could not even escape anymore. It was also at this moment that the Lich King who had broken free from being covered in golden color suddenly appeared in front of the Knight of Judgment of the Dead. She spread her arms and seemed like she wanted to use her body to block the terrifying attack. A cold light flashed through Haoyue's dark head. Block it? What a joke. Once that blade fell, both undead kings would be dead. In this critical moment, a translucent white light suddenly appeared. Clang. A sharp vibration rang out, so intense that the bright glimmer of hope in the distance could not help but clutch their ears. The Knight of Judgment of the Death and the Lich King retreated together. Haoyue was surprised. He looked at the figure he had knocked away and did not pursue him. Wasn't it Long Haochen who had blocked the Knight of Judgment of the Dead and the Lich King? Roar, grr. Haoyue's eight heads growled in confusion. Only by actually receiving Haoyue attacks could Long Haochen understand just how terrifying it had now become. Long Haochen's arms that clutched the Sword of Eternity both became numb upon taking on the strike. And, a terrifying will of destruction circumvented the Sword of Eternity and left a white mark on the Armor of Eternity. Although the white mark quickly vanished, Long Haochen could still sense the frenzy brought on by the Aura of Destruction. Haoyue, enough. Long Haochen said seriously, I promise them that if they don't disturb your evolution anymore, we'll spare them. They can't threaten you anymore, so just let them go. The Knight of Judgment of the Dead and the Lich King had basically just escaped death. They stared at the man in the armor of eternity blankly. Their feelings were extremely mixed. He really did carry out his promise. He had stopped Austin Griffin from killing them. Haoyue continued to growl, clearly unwilling to spare these two undead kings. Long Haochen snorted angrily, if you really want to do it, then kill me first. He valued his promises dearly. Moreover, he felt a slight unease from the terrifying aura of destruction from Haoyue. Haoyue's eight heads blinked their eyes at the same time and the growling stopped. It flapped its wings and approached Long Haochen closely. Its eight heads extended over together. Be careful, the Lich King could not help but call out. Long Haochen remained where he was. Haoyue's dark golden head glared at the Lich King, before nudging Long Haochen's body gently with its seven other kids. From how it seemed, it was no different from a pet fawning over its master. The Knight of Judgment of the Dead and the Lich King were completely stunned. In their minds, Austin Griffin was a terrifying existence. How, how was it possible for it to be so close to a human? And, it had clearly expressed subservience. In other words, it had agreed to the human and decided to stop hunting them down? Sensing Haoyue's closeness with a hint of indignation, Long Haochen's expression eased up. He gently touched the two new heads and said, I understand your indignation, but the only way for grievances to be settled is through reconciliation. Moreover, they can't threaten you anymore. If I've guessed correctly, you must have caused them great pain in your past life, or they wouldn't treat you like this. If you keep looking for revenge, when will this matter be put to rest? Just let them go. Haoyue nodded gently and stopped persisting. Ever since it had followed Long Haochen, this was the first time Long Haochen had gotten mad at him. It made it feel afraid, so it obviously would not persist with what it wanted. Long Haochen looked at the Knight of Judgment of the Dead and the Lich King. He said indifferently, you can go. If you had interfered when Haoyue was evolving, this would have never happened. 
Thank you for forgiving us, great human king, the lich king and knight of judgment of the dead bowed towards Long Houchen at the same time. Long Houchen sighed gently, you've heard what I just said earlier as well. If you can let go of your grievances, then please do. The two undead kings fell silent. A few seconds later, the knight of judgment of the dead said seriously, if you went through what we went through in the past, you'll understand why we can't let go of it. Thank you for forgiving us. Before we leave, I must warn you that although the blood pact has changed Austin Griffin very much, its innate character won't change. Once it awakens all of its powers, it might not be able to control itself. With that, the Knight of Judgment of the Dead bowed towards Long Houchen once more, before leaving as two streaks of light with the Lich King. Once it fully awakens its powers, Long Houchen looked at Haoyue in secret surprise. He was speechless. Had Haoyue still not yet reached his complete form, despite becoming so powerful? It was also at this moment that a green light flashed near Long Houchen's chest. His heart skipped a beat. Hmm. This is. Yi Xiaolei's contract? Has something happened to Yi Xiaolei? Surprised, Long Houchen immediately patted Hao Yue's head and said, Hao Yue, you've just evolved, so stabilize your cultivation first. I'll be right back. As he said that, he quickly patted his chest and green light immediately appeared from there, blanketing his body in the blink of an eye. With a flash, he vanished. He did not even explain anything to his companions. He only said three words to Kaiyue right before he left, Yi Xiaolei. The Knight of Judgment of the Dead held the Lich King's withered hand and slowly flew through the air. Why did you block in front of me earlier? The Knight of Judgment of the Dead suddenly asked seriously. The Lich King's sharp voice became gentle in that moment, we've lived for too long. I have no regret in dying with you, and you could have left before, did you know? When I blocked in front of you, I had stopped fearing Austin Griffin. When you didn't abandon me and faced against it with me, I knew that you still remember me, right? For all this time, you haven't taken care of me because of my superior strength, but because you've never forgotten me, just like how I've never forgotten you. You always refuse to admit it. This time, there's nowhere for you to hide. Augustine, do you still want to keep fooling me? The soul fire in the night of judgment of the dead's eyes leapt up gently, Ina, why must you bring this up? We're both undead already. All we have left are our inextinguishable soul fire. My body's become so ugly, and I... Enough, don't say anything more. Ina said fiercely, why don't we deserve love just because we're undead? Why are you telling me this? That's just your disgusting ego haunting you. You were once a prince, but you've become an undead now, so you can't face yourself. Or are you saying that our love is only restricted to the flesh, where you won't admit it if there isn't the joining of flesh? No, of course not. The night of judgment of the dead's pitch increased, Ina, it was me who failed to protect you back then. It was me who failed to guard your side during the most important times, allowing you to be killed right before me and become undead. I don't have the right to tell you that someone as ugly as me was once your lover. After I became undead, I was physically and mentally exhausted. All of my hopes were destroyed in that moment. It was just to protect you that I decided to survive, which was why I worked hard to become even stronger. How could I not love you? In my heart, no matter what you become, you are always my beloved Ina. Listening to the Night of Judgment of the Dead Augustine's unhesitated confession, the Lich King Ina's soulfire softened, I love you too, my Augustine. It's already been more than 6,000 years. After that day of disaster, we all became undead. But, after these 6,000 years, only one name still exists in my heart, and that's you, Augustine. Even though we're both undead, even though we have no future, I don't want to part with you ever again, even if there is only this world of black and red, my dear Augustine. As she said that, the Lich King gently leaned into the Night of Judgment of the Dead's arms. They had no sense of touch, but in that moment, their soul fire seemed to mingle together, and the soul fire leapt even more gently. Chapter 770, Eight-Headed Haoyue, 3 Green light gushed into the air as pillars, before slowly dissipating. The ground trembled and the forest groaned. Cracks just appeared in the air out of nowhere. The demon god emperor stood among the green pillars of light quietly as he looked at a green, illusory figure in the distance. Stop struggling. I've already destroyed the illusory shrine. The illusory paradise will collapse very soon. The fairy dragon has died to my hands as well. Even if you've taken away its fairy heart, it's useless. The fairy dragon's fairy heart is the best recovery medicine there is, it basically can bring you back from the dead. However, it's useless to you. I know that you are the god left behind by the goddess of nature. It is an honor for you to be able to fuse with me soul. The demon god emperor Fengxiu's voice was very gentle. Even though his surroundings were filled with spatial cracks, they did nothing to him. The green figure in the distance became clearer and clearer as the aura of life from the pillars of green life grew weaker and weaker. Quit dreaming. Even if I have to blow it up, I won't give it to you, Yi Xiaolei's cold voice was filled with hatred. Her home had been destroyed and the fairy dragon that had guarded the illusory shrine for all these years had been killed as well. Her hatred for the demon god emperor had reached the limit. The demon god emperor smiled, do you think you can blow up the god? Before me, anything you try is useless. I'm already half a god. Even if you blow up the god, I can reconstruct it and absorb it. I am the one in charge here. You're just using the spatial cracks that have appeared after the illusory paradise has shattered to make some time. I've waited for all these years, so I do have the patience to wait a little longer. Yi Xiaolei fell silent. 
She knew that the demon god emperor was telling the truth. He was just too powerful. When he had killed the fairy dragon, he actually became in control of everything. When Yi Xiaoyan who slumbered in the illusory shrine felt the fairy dragon fall in battle, everything was already too late. The illusionary paradise was her home. Her roots were here. She was like a fruit growing on a great tree. If the tree died, then she would only be picked away or she would have to die as well. Without a doubt, the demon god emperor had come to pick her. Can he save me? Yi Xiaoling was filled with sorrow. She did not know either. Even if he had really come, how was he supposed to save her from the demon god emperor? The demon god emperor was so powerful such that even if the goddess of nature was brought back there, she would not necessarily be able to defeat the demon god emperor. After all, the goddess of nature was not a god adept in battle. The demon god emperor stood with his hands behind his back as he silently felt the aura of life that the illusory paradise gave off. His cultivation of spiritual energy had already reached a state where he had returned to simplicity, even though the aura of life conflicted with his darkness, it did not affect him at all. It was possible to see from high up in the sky that a faint layer of violet-black color enveloped the entire area 50 kilometers away. No aura could pass through this barrier. As a result, even the nearby southern mountain pass was unable to discover anything going on here. But even if they did find out, so what? Who could stop the current demon god emperor? Looking at the distant horizon, the demon god emperor suddenly felt rather agitated, because his emotions actually became momentarily mixed. Was he really still alive? He thought about this piece of shocking news. Although the star demon god had guaranteed a second time that Long Haochen's aura was already gone, for some reason, his heart continued to weigh heavily after he had heard of this. Of course, he did not believe Long Haochen was still alive. He knew just too well whether he really did blow up Long Haochen's heart with that gesture of his finger with his cultivation. It was impossible for any accidents to happen. Did a necromancer resurrect him as undead? The demon god emperor could help but let a fierce gleam of light flash through his eyes when he thought of that. No matter how much he wished Long Haochen to die, he still felt a special feeling towards Long Haochen. Only he was able to harm him. If a necromancer really had brought him back as undead, the demon god emperor would definitely make him understand the meaning of wishing he was dead. He would make the pain last for a thousand years, tempering his soul until death. After all, he was that outstanding. When he thought of Long Haochen, the demon god emperor felt very helpless. He could even get Austin Griffin to form a blood pact with him. This was no longer something talent could achieve. Although the demon god emperor was not familiar with the process involved, he knew that Long Haochen must have succeeded under special circumstances. If it were not for Austin Griffin, would he be able to persuade him to return to the demons in the end or even become his successor as demon god emperor? Perhaps not. He was just too stubborn. If he had known earlier, he should have taken Long Haochen back to the demons with him the first time he had seen him and begin twisting his thoughts back then. Only then would there be a chance. Thinking about this, the demon god emperor suddenly experienced a relieving sorrow, because he suddenly thought about how when Long Haochen died, he could clearly sense the bloodline that belonged to him flowing through Long Haochen's body gradually grow thin and die out as well. Even until now, he could not sense it at all. As the emperor of the demons and the head of the devil dragons, the demon god emperor had a very strong connection to his bloodline. For example, Bao and Leng Xiao remained within his senses. As a matter of fact, the demon god emperor could sense as they grew stronger or weaker. The bloodline aura from Long Haochen had already vanished completely. He was dead after all. However, the news of his appearance was still worth investigating. Perhaps the humans had really allowed the existence of necromancers and let these necromancers use Long Haochen's body? No, that shouldn't be the case. The more he thought, the messier the demon god emperor's thoughts became. However, he was a powerhouse after all. He already had a foot planted on the level of god. He calmed down very soon and returned his focus back to the situation before him. He had waited for this day for a very long time now. Ever since his cultivation broke through a million spirit energy, he had been searching for a god. Only by borrowing the god could he completely remove the backlash of god that he suffered, and thus become a true god that was not bound to this realm. Once that happened, nothing could restrain him, so to him, this was an important opportunity. Even if the humans of this world cultivated to a million spiritual energy, they would only become god by themselves and upon doing so, their minds would gradually disperse across the world. They would be able to sense everything and govern everything, but they would no longer possess a body, nor could they influence the balance of the world. However, he was different. The demons came from other realms, which gave him the possibility of ignoring the principles of this world. However, he could not become a god by himself. Thinking about this, the demon god emperor was suddenly overcome by a burning desire. He had to succeed today. Once he succeeded, he would become an unprecedented god of this realm. By then, it would no longer be possible for the humans to keep resisting. After he had unified the world, it might be time for him to return to his original realm. Who knew what it had become now? The green light gradually dimmed, while the pure and cute Yi Xiaolei gradually appeared from the green light completely. She was a hundred meters away from the demon god emperor. The spatial cracks began to close up and vanish, as the tremendous aura of life silently permeated the vast forest. However, it was unable to break through the demon god emperor's seal. What comforting aura of life. Unfortunately, it doesn't suit me, the demon god emperor smiled and walked towards Yi Xiaolei. Yi Xiaolei stood there quietly as she stared at the demon god emperor coldly. 
Her soft, white hands became tightly clenched unknowingly, as she bit her bottom lip gently. She watched the tall, handsome and enchanting figure walk over step by step, while she remained where she was. The illusory shrine was destroyed and the illusory paradise was gone. From that moment onwards, she had completely lost her home. When she thought about the reluctance in the consciousness of the fairy dragon before it had died, two droplets of tears slowly rolled down her cheeks. It was gone. It was all gone. The demon god emperor slowly arrived ten meters before her and stopped. He extended his hand towards her, come, come with me. Don't worry, I won't harm you. You just need to want to become my god from the bottom of your heart and I can even leave your memory intact. Come with me. I will let you witness many wonders and marvels. It'll also give the Shenmue Dalu a true god. Yi Xiaolei stared at the demon god emperor with her moist eyes. She could see a hint of sincerity in the depths of his eyes. Upon reaching his cultivation, the demon god emperor had already let go of all darkness. To him, many things that ordinary people found to be important no longer mattered. The things he wanted had already reached a completely different level. I've waited for a very long time now. I don't want to keep waiting. I hope to obtain a god with self-consciousness. That way, I won't have to be lonely in the future millennia to come. What do you think? Actually, joy and sorrow is only temporary most of the time. Time will dilute it all. Once you have witnessed many different worlds with me, you will end up forgetting the past. Come, come with me. I think you won't regret it. The demon god emperor spoke very softly and he maintained a slight smile the entire time. His gaze was filled with gentleness, just like a father calling for his daughter. Yi Xiaolei's gaze gradually became lost. Finally, she raised her left foot and took a step forward slowly. Afterwards, she began to walk towards the demon god emperor just as slowly. The demon god emperor's smile grew deeper. Fusing with an obedient god was much easier than one that resisted, and the benefits that it would bring to the stability of his cultivation would obviously be different as well. Of course, everything he said to Yi Xiaolei came from the bottom of his heart. It was all sincere. It was exactly because of that that he was able to confuse her the most. He never treated Yi Xiaolei as a threat in the first place. Once she had merged into his powers, she posed even less of a threat. So what if her consciousness remained? Chapter 771, Meeting the Demon God Emperor Once More, I 10 meters, 9 meters, 8 meters, 7 meters Yi Xiaolei approached the Demon God Emperor slowly. As if he was afraid of scaring her, the Demon God Emperor just stood where he was with his right hand extended, waiting for her quietly. 5 meters. Only 5 meters separated them now. If Yi Xiaolei took two more steps further, the Demon God Emperor would be able to reach her. Currently, she appeared even more lost than before, as if she could not see what was before her. Perhaps she had even entered a different state of consciousness. She took another step forwards and their distance grew closer. Joy had already begun to appear in the depths of the Demon God Emperor's eyes. At his cultivation, he desired very little, but becoming a true god was his greatest objective. It would even allow him to break free from the pain due to the backlash from God. As a result, his true emotions appeared in his eyes. However, it was also at that moment that the demon god emperor's heart skipped a beat. Instinctively, he stepped forward and grabbed at Yi Xiaolei with his right hand. It was also in that instance that Yi Xiaolei's lost gaze suddenly cleared up. It was filled with deep resentment. A white, translucent figure appeared in front of Yi Xiaolei without any warning. He even possessed Yi Xiaolei's special aura of life. The demon god emperor obviously ended up grabbing the translucent figure. What he caught was a fist. An indescribable, resplendent light suddenly surged from the figure's chest. The demon god emperor only felt that he was facing against a boundless starry sky, where every single star shone as brightly as it could. The light was endless and the great power seemed to illuminate all of the darkness he possessed. As everything had happened just too suddenly and that the demon god emperor had dropped his guard as he was close to what he desired for so long, the demon god emperor could not fight back. He only released the fist and crossed his arms before him to protect himself. Powerful white light shined, forming a huge, white ball of light between the figure and the demon god emperor. Purple inscriptions flowed over the demon god emperor's crossed arms and the pure darkness did not yield at all. It actually blocked the attack from the light of eternity completely. As there was no way forward, the white light could only surge upwards. It shot straight up and basically rammed into the demon god emperor's seal immediately. With a great boom, it rapidly spread outwards under the seal. Even with the demon god emperor's great strength, large parts of the seal actually cracked. The crack spread rapidly and it seemed like it could collapse at any moment. Now, the demon god emperor could see the white figure clearly. He was a man covered in translucent, white armor. He wore a crown on his head and his face was obscured by a mask. A powerful aura actually pressured him to the point where chills ran down his spine. The most terrifying aspect was his opponent's domain. The demon god emperor had cultivated his powers of darkness to the extreme, not only was it pure and vast, it possessed an unmatched pressure. However, against the white light, his darkness failed to gain any advantage at all. It actually seemed to be slightly surprised. Clearly, this was a difference between the levels of their domains. The demon god emperor's eyes were filled with shock. Before him was clearly a human. However, since when did the humans have a powerhouse like this? Even the captain of the demon god slayers, Chen Zidian, was nowhere as powerful as this person. 
With the huge translucent sword placed horizontal between them, the sunlight suddenly seemed to dim. Daytime seemed to be replaced by night. Demon God Emperor, we meet again. Perhaps the next time we meet is when we decide the victor. A clear and familiar voice rang out. The Demon God Emperor shuddered in disbelief. He even forgot to attack. You? The Demon God Emperor stared at the human expert right before him in complete shock. Even some astoundment had appeared in his eyes. He even stumbled back instinctively. Wasn't the person who had suddenly appeared before Yi Xiaolei and pulled her back from darkness the person in possession of the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation, the first chairman of the Temple Union and the Divine Knight of Glory and Leadership, Long Haochen? Sensing the danger from Yi Xiaolei, Long Haochen immediately hurried over after dealing with Hao Yue's attempt at killing the Knight of Judgment of the Dead and the Lich King. Traveling through space required time, let alone the fact that Long Haochen was in another realm, which was why it delayed him slightly. Fortunately, the folding of space as he traveled was unable to threaten him with his cultivation and the protection of the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation. Yi Xiaolei had actually sensed her connection with Long Haochen a long time ago. At the same time, she also sensed Long Haochen's strength. Although she could only sense the strength of Long Haochen's soul, she understood that the strength of the soul had a close relationship to cultivation. As a result, when Yi Xiaolei had slowly approached the Demon God Emperor, she had not been persuaded, nor had she become lost. It was to fool the Demon God Emperor and give Long Haochen enough time to travel through space. Long Haochen still ended up making it in time. The moment he had appeared, Yi Xiaolei only felt that she had become feeble. He had managed to repel the Demon God Emperor. He had actually managed to repel the Demon God Emperor. Even though the Demon God Emperor was unprepared, just how many people were unable to do that in this world? It's me, Long Haochen said. At the same time, he raised his left hand and the divine snail shield of sun and moon appeared before him as it flashed with nine colored light. As Long Haochen grew, the person he feared the most without a doubt was the Demon God Emperor. Even with all the undead kings from Haoyue's realm combined, he did not find them as dangerous as the Demon God Emperor. As a result, after he had repelled the Demon God Emperor, he used the power of the Divine Stone of Sun and Moon without any hesitation to unleash the Super Divine Tool Might of the Divine Snail Shield of Sun and Moon. The Demon God Emperor experienced inner turmoil. He had never thought that the issue he was just pondering earlier would be answered right now, right here. Long Haochen was still alive. He was actually still alive. From his aura and the wondrous armor he wore, the Demon God Emperor could tell that he was not under the control of a necromancer. Moreover, the strength he exhibited even made the Demon God Emperor feel threatened. How can you still be alive? The Demon God Emperor asked in confusion. To him, Long Haochen's death seemed to be even more important than taking away the godhood from Yi Xiaolei. Chapter 772, Meeting the Demon God Emperor Once More, Too. Long Haochen said indifferently, Why must I be dead? You already killed me once, but I believe you won't get a second opportunity to do that. Farewell. I believe in the soon future, we will meet once again on the battlefield. When that happens, I will definitely be asking for guidance from your majesty. As he said that, nine colored light immediately erupted from the divine snail shield of sun and moon, striking the demon god emperor as a thick streak of light. Although the divine snail shield of sun and moon's greatest power could only be unleashed during dusk or dawn, it was able to match the divine throne of eternity and creation's strongest attack when it unleashed its attack as a super divine tool due to the accumulation of power over time. The demon god emperor roared, you can't leave. He extended his right hand and a strange inscription appeared on his fist. Afterwards, it just struck the nine colored light of the super divine tool in such a bold fashion. There was a great explosion. The demon god emperor's seal immediately shattered under this terrifying explosion, as the terrifying power basically doused the entire forest in light. However, a super divine tool was a super divine tool after all. The demon god emperor was powerful, but he still ended up losing the upper hand slightly in the explosion. He body was blown thousands of meters away, while Long Haochen and Yi Xiaolei completely vanished from where the center of the explosion was. The demon god emperor vaguely saw that when the nine colored light hurled towards him, a ball of green light flew out from Long Haochen's body and enveloped Yi Xiaolei. Afterwards, she vanished. Long Haochen flashed with purple light and immediately vanished before the collision as well. He had left by traveling through space. Failing to become god on the verge of success did not affect the demon god emperor the most. The greatest impact on him came from Long Haochen's appearance. When all the pulses of spiritual energy settled down completely, the demon god emperor suddenly discovered that he actually felt fear from the bottom of his heart. Long Haochen was still alive. Did that mean that Austin Griffin was still alive as well? Did Austin Griffin revive him? No, that was impossible. The power he just used had nothing to do with Austin Griffin. But he had only vanished for a few years, so how did his cultivation become so powerful? Was his armor the divine throne of eternity and creation that had never recognized anyone from the Night Temple? And that shield, it should have been a super divine tool as well. With two super divine tools, Long Haochen really did possess the right to challenge him. The demon god emperor inhaled deeply to calm himself down. He need to think. He needed to think carefully. Raising his head, he looked in the direction of the southern mountain pass. He could already sense that human powerhouses had discovered the disturbance here and were heading over. 
If he had obtained ECLA, perhaps he could just kill all the humans who came here as he would be in a good mood, but he was unwilling to waste any time now. With a wave of his right hand, a beam of purple light hovered before him quietly. With a flash, the demon god emperor entered the beam of purple light and began traversing through space. Compared to the panic that the demon god emperor felt, Yi Xiaolei currently experienced something completely different, because she discovered in her shock that she had actually come to a place similar to the illusory paradise, a world that did not pale in comparison in terms of vitality. The grass formed a green carpet on the ground as the trees stood as forests. Aura of life that she could directly see with her eyes flowed through the boundless greenery. Landing on the ground, Yi Xiaolei sensed that all the plants in the surroundings seemed to be greeting her, to her joy and surprise. Regardless of where this was, she found it to be so intimate. The aura of nature allowed her to become a part of it very soon. As the god that the goddess of nature had left in the world of humans, she was basically a part of the goddess. Although this was a different place, the aura of life was the same. Welcome to the world of Easton, cute little girl. A gruff voice rang out. Afterwards, a green figure emerged from a streak of green light, smiling at her. The green figure was actually around the same height as Yi Xiaolei. Yi Xiaolei could sense his strength and she could sense the dense aura of life from him as well. The world of Easton? Is this another realm? Yi Xiaolei asked in surprise. Was this a realm that completely belonged to nature? The king of Easton nodded, you can call it another realm. I like your aura very much. It's very similar to my master's aura. It's much weaker, but look, everything here likes you very much. I am the king of Easton, the ruler of this place. You are welcome to stay. The king of Easton's right. You are welcome to stay. With a flash, Long Haochen appeared beside Yi Xiaolei after having unequipped his armor. He looked at her gently. Yi Xiaolei looked at the king of Easton, before looking at Long Haochen, just where is this? Long Haochen said, this is the realm of eternity within the divine throne of eternity and creation. It can be called the world of Easton. There's only the aura of nature and life here. I think you'll like it, right? Yi Xiaolei raised her head to look at Long Haochen. She said softly, thank you for saving me. Long Haochen smiled, you don't need to thank me. I should be the one thanking you. If it weren't for you help, would have died twice already at the very least. Whether it was when Kaya was encircled when she awakened or when I was killed by the demon god emperor, it was all because of your help that we managed to survive. In particular with the latter time, if it were not for your guidance, Kaya might not have been able to obtain the Tower of Eternity to ask Alux to revive me. In the past, when Long Haochen met with Yi Xiaolei in the illusory paradise, his necromancer aura encountered a certain level of rejection from Yi Xiaolei. However, he was a scion of light after all, so Yi Xiaolei still ended up forming a pact with him. This pact was called Mutual Assistance. The pact allowed them to sense each other's aura. If one of them was in danger, the other could help them. In the past two times that Yi Xiaolei had assisted Long Haochen, it was to heal him and stabilize his wounds, because she was not adept at battle. Now that Long Haochen had finally returned the favor when Yi Xiaolei faced the greatest danger. He had also brought her to safety. There was a smear of sadness in Yi Xiaolei's eyes. She looked at the surroundings and suddenly said something that shocked Long Haochen, no matter how nice this place is, it's not my home. I don't belong in this realm. Long Haochen, I want to become your spiritual stove. Chapter 773, Fairy of God, I. No matter how nice this place is, it's not my home. I don't belong in this realm. Long Haochen, I want to become your spiritual stove. Yi Xiaolei's words really did make Long Haochen leap in fright. When he faced against the demon god emperor, Long Haochen used the power of the divine snail, shield of sun and moon without any hesitation. However, when he saved Yi Xiaolei, he could clearly sense there was something off about Yi Xiaolei's emotions. As his cultivation progressed, his senses grew stronger and stronger, especially for some minute aspects. A pact existed between him and Yi Xiaolei, so Long Haochen could clearly sense her despairing sorrow. After a moment of consideration, Long Haochen decided to send Yi Xiaolei to the world of Easton. He understood that Yi Xiaolei's sadness came from the destruction of her home, while Easton was clearly the most suitable place for her to live. Xiaolei, you. Yi Xiaolei raised her hand to wipe away her tears. She looked at Long Haochen stubbornly, I'm serious. I don't want to stay here. The king of Easton could not help but say, what's so bad about this place? It's perfectly compatible with your aura. Easton welcomes existences like you very much. Yi Xiaolei's aura of Ancher was even more pure than his own. Although it was not powerful, the vitality that was as pure as the tree of eternity gave the world of Easton a highly favorable impression of her. Yi Xiaolei shook her head, thank you, but I can't agree to it, because I don't want to live here. I belong to the Shenhua Dalu. From a certain perspective, I am part of the Shenhua Dalu. If I leave there, my life will gradually wither. In less than a month, I will become heir. I will disappear at dust. Long Haochen said in surprise, why is that? You. Yi Xiaolei smiled miserably, you don't know what kind of existence I am, do you? I can tell you now. Actually, I'm rather similar to your elemental fairy. I'm not a true existence. I'm a fairy of God. I'm a body of energy. A fairy of God? Long Haochen was confused by those words, while the king of Easton's expression changed drastically and stopped trying to persuade her. 
A so-called fairy of God from a certain perspective is basically a clone of a god. I am a clone that the goddess of nature had left behind on the Shunma Dalu. My existence must be maintained by absorbing the essence of the world, sun and moon. Whether it's the illusory shrine or the illusory paradise, they were all created by the goddess of nature for me before she became a god, or should I say, for herself. Any existence, whether it be a human or another creature, will reach the level of god upon breaking through a million spiritual energy. In order words, they will begin the trial of god. This is an unchangeable fact. Passing the trial would make them a true god, while failure will reduce them to air. They will reincarnate and restart from the body of a child. Once they become god, their bodies will disperse and their consciousness will expand without limit, until it fills the entire world. They will be able to sense everything that goes on in any corner of the world and they will become a part of the realm, making it even more stable and prosperous. For example, when my original body, the goddess of nature, became a god, all of the plants in the entire realm would be able to flourish easier for a very long time into the future, while powerhouses that are close with nature will experience an increase in cultivation rate. However, the person who becomes god won't be able to control anything. Gradually, they will merge with the world, with only a sliver of consciousness left to wander the world. As a result, many powerhouses are unwilling to become a god and would much rather enter reincarnation, so they don't have to live such an abstruse life. However, some matters cannot be defied most of the time. They cannot be decided personally. I can warn you right now that you shouldn't break through the bottleneck of the ninth rank of the ninth step so easily. Once you do break through and your spiritual energy has exceeded 900,000, your spiritual energy will continue to grow. One day, when you reach the bottleneck of a million spiritual energy, there will be a moment when you automatically break through by yourself. Long Houchen listened quietly. If he was just as weak as before, Yi Xiaoli's words would have been useless to him, but it was different now. His cultivation had already reached the fifth rank of the ninth step. He was not that far away from the ninth rank of the ninth step. Yi Xiaolei continued, in the past, the goddess of nature knew that her life was coming to an end and she was unable to deny her fate of becoming a god. As a result, she used her own, great powers to create the illusory shrine and illusory paradise, and used her most pure spiritual energy to create something. She planted a sliver of her own soul into this pure power of nature, leaving behind a seed in the illusory paradise. This seed nurtures her status as a god. You must be very curious as to why she did that, right? In reality, her objective was very simple. Once she became a god, she would still wander the world as a sliver of consciousness. Although she would not be able to do anything, that's still a sliver of her consciousness after all. It was omniscient. So, once the seed she left in the illusory paradise sprouted and grew, it would gradually release her aura as a god and her consciousness would sense it, giving her a possibility of returning. Who then, she would be able to return to being the goddess of nature in the human world, giving her a possibility of revival. Using her experiences of her past life, she would avoid the same mistake after reviving and avoid taking the path to becoming a god. I am that seed. As Yi Xiaolei explained all of that, she was very calm, but for some reason, Long Houchen's heart ached. As he looked at how her eyes seemed aged despite her appearance of a seven or eight year old girl, he could not help but feel heartache. Actually, the goddess of nature failed, perhaps because she gave me a sliver of her soul. In the end, although she passed her trial to becoming god, she failed to maintain a clear consciousness. As a result, she hasn't returned. As the seed, I sprouted and gradually gained my own consciousness. In the illusory paradise, I don't feel lonely. I have many, many companions. I don't resent the goddess of nature for leaving me there either. As her clone, I am a part of her after all. I passed my days peacefully like that. Only when you humans appeared in the illusory paradise and used the essence of the world that had gathered there over the years to create spiritual stoves did my life gradually become interesting. Only I know that I have the same appearance as you humans, but I'm just a seed. No matter how much time passes, I won't grow up. As time passed, I gradually developed my own ideas. I finally felt that the illusory paradise was trapping me like a prison. However, I can't leave, because I need the power. If I lose the power, I'll be like a flower that has lost its nutrients. I will wither before long. As a result, I began to look for a suitable human that could hold me out of everyone who entered the illusory paradise. All these years passed, but you're the only one I've found. However, it was also that time that I felt danger, because the demon god emperor could actually force his way into the realm against the laws of the illusory paradise. As a result, I formed a pact with you. When she reached there, the misery in Yisiele's eyes deepened, I really didn't know that I actually love my home so much. If I could make the choice again, I would rather stay there forever and never leave. My home's been destroyed. The illusory paradise is gone. All of my friends have died when the space shattered. The tree, the blade of grass, all of my companions have gone forever. I have never hated someone like this before, but I really do hate him right now. The light in Long Houchen's eyes flickered as he said solemnly, there will be a day when the grievances between the humans and the demons will be settled. I can't promise you that you can get your revenge, but I can tell you that in the battle between the humans and demons, I will do my best. Unless I die, my battle with the demon god emperor won't end. Yi Xiaolei nodded gently, I understand and I believe you. In just a few short years, you've become so powerful. Even the goddess of nature did not grow as quickly as you. Moreover, the undead aura on you has completely vanished. It seems like you've completely broken free from the control of the Tower of Eternity. I didn't say that I want to become your spiritual stove on impulse. I've thought over it very much. I have already become a flower that has lost the earth. I need a new home. Here won't work. 
I will still wither away here. Only by latching onto the power of a soul can I survive, but there are far, far too few powers of souls I can choose from. Only those who had reached the limit in terms of purity are possible. As a result, if I can't become your spiritual stove, I will face death. I don't have the choice. Long Hao Chen hesitated, but, if you become my spiritual stove, won't you vanish forever? Yi Xiaolei dried her tears before bursting out in laughter, how could I vanish so easily? I'm not stupid. Why would I commit suicide? Haven't you heard of an intelligent spiritual stove? Even your light elemental fairy can maintain a certain level of consciousness, so why can't I as a fairy of God? Even if I do become your spiritual stove, I will retain all of my memories and you will end up with even more power of nature. Don't worry, as a clone of the goddess of nature, I can choose what to strengthen once I fuse with you. I won't strengthen your internal spiritual energy any further, as that will only push you closer to becoming a god, which will make you commit the same mistakes as the goddess of nature. I can choose to strengthen your external spiritual energy. Chapter 774, Fairy of God, 2 Just when Long Haochen wanted to say something, the king of Easton interjected, Girl, I think it's better for you to increase Master's internal spiritual energy, because you don't have to worry about anything like that happening to Master. Huh. Yi Xiaolei looked at the king of Easton in doubt. The king of Eastong said proudly, Master has inherited the divine throne of eternity and creation, so he's temporarily become our lord of eternity. The divine throne of eternity and creation was a super divine tool used by the creator god to create the realms. All the existences who have once become lords of eternity had received an imprint from the creator god. Regardless of the principles of the planes, they don't have to follow any of them and when they become a god, they will receive a special godhead from the creator god's imprint. As an existence that supervises the world for the creator god, their lives will be extremely long, but not infinite. Yi Xiaolei looked at the king of Easton rather dumbstruck, are you saying that he can be like the demon god emperor and not be bound by the principles of the realm? The king of Easton said, of course. Master's an existence chosen by the creator god. How could he be as simple as you imagine him to be? Being able to join master will be your smartest decision. Yi Xiaolei nodded and she looked at Long Haochen with rather mixed feelings, since that's the case, let's start right now. She suddenly found that she was no longer that important to Long Haochen as an intelligent spiritual stove. Hold on, Xiaolei. Long Haochen raised his hand to stop Yi Xiaolei. Don't you want me? Yi Xiaolei was not in a good mood right now, so she immediately misinterpreted Long Haochen. Long Haochen shook his head with a smile, of course not. It's just that I want to tell you something before you become my intelligent spiritual stove. Recently, I found a suitable body for Yiting, so she's no longer my light elemental spiritual stove anymore, but a fairy queen of light. I believe that in the near future, I will find a suitable body for you as well. When that happens, please choose to be a person. Be a real human. Maybe you'll feel happier like that. Yi Xiaolei was dumbstruck. She stared at Long Haochen blankly and didn't make a single sound for quite some time. Long Haochen rubbed her head gently. He squatted down and looked at her face to face, we're friends. We're not just bound by a pact. I hope you can find happiness in the future. Although I don't know how to make you happy, I will treat you like a human as much as I can. Alright, Yi Xiaolei let out a soft interjection of agreement. She suddenly spread her arms, hugged Long Haochen around the neck and burst out in tears. Gently stroking her long hair, Long Haochen used his gentle light element to comfort her sorrow. It was also at this moment that he discovered in his surprise that his hand fell through her body. Yi Xiaolei's body suddenly turned into green light. Specks of green light floated about and moved up his hand, enveloping him completely very soon. The large quantity of light specks gradually formed a swirl, gently rotating around Long Haochen. That was a gentle aura filled with life. In the world of Easton, all the vegetation within several hundred kilometers began to shine with green light. The king of Easton said in complete fascination, what pure power of nature. It's fantastic. Gentle green light began to fuse into Long Haochen's body through his chest. It just happened to fuse into where his heart of eternity was. Yi Xiaolei definitely could sense Hao Yue's aura on him. Long Haochen and Hao Yue's connection was the closest about the head, and then the heart. The method that Yi Xiaolei chose to use was completely different to what Hao Yue did. The power from Hao Yue which dwelled in his spiritual pellet was an independent existence, while Yi Xiaolei's power of nature directly fused with Long Haochen's heart of eternity. It would not be independent. When she began to fuse with him, Long Haochen sensed it. He knew that Yi Xiaolei would make him even stronger by fusing with him like this. However, this meant that she had completely ignored his suggestion earlier. By fusing with her like this, Yi Xiaolei would never be able to separate from his body unless he died. Obviously, she would not be able to become a human like what happened with Yi Ting. Yi Xiaolei's voice rang out in Long Haochen's head, Long Haochen, I don't want to call you my master. I want to call you my elder brother. I don't want to become a human. There is also a lot of deception and trickery among you humans, so becoming a human might bring me even more issues. That is not what I want. From the moment before, I already knew my happiness is. My happiness is being by your side, so you can protect and take care of me. For that, that is enough. The demon god emperor had said earlier that if I become his, he would take me to see many fascinating worlds. I believe you can do the same. I won't regret sticking with you. From today onwards, I am your intelligent spiritual stove, as well as your younger sister. You have to take good care of me. Hee <laughs> hee. 
The green light began to expand from Long Houchen's body, slowly flowing through his entire body. Long Houchen's fifth rank of the ninth step spiritual energy began to grow once more. It was not fast, but it was very steady. At the same time, Long Houchen felt scorching heat appear in his body. His body was currently being nurtured by the dense aura of life. Yi Xiaolei did not listen to the King of Easton's suggestion. Instead, she used all the power she had after fusing with Long Houchen to increase both his internal and external spiritual energy. From then onwards, she was a part of Long Houchen, so of course she hoped that Long Houchen would have an even stronger body. With her vitality, not only did Long Houchen's external spiritual energy increase drastically, it had extended his lifespan as well. Long Houchen was not aware of this. Yi Xiaolei was not powerful, but she possessed the soul of a god and a fraction of a god's power. Combined with her pure and unadulterated vitality, she had extended Long Houchen's life by a thousand years at the very least. The aura of life flowed through and expanded in Long Houchen's body. He had let himself go completely, sensing the airiness from the fusion of power. In that moment, he suddenly understood something. It was an understanding related to the divine throne of eternity and creation. The three powerhouses of the domain of eternity had told him that the name of the divine thorn, the divine throne of eternity and creation, had ancient origins. It was personally named by the Creator God. What was eternity? What was creation? What was being created? The engravings on the divine throne of eternity and creation seemed to give the answer. The earth, nature, life, the stars, sun and moon were being created. And why was all this created? For life to continue. Creating life was what eternity was mainly about. All the other creations were just for creating life. Perhaps people had different understandings about eternity and creation, but in that moment, Long Houchen had developed his own understanding. The heart of eternity began to slow down as gentle vitality ran and flowed through his body. If someone could see Long Houchen's current situation right now, they would definitely be utterly shocked, because a heart had grown in Long Houchen's chest. The heart of eternity was not a real heart. It was a heart of spiritual energy created by a combination of Alexa's past constitution as a scion of light as his cultivation of light, which was further modified using his understanding of the human body and the necromancy he had cultivated. This heart of eternity had all the abilities of a normal human heart. Even every single blood vessel was the same. It also had enough energy to last for at least a thousand years. As long as Long Houchen's cultivation remained, the heart of eternity would never stop beating, and it would make Long Houchen stronger and stronger, granting him more and more power. After all, Alux was not the creator god. He could not create a heart that was exactly the same as Long Houchen's original one from nothing. In that moment, the sight of wonder was this creation. Under the effects of this dense vitality, the blood in Long Houchen's chest had used the heart of eternity as a mold and actually formed a heart. Long Houchen was completely unaware about this. He had no idea that he had undergone a process of metamorphosis. Actually, Elux never told him when he revived him that from a certain aspect, he was technically an undead. Could a human without a heart still be called a human? However, Long Houchen was just unaware of all of this and Elux had not explained it either. Coupled with his pure light element, no one suspected that either. It had to be mentioned that the heart of eternity created by Elux was almost like a work of God. It was definitely the greatest masterpiece throughout history among necromancers. However, no matter how great it was, it still made him an undead. As a matter of fact, when Alux purified himself, he still felt rather proud of himself. The only scion of light that had managed to mature completely possessed the crystallization of his life's work. However, it was different now. With Yi Xiaolei's fusion, Long Houchen's aura of life increased drastically and as a result, the issue of missing a true heart was revealed. The power of life that Yi Xiaolei had fused into his body naturally treated this as a wound and immediately began to heal it. If the heart of eternity was not there, the healing would not have been successful, because Long Houchen would be dead during the healing process. Without a heart that could beat, it was useless no matter how perfect the healing was. Chapter 775, Fairy of God, 3 However, the situation now was very special. As the heart of eternity thumped, a completely new heart gradually grew as Long Houchen comprehended the meaning of life and creation. Faint light flickered and a gentle smile appeared on Long Houchen's face. He only felt that his body was very warm, and that the heart of eternity seemed to thump with even more power. He had no idea why. The heart of eternity was gradually fusing with the new heart and every single vessel absorbed the power of the heart of eternity. The creation of life was the most wondrous process. Although Yi Xiaolei could sense the danger in this, she was unable to communicate with Long Houchen as she fused with her. She could only do everything she could to protect this creation. The King of Easton stood by their side quietly. He had become Long Houchen's protector now. At the same time, he could sense the wondrous presence from Long Houchen's body. He found the dense vitality to be very close. Gradually, the green light weakened and all gathered in Long Houchen's chest. Long Houchen felt like new life had just been breathed into him. He found his entire body to be even more transparent and filled with even more vitality. The green light gently pulsed about his chest. That was his heartbeat. The new heart had completely formed in his chest and it had fused with the heart of eternity perfectly. This was definitely the strongest heart in human history. Yi Xiaolei fell into a slumber in Long Houchen's chest tiredly. As an intelligent spiritual stove, basically all of the power from the fusion went into the heart. 
Gradually rousing from his state of comprehension, Long Hao Chen instinctively placed his right hand on his chest. His chest felt warm. It was an indescribably nice feeling. The heart of eternity's beating seemed to be weaker than before, but it did not affect his body at all. At the same time, he could sense Yi Xiaolei's consciousness remaining in his chest. However, he did not know why she had fallen into a slumber. Perhaps that was the consequences of fusing with him as an intelligent spiritual stove. However, to Long Hao Chen's surprise, he could clearly sense that his fusion with Yi Xiaolei was complete. However, there were no signs that his internal or external spiritual energy had increased like the times before. Everything remained the same. However, he came to an understanding very soon. Recently, his cultivation had essentially skyrocketed. It was not good for it to increase too much all of a sudden. Fortunately the comprehension earlier allowed his understanding to increase as well. It would not fall too far behind his cultivation. After giving notice to the King of Easton, Long Haochen chose to return. As the Lord of Eternity, he could enter the Domain of Eternity whenever he wished. The world of black and red appeared before him once more. Perhaps due to Kyer's power of purifying being too great, the air there was clearly fresher than however. However, who knew how long that would last? Including Hao Yue, everyone was waiting on the hill where it had evolved. Long Haochen's return immediately made them all open their eyes. With a flash, Long Haochen landed before his companions. He looked at Hao Yue first. Hao Yue's aura had completely stabilized now. The terrifying aura of destruction from earlier was contained, or at least it was impossible to tell from the surface, because the bright glimmer of hope would not be able to remain by his side if it was not. Its eight heads extended over slowly and stacked upon each other in front of Long Houch. It seemed rather funny. However, none of the people there could laugh after witnessing Hao Yue's terrifying strength from before. They could still clearly remember how the powerful Knight of Judgment of the Dead and Lich King were unable to fight back at all. They were completely overwhelmed in a single moment. If Long Haochen had not interfered, the two undead kings probably would have died to Hao Yue's attacks already. Long Haochen raised his hands to touch the two new heads. He said to the dark golden head, your ability should be of the metal element, right? I'll call you little gold in the future then. As for you. He looked at the huge, purplish blue head and said, I'll call you little thunder. RRG, RRG. Receiving names from Long Haochen, Little Gold and Little Thunder were very happy. They reached over and nudged Long Haochen. They were extremely close to him. Sensing Hao Yue's deep attachment to him, Long Haochen's worry from earlier vanished. Kyer said, Haochen, what happened to Yi Xiaolei? Long Haochen frowned, I might have to face against the demon god emperor sooner than I expected. Immediately, he told them what he saw when he ventured to the illusory paradise. Before Long Haochen had teleported away, he was unaware that the threat to Yi Xiaolei's life came from the demon god emperor. Currently, humanity was nowhere close to being sufficiently prepared and the demon god emperor had already seen him with his own eyes. With how determined the demon god emperor was to kill him, he would definitely take action. Sima Xian said viciously, we'll do whatever we need to do. If he wants to come, then let him come. If the demons begin the holy war, who knows who'll be the victor. The current bright glimmer of light was no longer the 64th commander squad on the battlefield five years ago. They now possessed the true strength to face off against the major forces of the demons. Everyone was ready for that. Long Haochen nodded slightly, that's all we can do. Let's go back and prepare as quickly as possible. After saying that, the first one to respond was actually Hao Yue. A layer of purple mist rose up from his body and before Long Haochen could respond, it shrunk at an astonishing speed. In the blink of an eye, it had actually vanished. Hao Yue? Long Haochen called out its name in surprise. At this moment, a palm-sized figure suddenly leapt before him, tottering about as it flapped its wings. Long Haochen had no idea how to respond. The hand-sized thing was actually Hao Yue, a shrunken version of Hao Yue. Extending his right hand, Hao Yue landed on its center. Its eight heads constantly moved about and it expressed excitement to Hao Yue. Clearly, it was very proud of its ability to shrink. It was like a child who had been given his favorite toys. Touching him gently, Long Hao Chen smiled, this works as well. At least it'll be much easier for you to stay by my side. After evolving this time, you shouldn't need to come back to here very often anymore. The silver light from the domain of instant flash appeared below the entire squad and with a flash of purplish silver light, they tore through space. Only after two whole hours since they had left did a few figures slowly appear in the distance, gazing in this direction. The soul fire in their eyes leaped about as they experienced a multitude of emotions. The return of the bright glimmer of hope immediately brought great joy to Long Xingyu. Of course, he was never that worried in the first place. Having gained the recognition of the divine throne of eternity and creation, it was impossible for Long Haochen's life to be threatened so easily. Just when they were about to decide the date of the wedding for Long Haochen and Kyer, as well as the other couples in the bright glimmer of hope, Long Haochen told Long Xingyu the demon god emperor's likely actions, so they had to push back this joyous matter. Long Haochen immediately wrote a letter for the Night Temple to hand to the headquarters of the Union. At the same time, he quickly gathered the upper echelon of the Night Temple to discuss countermeasures. Although it was impossible for the demons to reignite the holy war immediately, they needed to take preventative measures. Long Haochen had even guessed the objective that the demon god emperor would restart the war for. Demon Race, Modu, Demon Emperor Palace. The main hall. 
The demon god emperor sat high up on the throne and leaned on its huge back. At the top of the throne back was a huge dragon's head. Two red gemstones shone faintly from where its eyes were. Abao who wore the same black, luxurious robes stood beside the demon god emperor silently. His gaze was cold, stagnant and hollow, as if his body was not capable of thought. It was so quiet that even the drop of a pin could be heart. It was so silent that it seemed like there wasn't even a grain of dust there. However, five demons actually stood below. The demon at the very front had a head full of long, purple hair. His face was handsome and his pupils were purple. He carried a special presence, which could invoke a sense of beauty among people. He was the moon demon god, Agars. Beside Agars was the star demon god, Visego. Visego who was normally always extremely calm and wise seemed to be think about something. He clearly seemed uneasy today, as if he could sense something bad. Three more demon gods stood behind them. They were the demon god of death Samijina and the hell demon god Marba of the five great demon gods, as well as the bear demon god Vailfor who ranked sixth out of the seventy-two demon god pillars. The five demon gods had been summoned there by the demon god emperor. They had no idea what had happened. However, as soon as they had set foot in the demon god palace, they felt a pressure they had never experienced before. The terrifying pressure was enough for powerhouses like them to struggle to breath, like something heavy pressed against their chests. The demon god emperor on the throne seemed very calm, but it had already been an hour since they had entered the main hall. The demon god emperor had remained like that the entire time. However, the pressure in the air only grew heavier. The five demon gods had followed the demon god emperor for more than 300 years. They knew that the calmer and quieter the demon god emperor seemed, the more his emotions affected him. The five demon gods were even afraid to look at each other to see what others were thinking. They stood there straight with their heads lowered slightly, waiting quietly. The demon god emperor seemed just as easygoing as usual, but if he really did get angry, not a single demon would be able to bear his terrifying wrath. The demon god of death Samijina could even remember clearly that around 360 years ago, the demon god emperor's anger that time had even changed the fiend clan's entire situation. The original demon god of death was directly killed by the demon god emperor, which was why he had the chance to inherit this position. Chapter 776, Prophecy of Life, I. The demon god emperor finally broke the silence. He lifted his right hand slowly and it landed on the arm of his throne. It was such a simple action, but it attracted everyone's attention immediately. The five demon gods instinctively looked at the demon god emperor, but what they saw were a pair of extremely deep eyes, like they were staring into the abyss. The five of them could not help but shiver as their internal fear and dread intensified. Abao felt a completely different feeling as he stood beside the demon god emperor. His cultivation had basically skyrocketed in the recent years. He would basically make strides in his cultivation every year. Even he felt that he was getting closer and closer to his father's cultivation. But now, during the hour that the demon god emperor remained silent in, Abao knew he was wrong, because he suddenly felt very clearly that the disparity between him and his father was as wide as ever, like comparing a firefly to the moon. The demon god emperor slowly stood up from his throne. He seemed no different than an ordinary man. He had even used his arms to push off the armrest slowly. However, as he stood up, the five demon gods below dropped to their knees almost at the same time. They said politely, Your Majesty. The demon god emperor was definitely not in the mood to treat them like brothers. Instead, he was a merciless, unmatched emperor of the demons in that moment. Visego, stand up, the demon god emperor said calmly. With his arms behind his back, he looked at the star demon god as his eyes gradually lit up. Visego trembled instinctively, before slowly rising. His head remained lowered as he said politely, Your Majesty. The demon god emperor smiled. His smile seemed very peaceful, even slightly warm. He slowly made his way down from where the throne was. Basically with every step he took, Visego would tremble gently. The pressure weighed on his heart heavily. Only when he arrived before Visego did the demon god emperor stop. However, the demon prophet's body actually trembled unconsciously. Have you already sensed something? The demon god emperor asked with a gentle smile. Visego said nothing. He dared not to, because from the moment he had set foot in the main hall, he felt a hint of the aura of death. This aura came from himself. How could he not be afraid? The demon god emperor said indifferently, I just don't know whether your prophecy is correct or not. Why don't you guess whether you'll be leaving here alive today or dying on the spot? Your Majesty. Agars who still knelt beside Visego paled in fright. He instinctively raised his head and called out. He was the closest to Visego, but he had never thought that today, the demon god emperor's anger would be directed towards Visego. He could not think of what the star demon god had done at all, to actually make the demon god emperor angry for the first time in hundreds of years. Shut up, the demon god emperor said coldly. He raised his right foot and placed it on Agar's shoulder with lightning speed. Immediately, Agar shot off like a cannonball, slamming into the walls of the main hall with a great rumble. Large pieces of shattered rock fell down with the moon demon god. The demon god emperor's move made the demon god of death, the hell demon god and bear demon god prostrate themselves on the ground in fright. They did not even have the courage to raise their heads. 
They all knew that the demon god emperor trusted and was on the best terms with the moon demon god and star demon god, and had always treated these two demon gods as brothers. However, something had happened today where the demon god emperor had actually become furious because of the star demon god and had immediately turned against the moon demon god. It had to be mentioned that the moon demon clan and the star demon clan possessed decisive weight among the demons. They were only second to the demon god emperor's devil dragon clan. However, even when he had been sent flying by a kick, the moon demon god actually showed no intention of fighting back in that moment. After falling to the ground, he knelt there once again and dared not to utter another word. Raise your head. Look at me, the demon god emperor said plainly. Vasego raised his head slowly. There was only anguish in his eyes. He could clearly sense the killing intent from the demon god emperor. He was the great prophet of the demons, but his abilities to foresee matters was completely useless against the demon god emperor. This was because among the demons, no one knew better besides him that the demon god emperor had already become an existence that surpassed everything in this realm. He had reached a completely different realm of cultivation. In the past, when the demon god emperor had completed his breakthrough, the star demon god was right by his side, guarding him. He had personally witnessed the demon god emperor's impossible breakthrough and knew that the seventh demon god emperor was the greatest powerhouse of all of the demon's history. If any demon clan wanted to rebel against him, it would only end up as a joke. Looking at Visego, the demon god emperor said slowly, Visego, I trusted you so much. I have always treated you as my right-hand man. For our race, you have always done everything you could, but, did you know that as the prophet of our race, your one mistake has ruined the future of our clan? His voice was not loud, but orange light would flash across the star demon god with every word he uttered. When he reached his question at the end, red blood had actually already oozed out from Visego's mouth and nose. Although the demon god emperor did not directly touch him, the methods he used were far more terrifying than what he did to the moon demon god. He directly harmed his soul. Visego smiled bitterly, if I've guessed correctly, it should be the piece of news from over a month ago. Your majesty, have you determined the veracity of it? The demon god emperor nodded. His eyes finally ceased to be calm. Coldness swept out wildly, that's right. He's still alive. Tell me, why? No, that's impossible, Visego cried out. In that moment, he seemed to forget about the terror of the demon god emperor. Impossible? Can my eyes deceive me? Not only did he appear, he even stopped me from taking away the god of nature. He even conversed with me. What I hear might be false, but my eyes do not lie. What else do you have to say? Visego sucked in a deep breath and the terror in his eyes suddenly vanished. It was replaced by a special color, Your Majesty, I'm not wrong. My prophecies can't be wrong. He really did die that day. I've sensed for his aura of life many times in the past and for this, I've conducted many prophecies as well. The results are all the same. It's impossible for a prophecy directed at a single person to be wrong. The demon god emperor squinted his eyes, are you saying that I saw wrong and I heard wrong? After a moment of silence, Visego seemed to decide on something. His eyes lit up like two resplendent stars and he said, please calm down, your majesty. I understand my fate. Since that's the case, allow me to do one last thing for the demons. I am willing to sacrifice my life for one last prophecy. Whether he's dead or alive, his body will bear the aura of when your majesty killed him. With my life as the price, I should be able to see the reason why he's still alive. You can't. You can't. With a flash, the moon demon god arrived before the demon god emperor. He knelt down and begged, Your Majesty, ever since Visego became the star demon god, he had done much for the race. Even if it's not meritorious, it was still hard work. I am willing to launch a surprise attack against the Temple Alliance and bring Long Houchen before you, for you to handle. After hearing Long Houchen's name, Abao who stood before the throne suddenly stiffened. His hollow eyes suddenly shone with purple light and sharp killing intent immediately erupted. You? The demon god emperor snorted coldly, right now, it's even difficult to say whether you're his opponent. Alright, Visego. I'll give you this opportunity. You can start right now. As he said that, he lifted his left foot and sent Agars flying once more. At the same time, a ball of purple light formed a bubble around Agars, sealing him in. Not even his voice could escape the bubble. Looking at the demon god emperor who had grown calm once more, a smear of despair flashed through Visego's eyes. He knew that nothing else was possible anymore. Aside from the moon demon god, the three other demon gods continued to prostrate there without uttering a single word. Visego let out a miserable smile and slowly knelt before the demon god emperor, Your Majesty, I hope you can look after my clansmen in exchange for my sacrifice. Feng Xiu looked at him coldly, you can start. Visego did not receive the answer he wanted. His eyes were rather blank as he stood up again. He made his way out of the hall. When he passed over the three demon gods on the ground, he paused slightly, before taking another dozen or so steps forwards and stopping. The orange light gradually grew stronger as he walked. When he stopped, it had become extremely bright. The demon god emperor waved his arm and a powerful pulse of spiritual energy swept the demon god of death, the hell demon god and the bear demon god aside. The three demon gods fell to one side as they remained silent. The moon demon god Agars began to panic, but he was afraid of directly breaking out of the demon god emperor's seal. Otherwise, the demon god emperor's wrath would definitely include him as well. The demon god emperor could lay his hands on the star demon god, so it was possible that he too might. 
Vasego slowly lifted his arms up beside him with his palms pointed up. They each held an orange crystal ball. Soft chanting appeared and the intense orange light on his body began to surge upwards. The demon god emperor only looked at him coldly. His gaze was frigid. There was no pity at all. Vasego's chanting gradually went from soft to loud, while the intense orange light turned into flames. This was a strange type of fire. Vasego's clothes actually gradually burned and vaporized under the flames, while his body began to grow transparent and bright. Chapter 777, Prophecy of Life, 2 The moon demon god Agars had already closed his eyes. This was a prophecy where Vasego would be burning his own vitality as the price. This was also the star demon god's most powerful prophecy. It was a level higher than the great prophecy technique he had used before. Once the prophecy of life was used, it could not be stopped. It would definitely exhaust all of the user's vitality. However, the prophecy would be the best and the most accurate. Vasego slowly turned around. His eyes had already become blood red. His loud chanting also stopped in the moment he turned around. As he faced the demon god emperor, blood suddenly spurted from his mouth. Immediately, the orange flames swelled and turned into an orange pillar of light that surged five meters into the air. A strange aura appeared in the entire main hall. The demon powerhouses present felt their consciousness slightly blank out. Even the demon god emperor was not an exception. As he burned his life, the star demon god soul force reached an extremely terrifying level. Everyone present had only witnessed the prophecy of life once. Only star demon gods could use it and throughout the history of the demons, this was only the second time it was used. After all, it required the star demon god's life to conduct the prophecy. The orange light gradually turned into a screen of light that hovered in the air. The illusory screen of light first swirled about, before gradually clearing up. The screen depicted when the demon god emperor killed Long Haochen, how Long Haochen's heart was penetrated and that he slowly fell onto the ground. Afterwards, Kyer and the rest of the bright glimmer of hope left the star demon pagoda in a hurry with his corpse. The screen followed them until they reached the wilderness. Yi Xiaolei appeared and said something to Kyer. Afterwards, they saw Kyer take off the eternal melody from Long Haochen's neck and wore it herself. Seeing Yi Xiaolei, the demon god emperor raised an eyebrow slightly. However, when he saw how she did not heal Long Haochen, doubt appeared in his eyes. Even if she was the remnant of the goddess of nature, she could not revive the dead. At this moment, the scene changed once more. The teleportation began. Kyer immediately turned into streaks of light with everyone else and vanished from there. The orange screen of light returned to a swirl, while the star demon god trembled violently, as if he was in intense agony. The orange vortex remained like that for a minute, before showing a new scene. However, it was much blurrier this time. A seven-layered tower appeared. When they saw the tower, all of the demon powerhouses present felt a strange pressure from their souls. Even the demon god emperor was not an exception. It zoomed in, directly into the tower. Afterwards, Kyer carrying Long Haochen's corpse appeared as she lead the bright glimmer of hope up the tower. Even though it was very blurry, they were still able to make out the most important people of the bright glimmer of hope. In particular, they could tell that it was Kyer from her unique sickle of the god of death. When they reached there, the demon god emperor's face could not help but sink. Long Haochen was dead, but Kyer had carried his corpse to such a special place. It was clearly to revive him. Otherwise, why would she do that? However, Vasego had always been telling him that Long Haochen had not been revived. He was dead for sure. The scene constantly changed. Gradually, there was battle, but it became blurrier and blurrier. When Kyer began to climb the path to the sky, they could only vaguely make out a golden color. The golden gate of light appeared and Kyer leapt into it. In the next moment, the entire scene became messy. It had become completely illusory. Vasego let out a roar and another mouthful of blood spurted out. This time, he could not help but shake violently as his vitality leaked away rapidly. Under the support of his blood, the screen gradually stabilized. It had become clear once more. A huge coffin was presented before all the demon gods. The holy necromancer, slumbering calamity Alux appeared, and the aura from before which had suppressed the souls of all the demon gods reached an apex. A light element necromancer? The demon god emperor almost cried out. The scene moved very quickly. Alux condensed a golden heart in his hand. Although it had only appeared for a split second, the demon god emperor still saw it. In the next moment, he saw golden light surge and jump rapidly around Long Haochen's chest. The scene changed again. It was when Alux held the sickle of the god of death to purify himself. Vasego's prophecy lasted until then and could not continue any further. He had forcefully strengthened the prophecy of life, so the length of it had decreased drastically. The orange screen of light gradually dimmed and the images faded as well. Vasego tottered about as he was enveloped in light. He's not human. He's an undead. He has the body of an undead. He's still dead. He's dead. Austin. Griffin can't be still alive. Long Houchins, only an undead, only an undead. Vasego's voice sounded like both weeping and appealing. The demon gods could not help but look over when they heard it. Currently, Vasego was like a ghost. He was charred black all over. 
He used his own light to tell the demon god emperor that his prophecy was not wrong. Long Hao Chun did indeed die, and he had not been revived. He was living as an undead. All he possessed was a heart that a powerful necromancer had modeled. Gazes of query basically appeared in the eyes of all the demon gods present. They looked at the demon god emperor. In particular, Agars had clenched his fists out of anger. At this moment, the demon god emperor raised his hand and a ball of green light flew over, landing on Vasego's body. The gentle green light enveloped Vasego and powerful vitality poured into his body. A pleasant, crisp trickling sound rang out like a mountain stream. Vasego's exhausted vitality actually began to replenish at an astonishing rate and his tottering body actually stabilized as well. What was this power? The demon gods all stared at Vasego in shock. No matter how powerful the demon god emperor was, he possessed the powers of darkness. But before them, this was clearly life magic and it was at such a high level that it could rival the demon god emperor's dark magic. The demon god emperor frowned. He knew he had gone slightly overboard today. Even if he possessed supreme authority among the demons, Vasego was still the demon god that ranked third, as well as the demon prophet. He was forced to take out that treasure to protect Vasego's life, or the demon god's present would probably grow apart from him. The demon god emperor took off his luxurious black cape and slowly arrived before Vasego. He looked at the green light gradually recover his vitality as he said, I've messed up because I care. I've accused you wrongly about this matter. Every single one of us here understands what Austin Griffin means to our race, and that is the reason why I was furious. All I can do is bring back your lost life. Third brother, I hope you can understand me. As he said that, he personally draped the cape over Vasego. The vitality in the green light was just too powerful. In just a short while, not only did Vasego recover all the vitality he had used up in the prophecy of life, he had even recovered from the damage that was caused by the prophecy. In that moment, he experienced a multitude of feelings. He looked at the demon god emperor before him speechlessly. The demon god emperor waved his hand and released the moon demon god seal, before turning around and returning to his throne. The star demon god's recovery quickly dissipated the resentment that the other demon gods experienced. Agars quickly arrived beside Vasego as he looked at him with a gaze of query. Vasego looked back at him deeply. There was gratitude in his eyes. Out of all these demon gods, he had assisted basically every single one of them in the past. As the demon prophet, basically all the demon gods had come to him for his prophecies before. However, in this crucial moment, only Agars was willing to stand up for him, even despite the demon god emperor's fury. Just as the saying went, adversity reveals true friendship. Although Vasego said nothing, his grateful gaze told the moon demon god many things. Agars glanced at him and Vasego nodded gently. Wrapping himself in the demon god emperor's cape, he took a few steps forward and knelt down, Your majesty, I, Vasego, admit my wrongs. Long Houchen is indeed still alive. It was my prophecies that were insufficient, which caused such a great problem for your majesty. Please punish me. Agars and Vasego both understood the demon god emperor. Although the prophecy of life earlier had already shown that the demon god emperor had wrongly accused the star demon god, was anyone really bold enough to blame the demon god emperor? No matter how much resentment Vasego experienced, he could not afford to show any of it at all. He even had to cover it all up for the sake of the demon god emperor. The demon god emperor Fengxiu was the greatest powerhouse of the demons in the past 6,000 years. He had not reached his current status by relying on others. With a wave of his hand, spiritual energy lifted Vasego to his feet. Fengxiu sighed, being right is being right, and being wrong is being wrong. You are not wrong. I am. However, I believe you can sense the benefits from the vitality earlier. Just treat it as your older brother making it up to you. That's called fairy source. Not only can it recover your vitality, it can give you an additional 500 years of life as well. Over all these years, you've harmed your vitality for our race by giving prophecies again and again. Treat it as the entire race repaying you with thanks. I hope you won't bear grudges against me. Vasego lowered his head and said, would never. Thank you for the bestowment, your majesty. Chapter 778, Prophecy of Life, 3 The demon god emperor said, I know you are very discontent with what I did earlier, but you should also understand exactly what Austin Griffin means to our race. Recently, I used my secluded cultivation as a cover to fool the humans in the capital and I went to the illusory shrine. I personally killed the fairy dragon that neared a million spiritual energy, destroyed both the illusory shrine and illusory paradise and tried to capture the remnant that the goddess of nature had left in the human world. After I had killed the fairy dragon, it left behind the fairy source and fairy's heart. The fairy's heart was taken away by the remnant of the goddess of nature, while the fairy source ended up in my hands. Just when I was about to succeed, Long Houchen appeared and destroyed my plans. He's already powerful enough to threaten me and he quickly saved the remnant of the goddess of nature, which made me lose my chance at becoming a true god. With that, the demon gods all understood. As it turned out, the demon god emperor was not furious only because Long Houchen was still alive and Austin Griffin might have been revived. He was angry because his plan on becoming a god was destroyed as well. Without a doubt, it was basically impossible for the demon god emperor to obtain the remnant of the goddess of nature after she had been saved by Long Houchen. Although all the demon gods present knew that the demon god emperor's cultivation was unfathomable, this was the first time he had personally admitted the possibility of becoming a god. In that moment, the pressure from earlier gradually reappeared in the hearts of the demon gods. As the strongest group among the demons, they knew what becoming a god meant very well. 
No wonder the demon god emperor had been turning a blind eye to most of the matters happening in the race recently. He had really reached that level. The demon god emperor said coldly, Long Houchen's still alive, which means he's a threat. Even if Austin Griffin is really dead, he himself still can threaten our reign. The next time we meet will be when we clash and his cultivation has already surpassed the strongest powerhouse in human history. And, he's only in his twenties right now. If we give him enough time and space, our race will be in danger. As a result, I have already decided to reignite the holy war. We need to kill off Long Houchen for good, regardless of whether he's a human or an undead. No one dared to object. Even though the demon gods all knew that the main reason for this was probably because the demon god emperor wanted to take back that god so he could become a god, since the threat of Austin Griffin was most likely gone, would they still be bold enough to say anything? He had already made an example out of the star demon god. The demon god emperor did not have second fairy source. Tell me, do you have any suggestions? The demon god emperor's dignified gaze swept past the demon gods below. The demon gods looked at each other. None of them dared to say anything. This news had come just too suddenly. At this moment, Abao who stood beside Demon God Emperor began to talk. He took two steps forward and knelt down on one knee before the Demon God Emperor, Father, since we will be reigniting the Holy War, I think we have to unleash our full strength this time. In the last Holy War, we exhausted a tremendous amount of effort and resources. Although the humans were the same, we still failed to take their strongholds. I think we have to kill our way into the humans no matter what we do and deal a proper blow to them. Even if it's not enough to wipe them out completely, we have to make them really suffer, or even destroy one or two temples. The demon god emperor became rather impatient, go into detail. These empty words are useless. Abao said, I think we should concentrate our forces this time and attack just one or two strongholds. With our strength, it's impossible for them to repel us. Since the objective this time is destruction, not just suppression or dealing a blow, we should be more vicious. I am willing to lead the vanguard into battle. Coldness flashed through the demon god emperor's eyes, there's something you got right. This time, we have to make the humans suffer. According to our scouts among the humans, the humans have recovered very quickly during the years after the last holy war. At least, it's faster than us. The advantage that the humans have gradually has begun to show itself. If this continues, the humans might even launch a counterattack against us in a few years' time. We cannot allow that to happen. The holy war this time won't be a bunch of small skirmishes. I want the humans to truly understand what an unopposable power is. Agars, Vesego, go back first. Gather your clansmen and this time, we need to send out all the elites of our three clans. I'd like to see what the humans will use to stop us. Of course, before this, we should clean up the annoying flies in Modu. I haven't touched them all these years, so do they really think I can't do anything to them? The demon god of death Samijina said politely, Your majesty, then where should we begin our attacks against the humans? My fiend clan pledges our lives to your majesty. We are willing to serve as the vanguard. The demon god emperor said plainly, The humans can't stop us no matter where we begin. Let me deal with the annoying flies in Modu before I decide on the exact plan. Abao, gather all the demon hunter removers in Modu. From today onwards, I will name you the commander of the demon hunter removers. You will lead all of them. Prepare for battle. Yes, a cold light surged in Abao's eyes as heavy battle spirit and killing intent appeared. The other demon gods below kneeled down at the same time, we pledge our lives, your majesty. If the demons are going to launch an attack, the most likely target is our dragon resisting mountain pass. Long Houchen on the leading seat in the discussion hall of the night temple. Beside him sat Long Xingyu and the members of the bright glimmer of hope. Aside from him, the other people of the Bright Glimmer of Hope were also members of the Union. They possessed the right to participate in this meeting. As soon as Long Houchen had said that, the powerhouses of the Night Temple became shocked. Long Xingyu asked in doubt, Chairman, why do you think that? Long Houchen said, because the Demon God Emperor's target is me. Everyone, you still should be able to remember that with my companions, we once destroyed Demon God Pillars. We destroyed the demon god pillars of the snake demon god Andromalius and the panther demon god Auxerre, turning the 72 demon god pillars into 70 forever, with no possibility of recovering. That was because I possess a special power that just happens to suppress the demon god pillars of the demons, which can also destroy them. Because of this, the demon god emperor had once set up a trap, ambushing and almost killing us completely. More correctly, he thought I had already died back then. This time, in order to stop him from gaining the goddess of nature's godhood remnants, we met again. The demon god emperor must have felt threatened and will want to wage war once more. His target will be me. To the demons, I am their greatest issue. If they don't kill me, the demon god emperor will never find peace, and the best way to deal with me is to directly attack the dragon resisting mountain pass, because the demon god emperor is confident that as a member of the night hall, I won't just abandon the mountain pass. That is why I'm guessing his first target is likely to be attacking us. Everyone nodded upon hearing Long Houchen's explanation, but it was possible to tell from the worry in their eyes that the dragon resisting mountain pass really was unwilling to clash with the demons right now. Long Houchen said seriously, I can understand your worries. The holy war has just ended a few years ago and you are all resting. If the demons do come again, it will definitely be a great disaster. And, it's very likely that the demon god emperor will personally lead the devil dragons into battle. 
It will be even more dangerous than the precious holy war. However, it's not up to us to decide whether the war happens or not. Although it was an accident when I stopped the demon god emperor from obtaining the remnants of the goddess of nature, I am confident that if the demon god emperor succeeds, it will be our doomsday. We will lose our future. As a result, all we can do is unleash our full strength in a battle to the death against the demons this time. This battle very well might become the turning point in our age of darkness. Our knight temple has gained six divine knights, unprecedented in history. This means that history has placed a huge burden on us. There is only one objective in the meeting today. No matter when the holy war begins or how powerful the enemy is, I hope our divine knights can all be prepared for battle and face the problems of the near future in our strongest condition. Whether we can carve out a ray of light in the darkness will be up to us. As the chairman of the union, I have an inescapable responsibility. As the divine knight of glory and leadership, I can guarantee everyone that before I die, the demon god emperor won't be able to harm any of our fellow officers. After these warm-hearted words, everyone present was brimming with enthusiasm. Long Houchen's promise meant that he would be taking on all the burden of facing against the greatest powerhouse of the demons, the demon god emperor. Throughout the history of humans, whether it was the divine holy sword wield or the scion of samsara, none of them had ever promised like Long Houchen, despite all being prodigies. After thinking about how Long Houchen had already become the master of the divine throne of eternity and creation as well, everyone's confidence immediately increased slightly. Long Houchen continued, I've already written a letter to the headquarters. In the next few days, the upper echelon of the Union will arrive at Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass to discuss the countermeasures. At the same time, they will bring with them the newly formed first and second armies of the Union. As for the battle plan and tactics we will use, we will decide after careful discussion. The meeting ended and Long Houchen had reached his basic objective. At least, he had roused the morale of the Knight Temple Hall at the Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass. However, Long Houchen did not feel at ease at all, because he knew that after the Holy War last time, the Six Human Temple had all become jittery. After all, the humans had suffered far too great of a loss last time. However, matters would not disappear just because they were afraid. They could completely foresee the arrival of the demon god emperor. What Long Houchen needed to do right now is to increase morale as much as possible and gather all the powers of the Union to face against the issue. Chapter 779, Legend of the Eternal Heroes, I. After receiving Long Houchen's letter, the headquarters of the Temple Union began to move in full swing. Orders were sent off to the six temples to tell them to prepare for battle. At the same time, every temple recommended three members to go to the Night Hall at Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass to take part in the meetings. All the vice chairmen of the Union went as well. They also brought the first and second armies that had already been integrated together and trained to a certain degree to the Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass. On the side of the demons, all the demon hunt squads received missions for the war. They did all that they could to investigate the plans of the demons. According to their reports, the demons did indeed stir. The strongest dozen or so demon clans had all mobilized their troops. The news that shocked the Temple Union the most was that the Demon God Emperor had gathered over 50 demon gods with their demon god pillars to hold a meeting in Modu. After hearing that, the Temple Union was immediately thrown into an uproar. Even in the previous Holy War, the demons had not mobilized so many demon gods. Out of the 72 demon gods, two demon god pillars had been destroyed and there were a total of nine demon gods that had been killed so far. In other words, there were actually only 63 demon gods. Apart from leaving behind a few demon gods to guard important territory, the demon god emperor had basically mobilized all of the forces that the demon gods had to offer. From the looks of things, it seemed a little like they wanted to wage a final war against the humans. Why wouldn't the temple union be shocked by this? No one had thought that after the new union had been founded, the demons would respond so quickly and with such determination. Only the upper echelon of the union understood that the main reason why the demon god emperor had begun the holy war was because of their new chairman, Long Houchen. What could they do? Hand over Long Houchen? They definitely could not do that. When Long Houchen wasn't powerful, the Temple Alliance had resisted this temptation and engaged in an all-out war against the demons, so let alone now. Not only was he powerful, he had become the person who held the greatest authority in the Temple Union, as well as the first divine knight of glory of leadership in the Knight Temple, gaining the recognition of the divine throne of eternity and creation. Coupled with his bright glimmer of hope, it was possible to say that just their demon hunt squad could rival the upper echelon of any single one of the six temples. Half a month later, the upper echelon of the Temple Union gathered at the Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass. The two integrated armies were stationed there as well. Just when they began the first important meeting of the Union's history, grievous news suddenly arrived. What? Including Long Houchen, all the people in the discussion hall stood up in shock. A solemn atmosphere immediately filled the entire room. The Demon God Slayers and the Nine Heaven Transcenders had both been annihilated. This news came just too suddenly, and it was just too shocking. For that moment, the entire discussion hall had fallen utterly silent. Everyone felt like their hearts had been struck by something heavy, while Long Houchen paled as the chairman of the Union. The news had come just when the war was about to erupt, making it just too shocking. At the same time, it was a great hit to the Temple Union as well. Aside from the bright glimmer of hope, the Demon God Slayers and the Nine Heaven Transcenders were the other two titled Demon Hunt squads that had great achievements. Long Houchen was not exactly familiar with the Nine Heaven Transcenders, but he could not be more familiar with the Demon God Slayers. The legendary powerhouse, Chen Zidian, had assisted him time and time again, which was the reason why he could successfully become the chairman. 
However, he had never thought that just after parting a few months ago, they would be completely annihilated by the Deons. After a moment of shock, Long Haochen forcefully suppressed his grief. He asked the Emperor Grey Demon Hunt Squad Captain, is the news reliable? The captain was an old man in his 80s. He said painfully, the news is reliable. Senior Chen Zidian has always maintained a special communication method with our Demon Hunt Squad. When that had happened, he quickly sent a message to tell us to retreat back to the Union. The Demon God Emperor had personally lead the Moon Demon God, Star Demon God, Demon God of Death, Hell Demon God and another dozen or so Demon Gods to encircle them without any prior warning. When Senior Chen Zidian sent the message, they were already about to be defeated. However, the Demon God Slayers and Nine Heaven Transcenders fought to their deaths and managed to kill three Demon Gods. Senior Chen Zidian also sent an accurate figure over. Aside from the three Demon Gods that were slain, another 54 Demon Gods had gathered in Modu. The last thing that Senior Chen Zidian told me was rather confusing. He said the Demon God Emperor was hiding. There was nothing else after saying, hiding. He must have died to the Demon God Emperor. After hearing that, the people in the room could not help but gasp. In that moment everyone just looked at each other. Aside from Long Haochen who managed to remain composed, the others were all in shock. The atmosphere in the meeting room had grown solemn. Long Haochen's heart also weighed heavily with sorrow filling his eyes. He did not know how strong the Nine Heaven Transcenders were, but he did know about the Demon God Slayers lead by Chen Zidian. Every single member of the Demon God Slayers had surpassed 300,000 spiritual energy, which is the third rank of the ninth step or higher. They were all powerhouses with domains. Chen Zidian's cultivation had even reached the fourth rank of the ninth step. Under his lead, even if they were encircled by many powerhouses, they still should have had the chance to escape. At least one or two of them should have survived. However, the end result was that they were annihilated. If he had not known that it was impossible, why would Chen Zidian spend the time sending messages instead of assisting at least one of their members in breaking out? The two title demon hunt squads had been killed just like this. It was an extremely heavy blow to the Temple Union. In particular, this was the heaviest blow to morale since the Union was founded. Yang Haohan said sternly, contain the news. Don't let it spread. Chairman, I'd advise you to recall all demon hunt squads in the territory of the demons immediately. Long Haochen nodded, I agree. Is there anyone who objects? The decision was passed under unanimous agreement. Even two title demon hunt squads had died to the demons, demonstrating just how determined the demon god emperor was this time. If the other demon hunt squads remained there, they would probably just be wasted as cannon fodder. After making the decision, the meeting room immediately fell silent. Everyone was in deep thought. They all experienced pressure greater than anything they had felt in the past. The deaths of the two title demon hunt squads made them completely understand that the holy war the demons would be launching this time would be completely different from the past. Not only would the Devil Dragons, Moon Demon Clan and Star Demon Clan be taking part, the Demon God Emperor had basically gathered 90% of the demons' forces as well. They were clearly ready for a battle to the death. Did the demons plan on destroying the humans for good? Yang Haochen sighed, looks like we're forced to use certain forces. When he reached there, he looked at Long Haochen and said sternly, Chairman, I'd advise us to mobilize the power of the Knight's Sacred Mountain. Long Haochen was surprised. For a moment, he did not understand what Yang Haohan was saying. Yang Haohan was currently a divine knight, one of the heads of the Knight Temple, but he was not even a vice chairman of the New Union. However, at such a crucial time, he seemed surprisingly calm as the previous chairman. After hearing the Knight's Sacred Mountain, the six temple heads raised their heads. Their eyes twinkled. Long Haochen asked, Temple Head Yang, what are you referring to by the Knight's Sacred Mountain's forces? In his impression, many light element magical beasts lived on the Knight's Sacred Mountain. It was a place to provide outstanding young knights with their mounts. At the same time, it supported a few seniors of the Knight Temple that had been heavily injured in battle against the demons. However, how could this power be enough to fend off the demons? Yang Haohan must have been referring to something. Yang Haohan stood up slowly and after glancing past the other temple heads, he said, at such a critical time of life or death, there are a few things I must tell you all, which the Union can then discuss and decide on. The Mage Temple head Li Shengji nodded. He said, that's the only way now. The original warrior temple head Xiao Yonghao, the original spiritual temple head Chen Hongyu, the original assassin temple head Sheng Yu and the priest temple head Ling Shao all nodded. Having gained the permission of the other temple heads, Yang Haohan turned towards Long Haochen, chairman, vice chairman and various members, today I will tell you the secret of the Knight's Sacred Mountain. Regardless of the outcome we reach, I hope everyone can keep this a secret, because this matter has to do with the Union Army's morale. Once it's leaked outside, it have an immeasurable effect. Long Haochen could already guess in that short amount of time that the secret of the Knight's Sacred Mountain was probably a trump card that the humans had against the demons. However, there should have been something disgraceful about this trump card, or it wouldn't be so mysterious. It would have also been used in the previous Holy War. Yang Haohan said, over 6,000 years ago when the demons descended and attacked us, the Shimma Dalu was plunged into misery and suffering. The humans who had originally ruled over the place experienced a sudden drop in population. For a time, corpses were strewn everywhere as the demons burned, killed and pillaged. They committed all kinds of sins. For the sake of survival, the capable people could only choose to flee. 
Under the constant pressuring of the demons, they gathered in the territory of our union currently controls and formed the six temples, fighting back against the demons with full force. After several decades of war, we finally stabilized our footing. Using the predecessors of the six forts currently occupied by the six temples, we finally stopped the demons' attacks. However, the demons were still powerful back then and they engaged in a decisive battle against the Temple Alliance of the time. Chapter 780, Legend of the Eternal Heroes, 2 In that battle, the demons lost half of their 72 demon gods. Many of them had died because our Night Temple had obtained the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation. As for us humans, almost a hundred powerhouses of the Ninth Step died in that battle. With both sides suffering heavy losses and the demons unclear about the origins of the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation, they ended up retreating. When the Dark Era began, we finally gained the opportunity to rest and heal. Just when the war had ended, over 60 received corpses out of the dead Ninth Step powerhouses were still rather complete. They were our seniors, or even our ancestors and they had laid their lives down for the survival of humanity. If it were not for the efforts of these ancestors, we would not exist today. Back then, the Alliance had only been founded recently and it was nowhere as stable as right now. However, at the same time, there were many pieces of powerful equipment and magic tools that had been passed down since ancient times. Our Night Temple possesses a scroll that has been passed down since then. Upon reaching there, Yang Haohan's eyes shone with a strange light and he became slightly emotional as well. Everyone listened with their full attention. They knew that Yang Haohan had reached the crucial part of his narration. The scroll is called the Scroll of Spiritual Transformation. It sounds nothing special, but the magic recorded in the scroll is a forbidden spell and under certain circumstances, it can even be regarded as a super-forbidden spell. There were just far too few forbidden spell scrolls. Ever since Long Haohan had begun cultivating, he had only seen them two or three times. As for supra-forbidden spell scrolls, he had not even heard of them before. He only knew to a certain degree that the difference between a supra-forbidden spell and a forbidden spell was like the difference between a super-divine tool and divine tool. A supra-forbidden spell could even turn a war around. It could do the impossible. However, what Yang Haohan said next shocked everyone present. However, this supra-forbidden spell is death magic. With that, even Long Haochen had almost cried out. Everyone present was shocked. The several dozen people gathered in the meeting room were all representatives of the Temple Union. They were the strongest group of people. However, when they heard death magic, a chill ran down their spine. Some of them even shivered. Death magic had left an agonizing lesson in the history of humans. It would be strange if they had not reacted like this. This was also the reason why Long Haochen was repulsed when he found out the Tower of Eternity was an inheritance of death magic. Yang Haohan continued, you must have all guessed it already. The effects of this death magic supra forbidden spell is to transform the dead into undead. The reason why it is a supra forbidden spell is because when it turns the dead into undead, it can reconstruct the souls of the deceased from 24 hours before they had died as souls of powerhouses. At the same time, the wood possess the same intelligence as when they were alive. This spell has a range of 100 square meters. Connecting it to the recovered corpses that Yang Haohan had mentioned earlier, everyone understood what he was going to say, but they were still in disbelief. They listened to him quietly. I know you can't understand this. It's not just you. Back then, the leaders of the six temples also refused to use this scroll. Death magic has left us humans with some agonizing memories. It's possible to say that if it were not great disaster before the Dark Era, the demons would not be able to force us into considering something like that. Even the Glorious Church was destroyed under the attacks of the demons. From a certain perspective, the Glorious Church is the predecessors of our Night Temple. Long Haochen glanced at Kyer instinctively. He discovered that his companions of the bright glimmer of hope were looking at her as well. All of their expressions were slightly strange, but there was more firm support for Long Haochen. Yang Haohan said, a fierce debate arose in that time. Some people supported the use of this scroll. Although we would turn these powerhouses of the Ninth Step into undead, they would just be living through a different method at the end of the day. As long as they could live, it would be equivalent to recovering more than half of the strength the Temple Alliance had lost. Even if the demons attacked us once more, we could stop them with greater ease. Another group of people believed that using the scroll was blasphemy to these deceased seniors, preventing their souls from resting. And, once they became undead, who could be certain enough that their personalities and memories would remain the same? Just in case something happened, wouldn't it plunge humans into an absolute disaster? They would not even be able to maintain the newly established Temple Union. There was great conflict between these two opinions. In the end, the final decision was made depending on how far the demons had retreated. Back then, the demons had not retreat completely. Instead, they stopped 250 kilometers away from the Alliance. After the remaining powerhouses of the 72 demon gods had retreated, they left their demon god pillars at the boundary, and it seemed like they could return at any time. Under such circumstances and the support of some of the deceased's families, they used the supra-forbidden spell scroll in the end. Many people instinctively held their breaths when they reached there. Although they could guess the final outcome, they were still shaken up by the close situation back then. The scroll of spiritual transformation succeeded. A total of 63 powerhouses of the ninth step became undead and condensed their own souls of powerhouses. Although their bodies were still damaged, their strength did not drop by much through their souls of powerhouses, and they possessed certain powers of undead. They had witnessed the might of the supra-forbidden spell. Back then, basically all of the revived powerhouses were unable to accept this matter. 
They had fallen in battle as humans, a true humans, but now they had become undead. What were they supposed to be now? Fortunately, before the scroll was used, the six temples back then had already reached an agreement and had announced the temple's recognition of these people, bestowing them the title of eternal heroes. And, they had agreed to specially create a place for them to stay and move about in. All they needed to do was assist the Alliance when the demons attacked and the Alliance was unable to hold them back. Faced with the persuasion of the six temple heads and some of their family, the eternal heroes finally began to accept this reality. To their families, being able to hear them speak and see them live as undead was also a form of happiness. As a result, the 63 eternal heroes were arranged to stay in a secret location, so they could rest. This place is the interior of the night's sacred mountain that you all know of. The existence of the eternal heroes was definitely the greatest secret of the Temple Alliance. Yang Haohan had brought up this secret clearly because he felt the pressure from the demons was just too great, that they needed to use the power of these eternal heroes. For that moment, the members of the Temple Union looked at each other. Most of them found that their heads were too full to think. Just like the battle back then, borrowing the power of undead was definitely a major matter to the Temple Union. And just like what Yang Haohan had said, if this matter was disclosed to the world, it would cause a huge impact to the Union. For example, if ordinary citizens found out that the Union actually had such a great undead force, what would they be able to understand? Fear would definitely reign over most of them. In particular, the army would suffer a heavy hit to morale. After making arrangements for the 63 Eternal Heroes, the six Temple Heads passed strict order to contain the information. At the same time, they decided that only future Temple Heads would know about this secret. And, if the Alliance was not facing absolute doom, they would be forbidden to use the power of the Eternal Heroes, so they can slumber in the Knight's Sacred Mountain. Soon afterwards, the Demon Army really did retreat and the Eternal Heroes never appeared on the battlefield ever again. The news of their existence has always been passed down to successive Temple Heads, until now. Yang Haohan finished introducing everyone to the details and returned to his seat. At the same time, he looked at Long Haochen. To his relief, Long Haochen appeared to be extremely composed after hearing everything he said. He was not overly surprised, nor did he show any disgust. Technically, it was Long Haochen's turn to speak as the chairman of the Union after Yang Haohan had finished talking. However, before he could speak, Long Tianyin cut in first, I disagree with using the Eternal Heroes. As he said that, the Divine Knight stood up and glanced at Yang Haohan in displeasure. He said, let me stress this first. Although Xing Yu and I are also heads of the Knight Temple, we didn't know about this at all. Yang Haohan nodded, yes. Although our Knight Hall is special in that we can have multiple heads, this secret has only been passed on by word of mouth to a single person each generation. Long Tianyin snorted, old Yang, how did you become muddle-headed? They're undead. There are seniors and have also made great contributions to mankind. They've also sacrificed their lives. It was already a huge problem that they had been turned into undead back then, so how can we borrow their strength now? Have you thought about it? Once they enter the battlefield, our people will definitely find out. You can't hide the truth. When that happens, what are we supposed to tell our people? Just what kind of sight will it be when a group of powerful undead enters the battlefield? And, after several millennia, can you guarantee that these eternal heroes have never changed their minds after such a long time? Once they leave their place of slumber and appear outside, the most terrifying part is that they're strong, yet beyond our control, even if we don't factor in how strong they are in combat. There are seniors, so why would they listen to the command of us juniors? Before we can even borrow their strength, we'll have already suffered a backlash. The Union faces great danger already, so we can't take any further risks. Chapter 781, Legend of the Eternal Heroes, 3 Many people were visibly moved by what Long Tianyin said. Long Xingyu nodded his head to one side as he said sternly, I agree with Temple Head Long's opinion. We cannot be rash about this. There was too much inestimable dangers involved. I also think we shouldn't use the Eternal Heroes so easily. With the expression of opinion from two holy knights, the members present immediately sank into their thoughts. Long Tianyin and Long Xingyu possessed great status in the Knight Temple, so they possessed extremely great influence. Although Yang Haohan had once been the head of the Temple Alliance, he remained in the headquarters, while the dragon-resisting mountain pass had always been under the command of the father and son. Their words would have a certain impact on the members from other temples. Li Xingji, I think this will work. There was a restriction to the scroll of spiritual transformation back then. That is, the undead powerhouses brought to life by the scroll of spiritual transformation can only exist for a thousand years. Over six thousand years have passed since then. Every temple head will actually go to pay respects to these eternal heroes. We have learned from them that the Eternal Heroes have chosen to slumber in order to lengthen their lives as undead. However, around 40 years ago, their last message was that they did not have much time left. They had five decades at most before they would return to an eternal slumber, and never wake up again. They had suggested back then that if the Alliance needed them to, they were willing to help out one last time. In other words, even if we don't use their power, they won't last more than 10 years. As a result, I agree with Temple Head Yang's suggestion. We can trust the Eternal Heroes completely. As for how we can use them, I believe we can find a way to cover it up. There aren't a lot of them. I believe that these eternal heroes can turn the situation around on the battlefield. I am in doubt, Ling Xiao said. As the priest temple head, he hated undead the most. He said solemnly, I agree with old Yang in mentioning this matter, but I don't think we should use his power. The undead are undead. Think about how undead survive. 
They borrow the powers of the dark, mingling with the auras of corpses, darkness, and all other evils. Although these eternal heroes are our seniors and have contributed significantly to humanity, they still have been undead for thousands of years already. The two temple heads were right. Just in case something happens, it's very likely for the Union to be doomed. Yang Haohan could not help but frown in response to what Ling Xiao said. He knew that bringing up this matter would lead to a debate, but he had never thought the debate would be so intense. He had expected Ling Xiao's objection, but Long Tianyin and Long Xingyu's fierce objection had exceeded his expectations. He originally believed that the duo would remain neutral on the matter, but who would have thought they would be the first ones to object? Long Tianyin and Long Xingyu's opinion was extremely important, because they were Long Haochen's relatives. It was very likely for their opinions to impact Long Haochen, who was the chairman. Perhaps Long Haochen's current influence over the Union was not as great as the senior powerhouses like the Six Temple Heads, but he could influence the people from the bright glimmer of light in today's meeting at the very least. Aside from him, there was also Kai'er, Chen Ying'er and Wang Yuanyuan, three vice chairwomen of the Union. Perhaps their influence was still not great enough, but if it ended in a final vote, the bright glimmer of hope would possess almost a third of all the votes. As a result, Long Haochen's opinion was critical to deciding this matter. The starry sky holy knight, Yang Haoyu, suddenly spoke at this moment. He coughed gently and immediately attracted everyone's attention. As the greatest powerhouse of the Union, his opinion was also very important. None of us can decide whether this matter is right or wrong, or good or bad, right now. It's good that everyone is discussing this, but I need to remind you all that it's no longer about the Temple Alliance, but the Temple Union. The discussion so far is discussion, but before the chairman has spoken, haven't we stepped a little bit out of our places? Yang Haoyu did not directly support Yang Haohan, nor did he say his opinion. Instead, he defended Long Haochen's authority as the chairman of the union. Actually, he failed to understand what was happening with Long Haochen today. Long Haochen had always been clever and knew how to control the situation. The meeting today was so important, so why did he remain silent as the chairman of the union, letting everyone argue among themselves? Hearing what Yang Haoyu said, Yang Haohan nodded, that's what I'm thinking as well. Let's hear the chairman's opinion first. Long Tianyin did not object to this. In his heart, Long Haochen was his grandson at the end of the day, and he really did object Yang Haohan's suggestion from the bottom of his heart, or he wouldn't have immediately retorted his suggestion after all these years of friendship. Long Xingyu frowned slightly. Who knew what he was thinking? Everyone's gazes ended up gathering on Long Haochen. Long Haoch smiled indifferently. He said, since a new union's been founded, we have to decide on any final matter together. The final voting will represent what the majority thinks. However, before more people speak their minds and we vote, I want to tell you all a story. Temple Head Yang, do you know the name of the creator of the Scroll of Spiritual Transformation? Yang Haohan was surprised. He did not expect Long Haochen to ask something like that. He instinctively shook his head and said, there's no record of it. It only said that it's very likely that the scroll was created by the necromancer who had sowed misery and suffering into the continent in the past. I don't know why it was left behind. Perhaps it was a spoil of war when the glorious church defeated him. Long Haochen nodded, then, do any of you know the name of this necromancer of the past? Long Tianying frowned slightly, Chairman, what's the point of this? Moreover, the necromancer of the past had appeared before the Era of Darkness. It's over 6,500 years from now. There are very few records that detail him. All we can confirm is that a powerful and evil necromancer existed. There's basically nothing else that's been passed down about his details. Long Haochen said, then, you all don't know. All right, let me tell you then. As he said that, he stood up slowly. With a slight flash, he arrived at the front from the back. All the powerhouses sitting at the table discovered in surprise that in that moment, Long Haochen seemed to have arrived there by crossing through space. It seemed like he had directly passed through the table, but in reality, he had used an ability similar to teleportation. His strength had increased drastically again. Yang Haoyue could not help but sigh in amazement secretly. And, he discovered that it was rather difficult for him to see through Long Haochen's cultivation now. Long Haochen arrived at the front of the table and said, the necromancer who created the scroll was called Alux. He's also the one who caused a huge disaster for humanity before the Era of Darkness. He gave himself a title. He called himself the Holy Necromancer, Slumbering Calamity Alux. If it were not for his existence that had created a disaster for us humans, perhaps we would not have been annihilated like we were when the demons attacked, and the era of darkness for the past 6,000 years would not have existed. However, it is humans who cultivate to become necromancers. Never have we heard about any other creature directly becoming a necromancer, right? Then, why did he lay his hands on humans and sow misery and suffering among them? The Priot Temple head, Ling Xian, said instinctively, necromancers like that must be evil. They want to destroy the world. Long Haochen smiled, Temple Head Ling, we can't become entrenched in our preconceived ideas. If I tell you all that this terrifying necromancer who had once brought a disaster to mankind was originally of the light element and that all of his death magic was based on the light element, would you believe me? Impossible, Long Tianyin, Long Xingyu, Ling Xiao, and even Yang Haoyu and Yang Haohan all said together. They were all representatives of the element of light. Long Haochen shook his head, no, I'm telling the truth, because not only was this necromancer a light mage in the past, he was a scion of light as well, just like me. As soon as he said that, everyone fell into an uproar. For that moment, everyone looked at Long Haochen like he was a madman. 
Only the people of the bright glimmer of hope remained composed. Long Tianyin suddenly stood up and said angrily, Long Haochen, do you know what you are saying? Are you arguing for this necromancer? And by using such impossible arguments? Long Haochen looked at Long Tianyin with a brilliant gaze. He did not let up. Temple headlong, the truth is not decided by the loudness of your voice. Please sit down first. Since I am the chairman, I hope you can let me finish. From now onwards, please do not interrupt me, or I must ask you to leave. Chapter 782, Exemplar to Look Up to, I. Long Tianyin was surprised. Clearly, he had never expected Long Haochen to speak to him like that. He could not help but become furious, all right. I'd like to see how you ask me to leave. Are you going to lay your hands on me? Long Haochen's eyes suddenly shone brightly. Afterwards, he sent a palm strike towards Long Tianyin from far away. Long Haochen was attacking Long Tianyin during the meeting. That was a sight many people would struggle to believe, but that was exactly what happened. Long Tianyin bellowed out furiously and hurled a first at Long Haochen. His face had reddened from anger. At the end of the day, he was a senior powerhouse of the Night Temple. Moreover, the person who had disrespected him so much was his own grandson. However, something that shocked all the powerhouses present appeared once more. Long Haochen's body suddenly became faintly golden. The gentle golden light seemed extremely comforting. A golden handprint appeared in the air from his palm strike. When Long Tianyin's furious strike was about to collide with it, Long Tianyin's body shuddered under the golden light and afterwards, he was actually enveloped by Long Haochen's golden light. In the next moment, he actually turned into a streak of golden light and vanished. One move. Just one move. Self-incarnating domain? Li Zhengji's mutter roused everyone from their shock. What did a self-incarnating domain mean? Everyone knew the answer just too well. It meant the fifth rank of the ninth step. Their chairman had actually reached the fifth rank of the ninth step. It had to be known that in the recent temple's great gathering, the strength that Long Haochen demonstrated was only of the second or third rank. In just two short months, he had actually broken through consecutively. A self-incarnating domain was something that many ninth step powerhouses could not achieve even if they used up their entire lives. For that moment, the upper echelon of the union could not help but change how they looked at Long Haochen. Whether it was the union or among the demons, strength tended to represent speaking authority. Haochen, you. Long Xingyu was both furious and surprised. However, when he made contact with Long Haochen's stern gaze, he immediately stopped speaking. He sat there with a sunken face, no longer uttering another word. Long Haochen looked at Yang Haohan and said solemnly, according to the rules of the union, the chairman can temporarily expel members who disrespect the chairman during a meeting from the meeting. Am I correct? Yang Haohan nodded subconsciously. In reality, he too had been shocked by Long Haochen's actions. Long Haochen smiled plainly and said, Temple Head Long was slightly tired, so I asked him to go rest up first. You don't have to worry. Of course no one believed Long Haochen would lay his hands on Long Tianyin. That was his grandfather after all. However, Long Haochen's actions made the powerhouses of the Six Temples re-evaluate Long Haochen and take him more seriously. The Union had only been founded recently, so in reality, many people continued to follow the methods of the Temple Alliance from before. Long Haochen and his bright glimmer of hope never used their authority in the meetings either, so not a lot of people recognized Long Haochen's position as chairman. They just knew the Demon Hunt Squad was very powerful. Most of them behaved just like when they were a part of the Temple Alliance, mainly obliging to the commands of the various temples. However, Long Haochen's actions told them without a doubt that in the current union, he was truly the greatest. And, he had used his strength to demonstrate his power. He did not use the divine throne of eternity and creation in his clash with Long Tianyin, yet he was able to incapacitate Long Tianyin in a single strike and teleport him away. This strength was clearly no worse than the starry sky holy knight Yang Haoyu. Coupled with the amplification from the first divine throne in history, everyone discovered in shock that their chairman had actually reached such a great level of strength already. This discovery made them gradually forget about Long Haochen's age. They now looked at him with a bit more respect. Where did Long Tianyin go? He was right outside the meeting. However, there was not a twinge of anger on this temple head's face at all. Instead, he smiled a little. You brat. I'll settle this matter with you later. He <laughs> he. As he said that, the powerful divine knight of control and restraint just turned around and left calmly. How was it possible for the stunned people inside to know that Long Tianyin and Long Haochen had already agreed to use this opportunity for Long Haochen to demonstrate his might? Even Long Xingyu did not know. This only demonstrated that the duo were extremely talented at acting. Otherwise, no matter how powerful Long Haochen was, it was impossible for him to succeed in a single move. And, with his character, how could he really get angry as his grandfather? The meeting room gradually quietened down. Long Haochen said indifferently, the story I am telling will have a great impact on how you vote later. It's the same as before. Please do not interrupt me while I am speaking, or I will ask you to leave as well. You haven't heard wrong. The holy necromancer, slumbering calamity Alux was also a scion of light, just like me. Actually, if you think about it from a different perspective, you will find it easier to believe. Necromancers are powerful, but they are just a branch of mages. Just what kind of disaster can a necromancer with mediocre talent bring upon mankind? The answer is clearly almost nothing. 
The reason why Alux could do this was because he possessed enough talent and affinity for understanding. At the same time, there was enough hatred supporting his actions. He was a fallen scion of light, but why did he fall? After I learnt the whole reason for this, I have to vindicate him. The slumbering calamity back then came from us humans. We had created this disaster for ourselves. Long Houchen's narration was very fascinating. When he said that, he could not help but sigh in amazement inside. Senior Alux, you saved my life and passed your power onto me and Kyer. You've already grown aware of your actions in the final moment. Sign that's the case, I will vindicate you today. Although you are already dead, I still have to make sure you can depart with a little more peace. Long Houchen and Kyer were both indebted to Alux. Regardless of whether they recognized him, the favor he had given them did happen. Moreover, Alux's final repentance and deeply touched them. The current opportunity was a chance for Long Houchen to vindicate him. Everyone must find it strange as to why I know this. We need to start at the beginning to understand this. When our bright glimmer of hope was still at the commander grade, we had once received a mission to investigate the desolate hissing caverns discovered by the demons. After we had accepted the mission, it had been deemed to be incorrectly allocated, which lead to a chain of events at the demon hunt squad's mission tower. However, we did complete the mission. Now that Long Houchen was the chairman of the union, there was no need to hide a few matters anymore. Moreover, the matter of the Tower of Eternity had concluded perfectly. He was not afraid of mentioning it anyway. Immediately, Long Houchen told everyone how they discovered the Tower of Eternity in the desolate hissing cavern and became inheritors of the Tower of Eternity, as well as how they trained in the Tower of Eternity and gradually discovered the truth about the Tower of Eternity. He almost mentioned how he died in a battle against the demons in the end, and how he was brought into the Tower of Eternity by Kyer to be revived. That had basically been his greatest secret. Now that he had mentioned it, not only did he want to clear Alux's name, he also wanted the upper echelon of the Union to understand why their demon hunt squad possessed such strength at such a young age. This is Alux's story. Exactly because he had endured too much pain and the grudge of his annihilated family that set him on a path of no return. His mistakes are inexcusable, but I need to ask you all this question. Are necromancers really born evil? Long Houchen's story was very fascinating and very touching. Especially when he mentioned how Kyer carried him on her back and went through thick and thin in the Tower of Eternity with the bright glimmer of hope to revive him, it deeply touched the hearts of everyone present. Originally, a lot of people believed that Long Houchen possessed his current cultivation because of his natural endowment, all because of his constitution as a scion of light. Only when they heard his story did they understand just how much pain he had gone through as his strength increased, and why he had gone missing among the demons for so long. Long Xingyu's fists had already become pale white from clenching too hard. His nails were deeply embedded in his hands as tears flowed down his cheeks uncontrollably, dripping onto his clothes. When Long Houchen saw his father's sorrowful appearance, a strange light appeared in his eyes. At the same time, there seemed to be a faint relief. However, no one noticed this slight change on his face. That's the end of my story. That's my story. As the chairman of the Union, I also believe this secret should be disclosed as my responsibility to the Union. Regarding the Eternal Heroes. I believe that we can ask them to fight, to unleash their final power for the Union. I believe our predecessors have waited a very long time for this day. However, for the sake of safety, I will go to the Knight's Sacred Mountain first and confirm their situation. Only if they truly can fight and are still clear-headed can they be led onto the battlefield. They are the true heroes of the Alliance. I think that not only shouldn't we hide this matter from the common people, we should publicly announce it as well. Sometimes, we don't need to be overly conservative. So what if they're undead? They're the heroes of the Alliance. Our heroes have already offered their lives to the Alliance, so why must they remain hidden away when they are still fighting for the Alliance after death, such that the people they protect don't even know about them? I believe the common people will understand as long as we put in the effort into the announcement. Chapter 783, Exemplar to Look Up To, 2 Long Houchen's words shocked many people. It was also their first time in experiencing the chairman's might. From the beginning to the end, no one cut him off at all. Everyone thought about what he had said. Even the most stubborn priest temple head Ling Xiao changed in expression. With a flash, Long Houchen returned to his seat, what I said just then was my opinion. You can discuss and pour your thoughts together now. We will vote in a short while. The discussion will still be hosted by Temple Head Yang. Yang Haohan nodded at Long Houchen first, before speaking sternly, the chairman's story has shocked me deeply. Never did we think that there would be such an unknown story behind the chairman's great strength. The chairman and every single member of the Bright Glimmer of Hope is a hero of the Union. We should show our respects to the heroes. As he said that, he stood up first and performed a standard night salute to Long Houchen and the Bright Glimmer of Hope. The other people all stood up and copied Yang Haohan. Long Houchen stood up with his companions in a hurry to return the gesture, from the day we became demon hunters, we had already decided to bleed and lay our lives down for the Union. Never did we consider dying a natural death, like Houchen Zidian had already expected himself to die in battle. I believe that although these two titled demon hunt squads have been annihilated, they did not leave with any regrets. They are the true heroes. I think we should have a minute of silence for the demon god slayers and nine heaven transcenders. Everyone fell quiet. Sorrow welled up in everyone's heart uncontrollably. However, there was also enthusiasm within this sorrow. 
Many of them had failed to realize that after listening to Long Houchen's story, the pressure they originally experienced was replaced by roaring fighting intent. Their fear for the incoming holy war had mostly vanished as well. The minute ended and Yang Haohan continued the topic of conversation from before. Chairman, there's something that I must ask you to explain. Because the eternal heroes have become undead, their character will be influenced to a certain degree. I disagree with you going personally. Just in case there's danger. Long Haochen waved his hand, there won't be danger. I'll go with Kyer. Kyer's domain of purification is nemesis of all undead. As a result, I can promise everyone that even if our eternal heroes have changed and plan on harming the Union, our bright glimmer of hope will personally resolve this issue. He was not exaggerating at all. No matter how powerful the eternal heroes were, it was impossible for them to match up to the undead army from Hao Yue's realm. Kyer could control the entire situation there, so let alone just 63 eternal heroes. If they wanted to rebel, Kyer's flourishing lotus flowers would not go easy on them. Yang Haohan said, since that's the case, let's discuss this later. Regarding the chairman's suggestion of announcing the eternal heroes, shouldn't we take the bigger picture into consideration? If we really do go through with it, we need ample preparation for the announcement. Long Haochen nodded, I agree. Li Xiangji said, then why not do this? The chairman's suggestion is very meaningful, while the chairman's personal story is highly persuasive as well. We can even learn from the necromancer who had once caused a calamity for us humans, the holy necromancer, slumbering calamity alux, much less our eternal heroes. If we record the matters of the chairman and then spread it, before spreading the news of the eternal heroes, it should be much easier to accept. Long Haochen was surprised, while the original warrior temple head Chiu Yonghao immediately agreed, that's a good idea, temple head Li. The union's just been founded. If the chairman and his wife become an exemplar for everyone, it will definitely bring great benefits when we face against the demons. It'll strengthen the chairman's charisma and unity. The chairman and vice chairwoman Kyer will become the foundation of what people can look up to. Let's do that. The temple head's eyes all lit up when they heard Chiu Yonghao's analysis. Chen Ninger immediately added, I agree. The story between the chairman and vice chairwoman Kyer is a legend in itself. It should be made public. Moreover, this is for our war against the demons. Long Haochen had never thought that trying to rectify the status of the eternal heroes would draw him into the matter as well. He wanted to object, but he was drowned out by the approval. Everyone had finally reached an agreement. Long Haochen would personally ask the eternal heroes to fight and they would rectify the eternal heroes as well. Of course, before all of this, they would spread the story of Long Haochen and Kyer. The Mage Temple head Li Zhengji immediately accepted this mission. The special illusion mages of the Mage Temple would make a short film to broadcast. Of course, Long Haochen and Kyer had to cooperate in the acting as well. This was only the first meeting. Even more important topics of conversation were presented on the second day of the meetings. Where would the demons attack? Would they engage in a full-blow war like last time, or would they concentrate on a single point? If they only concentrated on a single point, where would this be? These questions were crucial to the Union. Even if they engaged in open conflict, the Union's chances of victory would still be lower. If they were taken by surprise and the demon army managed to make into the Union, then there would definitely be a massacre. With the destructive power of the demon army, the Union would be in danger. Long Haochen believed that there was a higher chance that the demons would directly attack the dragon-resisting mountain pass occupied by the Night Temple, because their primary target was him. However, he was not completely certain in this. If the demon god emperor attacked a different fort while he had the Union's forces concentrated in the dragon-resisting mountain pass, they would be like laying to the populace of mankind naked before the demon army. The upper echelon of the Union discussed for two entire days, but they still failed to reach a conclusion. However, the orders of the Union were still passed on to the five other temples. Among them included the magic film that Long Haochen and Kyer would be making. With the Tower of Eternity, as well as Kyer's control over the tower, the bright glimmer of hope and the cooperation of the Twelve Holy Guards, they had basically recreated the exact situation as back then. Although they did not have a lot of time for filming, which made it seem rather rough, but they still achieved their intended effect in the shocking scene. Especially when the Mage Temple used over a dozen illusion mages to complete the final, meticulous editing despite the costs, the magic film turned out to be even better. What Long Haochen and Kyer failed to imagine was that before long, their story would shake up the entire Union. It really was like what Chiu Yonghao had sigh, they had become the exemplar that everyone looked up to. Holy City As the sun set in the west, the sky gradually darkened. After the temple's great gathering every decade had ended, the holy city gradually settled down. As the capital and home front of the temple union, the prosperity here had never changed. The sun had set, which meant that everyone had finished their day of busy work. They could rest now. The nightlife in the holy city was very abundant. However, a strange film appeared in the city today. Just like the great temple's gathering recently, large masses of people flowed in the direction of the Alliance's great stadium. Hmm. Brother Zhang, what are you in a hurry for so late in the evening? Brother, haven't you seen the announcement the Union headquarters had posted? From today, they will be playing a magic film for 10 days in the Alliance's great stadium. It's said that the chairman and vice chairwoman have personally taken part in the acting. Magic film? What's that? That's a film and sound preserved using magic. The Union's treated this with such importance, so it would be worthwhile to watch. Let's go check it out. 
Similar conversations were held in the streets and alleyways of the Holy City. Coupled with the power of public announcements, the surroundings of the Alliance's great stadium was already filled with people before the sun and even set completely. The ten magic crystal screens that had been taken down had been reinstalled there. The screens currently shone brilliantly. The magic film would probably be played on them in a while. What would the magic film be? Did the chairman and vice chairwoman personally perform in the film? Will they be sparring with each other? But why is the union using magic to record it and show us? Basically every person experienced the same thoughts, but they had received no news of it beforehand. Their curiosity made them gather below the magic crystal screens and wait patiently. The sun had set completely and the magic crystal screens stood out even more in the dark night. People could even see it clearly from their distant rooftops. A loud voice rang out, the magic film will play very soon. Before it plays, you all need a simple explanation first. This magic film was created by the chairman, vice chairman and the demon hunters of the bright glimmer of light, before being edited by the mage temple. The entire process was to record the story that happened with chairman Long Houchen and vice chairwoman Kyer after they had fought against the demons. As a result, you all need a simple introduction to the background before the story begins. And that's the background. Chairman Long Houchen's heart was destroyed by the demon god emperor had he died. Vice chairwoman Kyer and the other demon hunters of the bright glimmer of hope left Modu with his corpse. This is where our story begins. Everyone must find it very strange that Chairman Long Houchen's heart had been destroyed and thus he had already died in the Star Demon Pagoda, so why was he able to become our chairman? Please watch the magic film and you will learn TE answer to that question. After the union was founded, it will become even more democratic. Every single one of you will be the owners of the union. As a result, we have the right to know what the first chairman of our new union had gone through. This is also the reason why this film was created. The union guarantees that everything that happens in this film had happened in the past. Chapter 784, Exemplar to Look Up to, 3 Throughout the history of the Temple Union, never had there been an important member's past presented so clearly before the common people. Not only did the message before the film interest the common people and draw them into the story, it also made them feel respect. In that moment, all of their eyes were glued to the magical crystal screens. This was the first time they had learned that the bright glimmer of hope that had performed brilliantly in the Temple's great gathering had once penetrated into the demons and destroyed two demon god pillars, even audaciously venturing to Modu and planning to kill the star demon god. It even took the demon god emperor to mobilize the three most powerful clans among the demons to deal with them. What would the magic film show? As everyone waited curiously, the film began to play. The ten magical crystal screens basically lit up with dazzling light at the same time. The resplendent gold light shocked everyone watching. The golden light gradually subsided and the first thing they saw was a small forest. A soft discussion immediately rose, look, isn't that the demon hunters of the bright glimmer of hope? That's Vice Chairwoman Kyer. Look, it's Vice Chairman Chen Inger. She's currently an auxiliary head of the spiritual temple. Look at that baldy. He's Sima Xian, the most powerful disciplined priest in the history of the priest temple. I still like that mage more. The phoenix technique he used during the temple's great gathering was just too awesome. Everyone's voices was drowned out by the sound of the film. Chen Inger sobbed painfully in the film as everyone surrounded Long Hao who lay on the ground. Kai er gently crouched down and looked at a blue ring on her finger. She gently took off the ring and lifted up Long Hao Chen's left hand, putting it on his ring finger. You dummy. Why did you return it to me? It already belongs to you forever, just like me heart. Kyer spoke very softly, but after being magnified by the film, everyone could hear it clearly. They immediately sensed the deep sorrow in Kyer's voice. Her feeling of despair immediately tugged on everyone's heartstrings, such that their discussions immediately stopped. They all watched the film quietly. Kyer raised her hand and slowly took off the eternal melody pendant from his neck. A golden skull stood out on the screen. When Kyer hung the eternal melody around her neck, everyone thought of the same question. What was that? Let's go, Kyer said. Afterwards, everyone became bedazzled. Dense, golden light appeared on the eternal melody, enveloping everyone. In the next moment, as the golden light rose, the film immediately became blurry. With a series of distortions, they moved to a different place. At this moment, a voiceover appeared, they were teleported to another realm, to a world within a divine tool. The golden skull was called the eternal melody, the key to opening the divine tool. The creator of the divine tool was. The voiceover ended there and the scene cleared up once more. Kyer said frantically, come out, hurry up. Just come out. A green light silently emerged from Long Houchen's golden foundation armor. The green light seemed very weak, almost like a wisp of smoke. A weak voice rang out of the wisp of light as well, he is already dead. So my pact with him is gradually dissipating. All I can do is to keep his soul maintained for seven days. But it also means that you have only the time of seven days. There is only one chance, and it lies in this tower of eternity. You must succeed as this tower's successor, and rely on the profound mysteries of light necromancy to possibly restore his soul and reforge his heart. If he manages to resurrect, my contract in him will reinstate as well, but otherwise, seven days later his soul will scatter, and be confined in this tower of eternity, bound for all eternity. So if you cannot resurrect him within seven days, just bring him out from here, at least that way his soul won't have to keep suffering here. 
As the voice stopped at this point, the green wisps disappeared. That. That voice is. Wang Yuan Yuan blankly said. I know. It's that girl from the illusory paradise. No mistake, that's her. Lin Exian bounced wildly. Grabbing Lin Exian's shoulder, Han Yu excitingly shouted, Yes, yes. Yi Xiaolei. It's her, she has a some kind of contract relationship with Captain, and is the one who came to our aid. So Captain has some hope of revival. There's hope. What shocked the audience the most was how Han Yu said there was hope in reviving their captain. He was already dead, so how was he supposed to be revived? And what was the profound mysteries of light necromancy? What repairing his heart? What inheritance of the Tower of Eternity? All of these mysteries confused the audience slightly. Does anyone has a rope or a chain? Kyer's call roused everyone from their pondering. Afterwards, they saw Kyer lift Long Haochen's corpse onto her back with the assistance of her companions, tying him down with a chain. When they saw this, a lot of people felt like there was something lodged in their throat. Even though a lot of people knew the demon hunt squads had done a lot for the Union, they only truly understood just how brutal the experiences that the demon hunters had to go through when they saw this film. Seven days. We only have a time of seven days, in this time, we must climb to the top of the Tower of Eternity and obtain the inheritance of the Holy Necromancer, Slumbering Calamity Alux. Kyer's voice rang out in the film and this name became embedded in the audience's minds. The Holy Necromancer, Slumbering Calamity Alux. What kind of existence was he? Before the audience had enough time to wonder about it, the scene changed again. Kyer had begun to lead the bright glimmer of hope to the Tower of Eternity to challenge it. There, the story and matters depicted in the film were slightly changed. In order to to immerse the audience better, the trials began on the first floor. The twelve powerful holy guards appeared before them. The demon hunters fell one by one. As they watched them sacrifice themselves to pave a path to Long Haochen's revival, tears began to pool up in the audience's eyes. In order to revive their captain, in order to revive Chairman Long Haochen, every single demon hunter from the bright glimmer of hope had given them all. The object that common people treated with most importance, life, had been offered up by them selflessly. Sima Xian fell, Chen Ying'er fell and Wang Yuan Yuan fell. No matter how they fell, their eyes would be filled with persistence and hope. The bright glimmer of hope climbed up the Tower of Eternity a floor at the time as the audience sat at the edge of the seat. Many of them had even dampened their clothes with tears unknowingly. However, they held their breaths, even unwilling to produce a single sound of weeping, afraid of missing even just a moment of the film. On the sixth floor of the Tower of Eternity, only Kyer continued fighting. She lifted the sickle of the God of Death in her hand high up into the air and faced the most difficult trial. Lin Exian's voice became the voiceover, the vice captain is using the power of the seven arts of the God of Death. Each art will make her lose one emotion. She. The simple voiceover brought even more shock to the audience. Following that was Kyer's unhesitant battle. The first art, death in childhood. The second art, death in purification. The third art, death scream. The fourth art, death God's kiss. The fifth art, death silent annihilation. The sixth art, death in journey. The audience witnessed the definition of strength. When Kaya used the sixth art of the seven arts of the god of death to finally defeat her opponent, a tremendous wave of cheers rang out from the crowd. There were even tears of joy. However, they failed to realize that this was just a start to their tears. Six-colored light appeared, tending to the wounds of the bright glimmer of hope. As their condition took a turn for the better, pulling some of them back from the jaws of death as a matter of fact, the crowd nervousness was overcome by great relief and ease. Did it finally end? Were they finally going to revive Chairman Long Haochen? Afterwards, an even brutal scene appeared. The Path to the Sky Kowtow after each step on the aerial passage. The voiceover, on the path to the sky, all powers were suppressed. Vice Chairwoman Kyer was reduced to the powers of an ordinary girl. The introduction was very simple, but it immediately allowed the audience to understand just what pressure Kyer was experiencing. Kyer advanced at an extremely steady pace. With each step, she would kneel down, kowtow and rise, before taking another step, kneeling down. This continued repetitively. The audience began to see sweat and gradually, they saw blood. Two trails of blood began to appear on the endless path to the sky, which deepened as they went. Gradually, a third trail of blood appeared as well from Kyer's forehead. The audience were ordinary people after all. Their feelings were much more tender than demon hunters. Even the bright glimmer of hope had cried at this sight, so the audience immediately broke into a sea of weeping. Many people cried painfully as they struggled to compose themselves. 50 stairs, 60 stairs, 70 stairs, 80 stairs. Those stairs were painful, and she had to staggeringly go on. Her body was already close to collapse, and the blood trails left on the ground started to form a puddle at the bottom of the stairs. Chapter 785, Entering Where the Eternal Heroes Slumber, I. In the film, the Kyer still kept going on, climbing without rest, despite close to collapsing. A deep force of incomparable scale seemed to be supporting her gradually weakening body. Bam! On the 112th stair, Kyer suddenly fell down, violently smashing the stairs on the ground. But her right arm still grasped the smooth surface of the stairs with the tips of her toes supporting herself on a step lower down, so that she wouldn't slip down. 
Blood covered the whole hem of her skirt, and as her tiptoes slided along the way, Kyer's face of originally extreme beauty had already become full of blood. Because her body was far too burdened, it was shaking violently. Only her eyes and look remained firm, resolute. With a violent gasp for breath, she barely managed to shift position to another stair, and kowtow once again in a bang. Don't continue. In the crowd, someone had called out and immediately, everyone began to call that out together. She climbed, she fainted. She climbed some more, she fainted some more. Kyer collapsed time after time, and climbed many again and again. When she had made it onto the 200th stair, she was already entirely covered in blood. This was already her seventh time falling unconscious on the path to the sky. Kyer's knees were already devoid of the slightest skin and flesh, her deep white bones already coming to sight. She was unaware that her fair white bone contorted all the time, and because of the excessive blood loss, her whole body was morbidly pale. Her life was fading away at an astonishing speed, yet no end of the path to the sky came to sight. From the film, Kyer's shape had been firmly embedded in the minds of the entire audience like concrete. The voiceover appeared once more, Vice Chairwoman Kyer fainted a total of seven times as she climbed the path to the sky over several days. The film has compressed this time. The audience's emotions could no longer be described with a simple word like shock. Some of the more frail females in the audience had even fainted from all the crying. Even the soldiers of the Union responsible for maintaining order choked on their sobs. This was the first time they learned that the will of humans could be this tough. This was also the first time they had truly witnessed what the demon hunters had gone through. Just when the audience was about to collapse from their emotional burden, a gate of light finally appeared on the path to the sky. When Kaya used her entire strength to finally enter the gate of light, the entire audience choked back their sobs and cheered out. The beautiful seventh floor of the Tower of Eternity appeared, and so did the coffin in which Ilux slumbered. Indeed, to ordinary people, they possessed a powerful, natural fear of the undead. However, after the emotional upheaval earlier, they were no longer as shocked and they saw Ilux in his undead form. Ilux said that he needed a beating heart to revive Long Haochen. When Kaya reversed her sickle of the God of Death and stabbed it towards her own chest, screams had almost filled the entire city. When Ilux said to Kaya that he wanted to test Long Haochen, basically the entire crowd supported him, because they all had strong doubts towards Long Haochen. Did their chairman deserve everything that Kyer had done for him? Having awakened, Long Haochen faced Alux's test. When he said that he was willing to relinquish his beliefs to save Kyer, the whole audience surged. They finally understood that Kyer was not the only one who was honest to his feelings. Their chairman was willing to give up on his beliefs, something even more precious than his life, for his most beloved. In that moment, Kyer and Long Haochen's status rose to an indescribable height in their minds. Were beliefs, undead and so on still important anymore? No, before true love, it seemed everything was insignificant. Especially when Alux uttered, you win, a cheer erupted among the entire audience once more. It had to be mentioned that the effects of the magic film had completely exceeded the original expectations of the person who suggested this in the first place, Mage Temple Head Li Shengji. It had also exceeded the imaginations of everyone who supported this idea. The audience had almost gone crazy from the magic film. They chanted Long Haochen and Kyer's names to release their emotions. With the groundwork complete, it was much easier for the audience to accept Alux's story. Eluxa's sorrowful experiences, as well as his understanding in the end from Long Haochen and Kyer and his self-purification shocked the audience deeply. The film ended on Eluxa's lofty words, holding all lives, plucking all stars, the world without someone like me. Now, they were gradually getting deeper into the night. However, no one left. After a moment of silence and peace, Long Haochen, Kyer, and the bright glimmer of hope became what they chanted. That was a sleepless night in the holy city. The Southern Mountain Pass. It was currently noon, as well as the time for lunch. In an inconspicuous inn, the lively conversation made it extremely noisy. Are you going tonight again? No nah, I can't. I can't go. A girl shook her head firmly and turned down the suggestion of the man who shared the same table as her. Why not? It'll only be broadcasted for ten days. You won't be able to see it afterwards. I can't go anymore. If I go again, I'll end up crying myself blind. Vice Chairman Kyer is just too pitiful. The demons are just too despicable. If it weren't for my poor aptitude, I'd join the army as well and go kill the enemies on the battlefield. Sigh, exactly right. Let alone a girl like you, even a man like me would cry every time I see it. It's just too touching. No wonder the chairman and vice chairwoman can possess such a cultivation at such a young age. The difficulties they have gone through is something we can never imagine. Exactly. That slumbering calamity Alux is pretty pitiful as well. Who would have thought that such a powerful necromancer like him had been forced into his state all because of reality? Yeah, who's without fault? And didn't he repent in the end? And he was purified by Vice Chairwoman Kyer. I only knew after watching the film that undead can think for themselves and are intelligent. They don't just thrive off slaughter. Similar conversations basically filled the streets of the entire Southern Mountain Pass. It was not just the Southern Mountain Pass. The magic film had been broadcasted in the Holy City and six great forts as well. The other cities further in were still waiting for their magic crystal screens to be delivered. 
After all, there were not a lot of magic crystal crowns. There were only a few cities who could set them up. After the first wave of screenings in the holy city and the six great forts, the magic crystal screens were dismantled and transported to other cities further inland. Throughout the history of the Temple Union, or perhaps the history of all humans, there had never been a matter with such a great influence. Spreading under the word of mouth, not only did Kyer and Long Houchen gradually become exemplar that everyone looked up to, they were close to becoming a kind of belief. It had gotten so bad that after a discussion between Long Houchen and the members of the Union, they had decided to stop the film from being played in the Union. However, the experiences of him, Kyer and the bright glimmer of hope would continue to influence several generations of the Union. Just when Long Houchen and Kyer had become people that everyone looked up to, they had instead arrived at the night's sacred mountains under the accompaniment of Yang Haohan. This was already the third time Long Houchen had come to the night's sacred mountain. He held very deep feelings for this holy land of the knights. The first time he had come here, he left with Haoyue. The second time he had come here, he left with Star King. After over a decade, he had gone from an ignorant boy to the chairman of the union. He had gone through a lot, given up a lot and gained a lot as well. When they were around a thousand meters away from the mist that enveloped the knight's sacred mountain, the dense aura of light there began to churn. Faint, golden mist actually drifted towards the three of them uncontrollably. Long Hao Chen experienced a deep feeling of intimacy. The light element in the faint, golden mist rushed to him like a child had found its home. Raising his left hand, Long Hao Chen smiled slightly. The gentle light element began to revolve around him automatically. Throughout the entire process, he did not release any of his own power. It had all happened naturally. Yang Haohan who also happened to be a powerhouse of the light and a divine knight could not help but sigh in amazement at this sight. Long Hao Chen really did cultivate his light element spiritual energy to the limit. Even the light element treated him as a source of power. Long Hao Chen suddenly raised his head and gazed into the depth of the mist. Immediately, the mist parted automatically like soldiers who had just received an order, forming a path. Three disabled old men quickly arrived where they were. The three old men were immediately surprised at the shock of the parting mist. This was the first time they had witnessed something like that. However, when they saw Yang Haohan, they relaxed. To their greater surprise, the person who had influenced the mist of the mountain was not the divine knight of defense and planning. Instead, it was the young man by his side. The knight's sacred mountain was basically cut off from the rest of the world. Although some of the elders here had seen Long Hao Chen before, it was only a small number of them. At the very least, it was the first time these three had seen him. Greetings, Temple Head Yang, the three elders approached them and performed a standard knight salute to Yang Haohan. Yang Haohan and Long Hao Chen returned their gesture with the same salute at the same time. I must bother the elders. Please take us to the sealed cavern, as Yang Haohan said that, he took out an insignia. The insignia in his hand was completely sculpted from golden crystal. There were several inscriptions in the ancient elvish language. Upon seeing the insignia, the elders bowed once more, before walking up and surrounding Long Haochen, Yang Haohan and Kyer. They each took out a golden insignia as well. Chapter 786, Entering Where the Eternal Heroes Slumber, 2 Golden light flickered as each insignia released six symbols upon being activated by the elders. A total of eighteen symbols appeared from the three insignia, revolving around everyone they shone with blinding light. Afterwards, a huge, golden swirl enveloped all six of them. The mist in the surroundings churned violently and in the next moment, they vanished. The current Long Haochen was no longer the same as the past. He could sense an extremely large magic array within the knight's sacred mountain. It was possible to say that the entire mountain was created because of the magic array. The only way to understand the secrets here was to be familiar with the magic array, or have someone serve as a guide. The golden light subsided and they had appeared in another place. It was also a place that gave Long Haochen a sense of deja vu. They were inside of a cavern, and in its walls, blocks of precious stones were inlaid. An insipid golden light illuminated the entire cavern. Inside the cavern, the light element was not strong. It could not be compared to the knight's sacred mountain at all. It was just a little stronger than outside at most. This cavern was enormous. The roof was 60 meters high, the cave had an irregular circular shape as far as the eye could see, and its diameter was at least 300 meters long, just like a sort of enormous public square. There were quadrilateral shapes on the ground. These shapes were closely linked with each other, forming a huge rings which grew closer towards the center. Each shape was covered with dim, ancient elvish language. Seeing this, Long Hao Chen finally remembered where this place was. Wasn't this the cavern where he had been teleported away through an array, which allowed him to find house? He had never thought he would come back here again. Yang Hao Han nodded at the three elders, thank you for leading the way. Please return to your posts. The elders performed a salute towards Yang Hao Han. Yang Hao Han arrived before Long Hao Chen and said, Hao Chen, the sealed cavern can only let in a single person at a time. Kaya and I will remain here waiting for you. These seniors possess extremely rich experiences and they have also slumbered there for several millennia, so they might be rather strange. You must be careful with what you do. Just in case the situation develops beyond your control, use spiritual energy to activate the insignia in your hand. You will be automatically transported back here. As he said that, he passed the insignia sculpted from golden crystal to Long Haochen. 
Long Haochun accepted the insignia and nodded at Yang Haohan. Afterwards, he made his way to the center of the cavern. There was a ring around 9 meters wide. The symbol in the center was the largest. However, as soon as he began making his way over, he was stopped by the three elders who had led them here. One of the elders said to Yang Haohan rather hesitantly, Temple Head Yang, that does seem to abide by the rules. Only you can enter the sealed cavern. Your. Yang Haohan smiled, I forgot to introduce him to you. This is Long Haochun, a new divine knight of our night temple. He obtained the recognition of the divine throne of eternity and creation and was bestowed the title of divine knight of glory and leadership by the temple. He's also the leader of our six divine knights. In the future, the sacred mountain insignia will be in his possession. The three elders became shocked at the same time. They immediately began to look at Long Haochun differently. They were all old members of the night temple, so of course they knew what the divine throne of eternity and creation meant. Long Haochun knew the three elders were still in some disbelief. With a smile, a gentle spiritual energy emerged from his body and enveloped the three elders. The pure light element made the three elders all shudder. In the next moment, an indescribably nice feeling filled every inch of their body. Even their missing limbs experienced the same sensation, albeit missing. Their spiritual energy all surged out and in just a few seconds, their spiritual energy had grown by an amount that was even more than what they would achieve with several months of cultivation. Now, the elders no longer had any doubts. Although they were still filled with shock, they moved out of the way with a flash and saluted Long Haochun politely. Long Haochun arrived in the center of the huge symbol with the sacred mountain insignia. He closed his eyes slowly as he quietly sensed everything in the surroundings. In the moment he had closed his eyes, his mental force immediately expanded. Whether it was Yang Haohan, Kair or the three elders, they all felt that their consciousness blurred out momentarily. This time, even Yang Haohan could not help but show shock. What a powerful mental force. Even if it was demon god emperor, it was impossible for him to understand the interior of the sacred mountains within the great array of the knight's sacred mountain. The great array contained extremely powerful light element as well as the secrets of countless other arrays. Many of these secrets originated from the ancient elves. Even the knight temple that was directly in control of the knight's sacred mountain did not completely understand the secrets of the great array. However, Long Haochun's mental force met no obstruction at all as he stood there. In just a short while, he had enveloped the entire mountain. As the person in possession of the light god physique and light god domain, how could any light element array reject him? It was just like a girl who had opened her heart up completely, allowing him to study it as he wished. Very soon, Long Haochun felt like he knew everything he wanted to know. After studying it, Long Haochun discovered that the knight's sacred mountain itself was composed of nine light element arrays, which were broken up into a central array and eight outer arrays. The nine arrays then formed a completely new array. The arrays had been cast down with such complexity that he had never seen anything like this before. And, the array had an extremely powerful restricting ability. Even if powerhouses of the ninth step intruded this place, they would probably suffer greatly at the hands of the array. There were many light element magical beasts that lived on the knight's sacred mountain. They were also the source of mounts for young knights of the temple. However, the true secrets of the mountain lay in its interior. The location where he currently stood was the fundamental point of the central formation among the nine formations. Controlling the great array had to be done here, while the sacred mountain insignia in his hand was the key to unlocking the array's full power, or to open up the array. Raising the insignia over his head, Long Haochun slowly poured spiritual energy into it. As soon as pure, light element spiritual energy had entered the insignia, it immediately shone brightly with golden light. The insignia seemed to produce a faint hum and afterwards, the nine arrays in the mountain actually all responded. A golden ripple expanded below Long Haochun, lighting up the ancient elvish symbols. In just a few seconds, all of the ancient elvish symbols in the center of the mountain had lit up. The symbols all seemed to be revived. As golden light began to flow, some of the rings of golden symbols rotated clockwise, while others rotated anti-clockwise. Golden symbols began to appear in the air as well, around the sacred mountain insignia in Long Haochun's hand. Yang Haohan had told Long Haochun before they arrived here that once he had activated the sacred mountain insignia, he would be able to sense the sealed cavern. Now, Long Haochun could vividly sense that the sacred mountain insignia had offered him several different auras. One was to activate defenses, one was to activate attacks and the last one was the way to the sealed cavern. With a thought, the insignia activated and a powerful beam of light suddenly erupted from below Long Haochun, connecting with the ceiling. Long Haochun was completely enveloped by the beam of light. The light element was so dense that it was almost tangible. Even Kair who possessed powers of purification felt a sense of sluggishness that almost immobilized her. Not only did activating the array of the Knight's Sacred Mountain require the Sacred Mountain insignia, it also required sufficiently strong abilities of the light element. If it was any other element, they would all fail. If a darkness element powerhouse had managed to steal the Sacred Mountain insignia and had made it in here, then there would only be two outcomes. The first one would be if they were powerful enough, such that they could break out of the array and leave. The second outcome was much more likely, which was being torn apart by the light element. The beam of light lasted for half a minute before slowly vanishing. When the beam of light subsided, Long Haochun had vanished. Surrounded by dense light element, he traveled a very short distance through space. 
Through the investigations Long Houchen had performed earlier, he already knew the exact location of the sealed cavern. However, the location had been completely suppressed by the array of the Knight's Sacred Mountain. Even with his current level of cultivation, he had no confidence in breaking into there without the Sacred Mountain insignia. This was below the Knight's Sacred Mountain. The golden light in the surroundings gradually dispersed. The first thing that Long Houchen felt was a chill. He could feel the coldness even with his cultivation, which demonstrated just how powerful the coldness was. It was definitely not just a matter of temperature. Everything in the surroundings cleared up. Appearing before Long Houchen was a corridor paved with gray rock. The surroundings were pitch black, but Long Houchen personally shone with a faint golden light, enough to illuminate several meters away. The air in the corridor was extremely foul, while the coldness surged over from up ahead. Long Houchen raised a hand and a gentle, white flame immediately appeared. With a gentle flick of his finger, a white flame flew ahead. It was not particularly large, but wherever it went, it burned away the foulness in the air. It was not important whether the air was breathable or not. He just disliked this foulness. At the same time, he could see the situation up ahead clearly under the illumination of the white flame. The corridor slowly extended downwards, so the white flame directly landed on the wall up ahead. It was not extinguished and instead burned on the wall like a lantern. However, it did not burn the gray rock bricks. Under the light from the flames, Long Houchen made his way forward. The sacred mountain insignia in his hand shone with a faint golden light, which served as a source of light to a certain degree. Chapter 787, Entering Where the Eternal Heroes Slumber, 3 The corridor was longer than Long Houchen had expected it to be. The deeper he traveled, the more obvious the coldness became, to the point where he needed to activate his spiritual energy to protect himself. A warm aura expanded from his chest. Warmth, coupled with the aura of life, filled his entire body. It only circulated through his body once and Long Houchen could no longer sense the coldness anymore. He could not help but smile. This was Yi Xiaolei's power. Ever since Yi Xiaolei had fused with him and become his intelligent spiritual stove, she had been sleeping. However, Long Houchen could clearly sense the changes to his body after fusing with Yi Xiaolei. When he sensed that a brand new heart had grown under the power of the Heart of Eternity, he suddenly realized that the original Heart of Eternity had not truly revived him. Perhaps, the Heart of Eternity could continually sustain his life, but without a heart, he was not a real human? From a certain perspective, he was no different from being an undead, just a special undead with the Light God domain. However, after his heart had regrown, Long Houchen could clearly sense that Yi Xiaolei's power had fused perfectly with the Heart of Eternity. Not only did he possess a new heart now, it was much more powerful than before as well. However, what he found strange was that his heart had evolved, but the boost to his spiritual energy from his heart of eternity had vanished. His internal spiritual energy was around 500 to 600,000, but that did not include the 90,000 that came from the heart of eternity. The coldness did not affect him, so Long Houchen sped up his pace. Indeed, he never treated the eternal heroes as a threat in the first place, not only because of his trust in them, but due to his self-confidence as well. With his current cultivation, the divine throne of eternity and creation in Haoyue, he had complete confidence in himself even when he faced against the demon god emperor. After walking for almost 300 meters, he finally arrived at the end of the corridor. An arched gate appeared before Long Houchen. The gate had two panels, with many people sculpted on them. At a closer glance, it seemed like the battle between the humans and demons back then, while two simple words were written on the gate. They were, Eternal Heroes. Many of the markings on the stone gate had already become modeled, which showed its age. Despite the quality of the material, the passage of time still left behind a clear trace. In order to protect the Alliance, these Eternal Heroes had slumbered here for 6,000 years. Even if they spent most of their time asleep, there would always be times when they awoke. They had to endure the darkness and loneliness here. Compared to them, were his contributions of any significance? When he thought up to there, Long Houchen could not help but bow deeply towards the words written on the stone door. At the same time, he secretly made up his mind that no matter how difficult it was, he had to rectify the existence of these 63 eternal heroes. Upon standing up straight once more, he slowly lodged the sacred mountain insignia into the only depression in the stone gate. It fit perfectly. He could not help but admire the craftsmanship of the person who made all of this. Ding! A long, crisp sound rang out, just like someone had struck a bottle made out of magic crystal. The pleasant sound echoed through the corridor as a strange feeling cleared Long Houchen's head. Afterwards, the gate began to shine with a deep, green light. Only the sacred mountain insignia remained colden. The gate slowly slid apart to the two sides. The stone gate was probably a meter thick. It had already existed there for several thousand years, but it opened with such ease. Without a doubt, not only was the gate crafted with great skill, there were magic arrays engraved within as well. An aura at least ten times colder than before surged forth, immediately colliding into Long Houchen's body. Surprisingly, the air inside was not foul at all. It was just extremely cold. The coldness even froze Long Houchen's breath. Before him was a pitch black cavern. No matter how great Long Houchen's cultivation was, it was impossible for him to see anything in a completely pitch black place without any source of light. However, he did not light up flame this time. Instead, he bowed politely and said, The Divine Knight of Glory and Leadership, Long Houchen, of the Knight Temple pays respects to the predecessor. 
He did not take a single step into the pitch black cave. His voice was filled with respect from the bottom of his heart. His voice echoed in the cavern and corridor. Perhaps due to being too closely spaced, his voice echoed for quite some time. Long Hao Chun continued to bow. He showed no intention of changing his posture, maintaining it steadily and quietly. These seniors who had laid down their lives for the alliance and then endured 6,000 years of loneliness were definitely worthy enough for him to do that. Ivy am very curious why a young man's come, but your two gestures of respect has given me a great impression of you. A rather strange voice appeared from the cavern. The voice seemed rather stiff. It would halt slightly every two or three words, which was why it seemed strange. Long Hao Chen slowly stood up straight and struck his left chest with his right first, performing the knight's salute once more, for the sake of the alliance, for the sake of mankind, the predecessors have done many things. It only makes sense for me to show respect. The stiff voice rang out once more, did you just say you're the divine knight of glory of leadership? Where'd that kiddo called Yang Hao go? He seems to be nearing a hundred years in age. Has he died to the hands of the demons? If I recall correctly, he should be the divine knight of defense and planning. Long Hao Chen said, Temple Head Yang isn't dead. He's just handed me the right to communicate with the seniors. The voice grew slightly more serious, looks like something's happened to the alliance. It's the first time that a divine knight of glory and leadership has appeared for the knight temple, and there's a special case where our existence has been passed down without someone passing away. Tell me, why have you come this time? Hmm, hold on. Before you tell me, prove to me your status as a divine knight. From your brimming vitality, you should be in your prime. Has the knight temple gained a genius it's never seen before? Long Hao Chen said politely, Junior's name is Long Hao Chen. I will be 26 in three months time. What I inherited is the power of the divine throne of eternity and creation out of the six great divine thrones. What? The stiff voice suddenly became elated. Afterwards, Long Hao Chen felt a tremendous pressure. The pressure did not push him outwards. Instead, it pulled him in. However, Long Hao Chen remained standing there without moving at all. He did not even unleash his spiritual energy outside his body. Scrape, scrape. A strange sound rang out and a green flame lit up near Long Hao Chen. The flame did not burn particularly brilliantly, but Long Hao Chen did find that it was rather difficult for his eyes to adjust now that light had suddenly appeared in this pitch black place. The green fire had appeared in someone's hand. The person stood over two meters tall and he was extremely skinny. His gray robes were tattered in many places, revealing his ashen skin. His eyes moved about stiffly as a gray light seemed to flash through them. He was not a human. More correctly, he should have been a zombie. However, his body was maintained very well, without any part rotting. He slowly approached Long Hao Chen. The scraping sound from before came from when he walked. His movements were very stiff, while his knees could no longer bend. As a result, he walked very slowly. However, Long Hao Chen could sense that this corpse was filled with an aura of danger. He had drawn this conclusion through his sense according to his cultivation. In terms of age, he remained the same when he had died as he had been turned into a corpse, so around 50 to 60 years old. He did not appear to be too old. Any other person would have probably begun to scream in fright if they came across a zombie in such a dark cavern. However, when Long Hao Chen saw him, he only showed even more respect. Hello, senior. Long Hao Chen bowed politely. Let me see the divine throne of eternity and creation, the zombie said excitedly. After a slight hesitation, Long Hao Chen said, Senior, this might not be the most appropriate place for me to do that. I'm afraid of affecting the slumber of the other seniors here. I might even end up having them. The light element hidden within the divine throne of eternity and creation was so powerful that once the super divine tools powers were unleashed here, it would be highly likely that these eternal heroes would be harmed no matter how powerful they were. However, the zombie smiled instead. Kakaka, young man, are you thinking your powers of light will harm us? Although I hate how I am right now very much, I just say that the necromancer who created the scroll of spiritual transformation is the greatest genius I know of. Not only did his scroll turn us info undead, it's retained the element of our powers when we were still alive. Do you think that as the founders of the six great temples, any of us would possess the darkness element? Long Hao Chen gained a new recognition of the holy necromancer, slumbering calamity Alux. No wonder the scroll of spiritual transformation was labeled as a super forbidden spell. If that's the case, please be careful, senior. Long Hao Chen took a few steps back and his eyes lit up first. A gentle, golden light appeared in his clear eyes. Afterwards, a holy aura filled with dignity immediately expanded from him. A huge silhouette of light appeared behind him, except in the narrow corridor, the silhouette of the divine throne of eternity and creation was unable to appear properly. Chapter 788, Is this a test, or is it imparting knowledge? I. The mist on the night's sacred mountain began to surge violently. Dense, golden mist churned within its vicinity. The violent reaction immediately shocked all the elders on the mountain. What shocked them even more was what happened next. The surging mist slowly rose up into the air, circulating in a clockwise direction. In just a short while, it formed a huge, golden spiral. The area that the night's sacred mountain covered was rather expansive, while the golden swirl in the air occupied almost the same area. That was how enormous it was. 
Even someone at the Knight's Temple from the dragon-resisting mountain pass would be able to witness this wondrous sight. A milky white beam of light rose up into the sky from the center of the Knight's sacred mountain. Afterwards, the huge divine throne of eternity and creation appeared out of nowhere in the holy, dignified aura. Combined with the golden swirl, it unleashed its glow as a super-divine tool. A huge throne appeared in the air. The throne was a translucent white as it shone with nine beautiful colors. The exquisite sculpting on the back of the throne gave off an indescribable sense of beauty. On top was the celestial bodies, in the center were birds and beasts, while the part connecting the back to the body were the phenomena of nature. On the armrests were the sculptures of a divine gigantic dragon and a twelve-winged angel. Just the rings of nine colored light it had released were so dazzling. Under the influence of its aura, the golden mist became pure and transparent. Golden light flickered in Long Houchen's eyes as he made a gesture with both hands, as if drawing it in. Ding! A lengthy sound filled a range of thousands of kilometers. The divine throne of eternity and creation split up in the air, turning into thirteen balls of light which rushed into the night's sacred mountain. Before the eternal hero zombie, something that even made his soul fire leap about madly happened. The thirteen balls of white light landed on Long Houchen. They were the thirteen stars of eternity. A huge, transparent gemstone appeared on his chest, with beautiful, nine-stoned crown on his head. A translucent white mask with golden gemstones for eyes appeared. On his left shoulder was a huge dragon's head, while on his right shoulder was a twelve-winged angel. He was covered in translucent, white armor that gave off a supreme aura. When Long Houchen became clad in it completely, his aura underwent an overwhelming transformation. The coldness in the cavern was swept away. Only warmth remained now. Pulses of powerful spiritual energy awakened in the cavern at this moment as well, as eyes that flickered with soul fires of different colors slowly opened. The aura of the divine throne of eternity and creation had awakened them. It had awakened these eternal heroes who had once laid down their lives for humanity. The zombie Long Houchen had been speaking to earlier was completely speechless now. His body now trembled uncontrollable, while the emotions in his soul fire was completely replaced by excitement. Thirteen balls of light. It's thirteen balls of light. Yes, this is the divine throne of eternity and creation. It really is. Heavens, you still care for us humans after all. I finally waited for this day. I finally waited for the day when the divine throne of eternity and creation accepts a master. Figures began to appear behind him one after another, as soul fires gradually began to burn brighter in confusion. They had clearly heard what the first eternal hero had said and when they witnessed the armor of eternity on Long Houchen, all 63 soul fires became submerged in excitement and passion. Three balls of light, green, seven colored and white, revolving around Long Houchen's body slowly. Long Houchen carried his sword of eternity on his back, embedded between the two huge wings. Due to the armor of eternity, the corridor seemed even more narrow now and he had become much larger as well. In particular, his pair of wings directly brushed against the walls on both sides. Come in, child. Come in quickly. The zombie that had spoken to Long Houchen earlier waved his hand frantically. Only then did Long Houchen enter the cavern in a flash. The coldness in the cavern had been completely overwhelmed by the aura of the divine throne of eternity and creation. When he entered the cavern, he immediately illuminated the entire place, like a sun had appeared in a world of darkness. After understanding the situation of the cavern, Long Houchen felt like his heart was being torn to shreds. Within the cavern where the 63 eternal heroes slumbered were 63 coffins made of rock. Aside from that, there was nothing else really. A vague aura radiated from below. Although it was suppressed by the aura of the divine throne of eternity and creation, Long Houchen could still sense it. These heroes who had once given up everything for humanity were actually slumbering in a place like this. It made Long Houchen extraordinarily furious. He said nothing, but his lips under his mask were pressed together tightly. As he looked at the zombies, he slowly unfurled the wings on his back. Seniors, I am Long Houchen. I must repent to you for the sake of the Temple Union. As he said that, he actually just knelt down on the floor in his armor of eternity left behind by the Creator God, bowing his head to the 63 undead before him. The white armor was so holy, while the crown on his head was so beautiful as well. However, in that moment, he just knelt and bowed for these 63 predecessors. He did not do that for himself, but for the Union and all of humanity. Long Houchen's actions had shocked all the eternal heroes present. They looked at each other as the passion in their soul fires gradually subsided. It was replaced by confusion and they were slightly touched as well. The human who had gained the recognition of the divine throne of eternity and creation was actually kneeling for them. He was. Child, what are you doing, hurry up and get up, the first eternal hero said in a hurry. He wanted to lift him up, but when he sensed the holiness from the armor of eternity, his action was futile. Long Houchen raised his head slowly, but he continued to kneel there. His mask shot up as tears pooled in his eyes, predecessors, seniors, you deserve a bow from me. You deserve a bow from everyone who still lives in the Union. Six thousand years ago, you use your lives to chase away the demons. For the sake of the Alliance, you even went as far as to be reincarnated as undead, slumbering for six thousand years quietly in this cold cavern. Although I don't know who made that decision back then, but as the chairman of the new Union, I can't let this continue. Mankind would be doing you a disservice if we did. 
As he said that, he lowered his head once more and brought it to the ground three times firmly. Only then did the 63 eternal heroes understand Long Houchen. In that moment, they all fell silent. A woman said, this child's so honest that he's cute. Did the person who gave you the key not tell you that we chose to remain like this? And the arrangements here were according to our requests. Ha! Huh. Long Houchen was dumbfounded. He raised his head and immediately sensed good-willed smiles from the soul fires of the 63 eternal heroes. Dumb child, get up. The eternal hero who had spoken to Long Houchen first chuckled. Although the muscles on his face could not move, Long Houchen could clearly sense the good intentions he had behind laughing. Although Long Houchen had made a fool of himself, he had still managed to move these seniors with his sincerity. Only then did Long Houchen stand up. He said rather awkwardly, I thought. What did you think? Did you think that we were abandoned? The female's voice rang out once more and an eternal hero stepped forward. When she made her way over, the others clearly formed a path for her. She must have possessed quite the status among the eternal heroes. Although she was now a zombie, Long Houchen could still see her beauty when she was still alive. Her face was not gray like most other eternal heroes. Instead, it was white, extremely pale white. However, her skin was clearly still quite supple. Only her blood-red eyes seemed extremely terrifying. This isn't just a cavern beneath the night's sacred mountain, but also a place above the mouth of a frost spring. We need to use the coldness here to prevent our bodies from rotting. Every coffin has a small hole connected to the mouth of the spring, which will draw in the coldness. Otherwise, what you'll be seeing wouldn't be zombies, but skeletons. As for anything else, would we, a bunch of deceased people, find use in them? However, we then discovered that the coldness of the frost spring could let our powers grow and stabilize our soul fires, to prevent it from being extinguished so easily. That's why we're able to survive until now. Although we're still close to our end, we can last a little longer. So that was what had happened. Long Houchen understood the secrets here now. I'm Xu Yongxiao, basically the leader of the people here. The last time someone came was 30 years ago. Back then, that kid called Yang Haohan came here as a replacement for the original temple head. Tell us, what's happened in the 30 years outside? The eternal heroes had all surrounded Long Houchen now. Most of them had a good impression for this young man who had inherited the divine throne of eternity and creation. Although Long Houchen had made a fool of himself earlier with his sincerity, but these seniors who had just awakened were obviously in a good mood seeing how he recognized them and did not reject them. Long Houchen nodded and explained everything he knew that had happened to the Temple Alliance in the three decades to as much detail as possible. He went into particular detail regarding the previous Holy War and the newly founded Temple Union. Chapter 789, Is this a test, or is it imparting knowledge? 2. As he did that, Xu Yongxiao asked him questions several times and Long Houchen answered them one by one. He had only just learned that while these seniors had been slumbering here, they still knew a little about the major matters that had happened in the past 6,000 years on the Shunma Dalu, because a temple head of the Night Temple would come here with the Sacred Mountain insignia once every few decades to bring them news. Good. What a good temple union. It's finally succeeded. Unfortunately, we can't leave here so easily, or I would have gone and made trouble for those kiddos a long time ago. For the sake of their own interests, they've ignored strengthening the alliance. At least they haven't come to this realization too late. Xu Yongxiao actually supported the founding of the new union very much. From what she said, it seemed like she already had mentioned something similar to this when Yang Haohan visited 30 years earlier. At this moment, an old man arrived beside Xu Yongxiao. He asked Long Haochen, Child, you said earlier that the Night Temple has gathered all six divine knights now? Long Haochen nodded now, Yes, the Night Temple is now filled with talent. We should be in our strongest state right now. Including me, the six divine thrones all have their masters. Good, that's fantastic. The old man was clearly rather emotional, in the past, when I decided to gather the strength of humanity to create the five divine thrones, I once swore an oath, that when humanity is in control of all six divine thrones, it will be the best time for us to fight back against the demons. Looks like the heavens hasn't forsaken us. Just when our soul fires are about to disperse, you've brought us this good news, allowing us to witness the final moment when humanity fights back. Our six thousand years of slumber, our six thousand years of waiting underground has all be worth it. Xu Yongxiao introduced this person to Long Haochen, this is Xiao Hua, old man Xiao. When the alliance was first founded, he was the first temple head of the Knights Temple. It was also him who held his ground and persuaded everyone to create the five divine thrones. You can say he's the real ancestor of your Knight Temple. Old man Xiao is farsighted. Many of his decisions were proven to be correct later on. Long Haochen performed a salute in a hurry, greetings, ancestor. Xiao Hua said seriously, child, I want to hear the history of your growth. In the past, I had personally witnessed the might of the divine throne of eternity and creation and I had personally witnessed its descent into the human world. I had said in the past that with the existence of this super-divine tool, it means that the heavens hasn't abandoned us humans. However, I never understood just what kind of powerhouse could receive its recognition. I even believed that its existence was more symbolic than anything. I never thought that there would finally be a day when a knight truly becomes its master. I'm very curious about the history of your growth and I'm very curious about how the divine throne of eternity and creation accepted you as its master. Even until now, Long Haochen had not mentioned the matter of asking the eternal heroes to leave and fight. These people were all the true heroes of humanity, as well as the ancestors of the six great temples. 
Before he had come here, Yang Haohan had said that he had to gain their recognition before mentioning any request. They had already slumbered here for 6,000 years, so no one knew how they would react if they were asked to emerge from here. At the same time, they could react very emotionally, or even be unreasonable. Long Haochen could tell from what Yang Haohan had told him that a past temple head of the Knights Temple must had suffered under these eternal heroes before. Yang Haohan did mention exactly what had happened, but Long Haochen had always treated these seniors cautiously. However, even until now, he did not find anything strange about these eternal heroes. Actually, he was unaware that his attitude played a great role in all of it. He was different from the previous temple heads who had come here. As divine knights to be in possession of the sacred mountain insignia, as the greatest divine knights of the night temple, these temple heads would be in their fifties or sixties at the very least. And, as they grew in power, their authority would grow accordingly. They would naturally develop a mentality and attitude of someone in power. After coming here, they would feel some repulsion when these eternal heroes would refer to them as a child and even rebuke them rudely sometimes. No matter how polite they were, they were nowhere as polite as Long Haochen earlier. Long Haochen was different. He was young in the first place, only in his twenties. Although he was in control of the Temple Union, he did not have any particular desire for authority, nor had he actively order people around a lot. Coupled with his admiration from the bottom of his heart for these eternal heroes, it was possible to say that he was far more sincere than all the Temple heads who had come here in the past. Obviously, the eternal heroes would gain a great impression of him. Yes. After answering politely, Long Haochen began to narrate his growth. He went into great detail, explaining how his father taught him when he was young, and then how his strength increased bit by bit and became a demon hunter, leading the bright glimmer of hope into accumulating merit. He also went into detail about how his strength broke through under fortuitous circumstances. He did not even hide the secret of the Tower of Eternity. He mentioned it all. When he mentioned how he died in battle and Kyer had taken him into the Tower of Eternity to revive him, these eternal heroes who had lived for over 6,000 years could not help but become interested. Especially when they heard about Alexa's story, they were far more emotional than the common people who saw the film within the Union. After all, the age when they lived was extremely close to Alux's era. How could they not become emotional when they heard the process and reason of Alux becoming the slumbering calamity? When he mentioned the process of gaining the recognition of the divine throne of eternity in creation, Long Haochen did not hide anything either. He went into great detail, especially when he spoke about how he turned the situation around and defeated the Angel of Eternity in battle. A Scion of Light. What a good Scion of Light. It's been a very long time since this bag of bones has exercised. Young man, would you like to spar with me? Long Haochen had never thought that after explaining his own history, Xiao Huo would actually ask him for a spar. Long Haochen subconsciously assumed this was a test for the seniors, so he obviously did not shy away from it. He saluted Xiao Huo politely, before saying, Please give me guidance, predecessor. The other eternal heroes slowly separated in the surroundings, giving Long Haochen and Xiao Huo enough space. The arrangements inside the cavern were simple, but it was large. It was at least a third the size of the temple's great stadium. Of course, this definitely was not large enough for powerhouses like Long Haochen and Xiao Hua to unleash their powers. But since it was just a spar, they would obviously hold back their powers and avoid destroying this place. Long Haochen did not draw the Sword of Eternity on his back. Instead, he kept his hands separate to his sides, condensing a huge golden sword in each. They were basically the same as the Sword of Eternity. Witnessing the young man's sincere actions, the spectating eternal heroes could not help but nod. Xiao Hua was extremely large, but also extremely stiff. When he stood before Long Haochen, Long Haochen felt a great pressure weighing on his heart. Was this a pressure form his soul? Long Haochen was very surprised. His mental force had risen to an extremely powerful level upon obtaining the divine throne of eternity and creation and fusing with Yi Xiaolei. Even though it could not rival the demon god emperor, he was definitely the greatest among humans. However, before Xiao Hua, his mental force gave him no advantage at all. Instead, he was suppressed. However, Long Haochen was still Long Haochen after all. After momentary surprise, he understood why. Xiao Hua's soul force was not necessarily stronger than his, but the purity of his soul fire made it such that his soul had no impurities. And, the soul force was the core power of undead, which was why he had lost the upper hand in terms of his senses. However, Xiao Hua was unable to harm with soul force alone. At this moment, Xiao Hua's hollow eyes suddenly lit up, just like two balls of sparks that had suddenly appeared. They were a pure and resplendent golden color. To Long Haochen's shock, the purity of his light element was no less than his own. What shocked him even more happened next. When Xiao Hua's eyes lit up, a ball of golden light had appeared on his chest as well. The golden color was much brighter and afterwards, golden liquid flowed out from his chest, rapidly covering him completely. This was. The golden liquid was thick and resplendent. Wherever it passed by, all of his aura as an undead was completely hidden away. The pure and powerful aura of light erupted from his body like a geyser. Under the effects of the golden liquid, Xiao Hui's body shone with a faint, golden haze. Releasing liquid spiritual energy externally, Long Haochen did not know what cultivation was required to achieve that, but he knew he could not with his current cultivation at the fifth rank of the ninth step. He could release spiritual energy externally and mold it, condensing armor in his twin swords, but he was unable to make it flow like liquid. Even if he copied it, it would not feel real. The golden liquid covered Xiao Hua's body very quickly, turning him golden. 
Afterwards, the liquid began to take form. A simple, undecorated golden armor surrounded Xiao Hua. Golden Foundation Armor Long Haochen suddenly remembered when he found this armor to be so familiar. Didn't the armor that Xiao Hua create from the external release of his liquid spiritual energy share many similarities with the Golden Foundation Armor? Without a doubt, the Golden Foundation Armor was probably directly related to this predecessor. Chapter 790, Is this a test, or is it imparting knowledge? 3. The liquid flowed and two huge golden swords also appeared in Xiao Hua's hands. Compared to Long Haochen's swords condensed from spiritual energy, his swords were dark golden with their aura completely hidden away. When the two swords were formed, even his aura of light had vanished completely, as if that was just a set of metal armor, unrelated to spiritual energy. However, just when the aura of light vanished, Long Haochen could clearly sense that even was even more terrifying. It was even a little light when he faced against the demon god emperor. This predecessor's strength had actually surpassed the night of judgment of the dead. Use your full strength, Xiao Hua's voice rang out in Long Haochen's head, and then he moved. Although he was the predecessor, he showed no intentions of going easy. With a flash of golden light, he crossed his swords and slashed out. A dark golden cross basically arrived before Long Haochen instantly. Long Haochen was experienced in battle. From the moment Xiao Hua had moved, he had responded. He took half a step back with his left foot and swung his right sword at the same time. Xiao Hua's cross slash arrived before him like it had been delivered there, while his attack just happened to strike the center of the cross. Golden light as resplendent as the sun shone from Long Haochen's right sword. Shining solar strike, fourth step night technique. Golden light merged in the sky. Long Hauch did not retreat. When the cross slash was destroyed, he had stabbed out with this left sword as well. He used the demon wiping flash he had created himself. Countless flashes of the sword enveloped Xiao Huo like a golden mist under a special rhythm. There were no ear-piercing sounds. Each attack was just like a strand of light. Many of the spectating eternal heroes nodded secretly to themselves. From Long Haochen's fluid movements and his self-created technique, they could tell this young man was outstanding. His achievements were supported by firm strength. Xiao Hua's actions were slightly delayed. Faced with the demon wiping flash, he could not dodge it. He placed his two swords before him in a strange stance. As soon as his stance was completed, the demon wiping flash arrived. Even though Long Haochen's weapons were not particularly powerful, the demon wiping flash was created through the combination of the lightning thrust and his self-created light ripples. Just how powerful was it now that it was powered by a cultivation at the ninth step? However, all of the golden light silently vanished when it was 30 centimeters away from Xiao Hua. There was not even the slightest ripple when it vanished. The attack was useless. What surprised Long Haochen the most was that his attack did not even seem to touch his opponent. What was this power? Was it a domain? When he thought about domains, Long Haochen subconsciously unleashed his light god domain. Gentle, golden light immediately enveloped the battlefield. After the recent high-level battles he had gone through, Long Haochen's control over his light god domain became better and better. His light god domain did not lose any power, but it did not affect the other eternal heroes in the surroundings either. The light god domain could be described as the nemesis of all other light element domains. Long Hoa Chen believed that now his domain had been used, combined with the strengthening from the divine throne of eternity and creation, he should possess the upper hand no matter what. At least, he would be able to force Xiao Hua into using some stronger attacks to reverse the situation. However, he realized he was wrong. When the light god domain collided with Xiao Hua, Long Hao Chen almost cried out. His domain was useless. That's right, his light god domain was completely ineffective against Xiao Hua. Light surged while Xiao Hua stood unmoving within the stream like a rock. The power of Long Haochen's light god domain flowed by his side like water. It was also at this moment that Xiao Hua launched his second attack from his strange stance. What Long Haochen saw was a huge golden eye. When Xiao Hua launched the attack, he completely vanished. Afterwards, an overwhelming power appeared before him. In that moment, Long Haochen only felt his body tremble controllably. Countless golden rays of light appeared on his armor of eternity. Every ray of golden light gave him a slight stinging pain. The light basically covered every inch of his body, but he was unable to do anything about it at all. He swung his swords and no matter how he used his spiritual energy, it was completely useless against the huge, golden eye. It was like his spiritual energy and all his abilities had become useless in that moment. Boom! Long Haochen was launched far away, just like he had been blown away by the gaze of the huge, golden eye. He struck the stone wall in the distance and slowly slid to the ground. The golden eye vanished and Xiao Hu reappeared. He wore the same golden armor as his two swords shone with a faint, golden light. Is that all your power? How are you supposed to contend with the demon god emperor like this? Xiao Hua said indifferently, without any particular emotion. However, it made Long Haochen's face burn when he heard it. The strike before did not cause him any damage, because the force when the countless rays of light landed on his body was not particularly great. Coupled with the powerful defense of the armor of eternity, he was only launched away. Long Haochen was not injured, but his heart stung. Ever since he had obtained the divine throne of eternity and creation and how Yue had evolved, he felt like he had the ability to challenge the demon god emperor. 
This was why he held the meeting in the Union so confidently, wanting to fight the demon god emperor to the death. However, what happened just now was like a fierce slap across his face, waking him up from his overconfidence. He did not understand how he had lost it all, nor did he understand why his swords, his spiritual energy and light god domain all became useless. Was this predecessor immune to light element abilities? Long Hao Chen slowly climbed to his feet and looked at Xiao Hua who stood there. He took in a deep breath and calmed himself down. Afterwards, he raised his sword slowly and said politely, Please give me guidance, predecessor. He would climb up wherever he fell. Only through battle could he understand the exact reason for his failure. Tenacity formed a great part of his personality. Although he had been easily defeated by Xiao Hua, he did not become depressed. Instead, he was wary. Without a doubt, the demon god emperor would definitely be much stronger than this predecessor. If he could not even deal with the predecessor's attacks, how great of a chance at victory did he have before the demon god emperor? Where was the issue? He could only look for it himself. He had even contemplated using Hao Yue's power here. However, despite Hao Yue's power, if he was not strong enough, how was he supposed to fight against the demon god emperor with Hao Yue? Xiao Hua said nothing. He only raised his two swords slowly and stood in the same stance as before. He still did not give off any aura of light. This time, Long Haochen directly used the light god domain. Dense light element gradually appeared as nine colored golden light in his surroundings. This was the consequences of the combination between the domain of eternity and light god domain. When the translucent, white domain of eternity and the clear, golden light god domain combined, iridescent light appeared as white appeared within the golden color. Its aura also seemed to subside, no longer as powerful as before. However, the spectating eternal heroes could clearly sense a tremendous pressure from Long Haochen. Eternal heroes with slightly weaker cultivations even backed up further away, while Xu Yongxiao's blood-red eyes shone strangely. Clearly, she was very interested in the transformation of Long Haochen's domain. The multicolored golden light rapidly revolved around Long Haochen. He directly used his domain technique, the Divine Light Waltz. After some quick thinking, Long Haochen understood that the reason for his failure was because his domain became useless. He did not know why his domain had become useless, but he had to find a reason for it, or he still would not be able to block Xiao Hu's attack. As a result, he pushed the power of his domain to the limit this time, and he fused it with the power of the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation, just to understand the secrets of his opponent's domain through an even stronger domain. Long Haochen moved very slowly. He used the Divine Light Waltz and slowly approached Xiao Hua. The reason why he did this slowly was because he could get a closer glance at his opponent's movements, and also to give Xiao Hua enough time to react. He did not want to injure this predecessor. However, Xiao Hua continued to stand there without moving, remaining in his strange stance. His stance seemed very simple. His left leg did not move, while his right foot was placed half a step in front. He was on his toes on his right foot with the knee bent. His left sword was placed before his lower abdomen, while his right sword was placed before his chest. Both of the swords pointed outwards. The Divine Light Waltz grew closer and closer. The domain technique's power could not be compared to just releasing the domain, not to mention the strength of Long Haochen's domain had basically increased by several fold this time. Long Haochen had already expanded his senses as much as he could. He could clearly detect even the slightest changes to spiritual energy. The Divine Light Waltz was just about to arrive before Xiao Hua. Just when they collided, Long Haochen caught a strange change. Xiao Hua's figure suddenly became illusory, just like his body had trembled for a split second according to the special rhythm of the light ripples. In the next moment, the Divine Light Waltz slowly parted an inch before him. However, it did not completely slide past him this time. It pressed up against Xiao Hua. Before Long Haochen could ravish with joy, Xiao Hua moved once more. He immediately vanished and the Golden Eye appeared once more. However, the Golden Eye appeared above the Divine Light Waltz this time. An indescribable power pressure down on the center of the Divine Light Waltz, actually directly pushing the power of the Domain Technique down into the ground. Afterwards, the huge, golden eye opened. Chapter 791, The Three Moves of Brahm? I. The same situation as before happened, and the attack this time was even heavier. With a dense, ear-piercing sound of collisions, Long Haochen was blown away once more, colliding into the wall. It was even the same place as before. His body slid down slowly. This time, Long Haochen did not immediately stand up. Instead, he sat there without moving. Xiao Hua did not utter a single word, just standing there quietly once he landed on the ground gently. He maintained the same stance as before. The Eternal Heroes looked at Long Haochen. They had already grown accustomed to loneliness, so this short wait was nothing. The Core Array of the Knight's Sacred Mountain Kyer asked Yang Haohan softly, Grandpa Yang, why isn't there any news from Haochen? He just used the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation. Will he be fine? These predecessors. Yang Haohan smiled, don't worry. Haochen carries the Sacred Mountain insignia. No matter what, the predecessors can't do anything to him. As for why he released the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation earlier, it might be because of the predecessor's curiosity towards the Divine Throne. After all, this is the first time that we humans can use the power of this Divine Throne. If it were me instead, would want to witness the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation as well. Don't worry, just wait patiently. Don't you believe in Haochen's ability to deal with matters? 
Kyer nodded and smiled sweetly, I've been overthinking. As she said that, she just sat down where she stood and focused on cultivation. At the same time, she gathered her senses to observe all the changes in the surrounding spiritual energy. Within the cavern, Long Houchen sat on the ground for a whole quarter of an hour. The cavern was extremely quiet. If it were not for Long Houchen's armor of eternity and Xiao Hu's liquid gold armor, the cavern would have been the same as before. Suddenly, without any prior signs, Long Houchen leapt up from the ground, predecessor, I understand now. A golden light flashed through Xiao Hu's eyes and he asked calmly, what do you understand? Long Houchen said, it's the domain. You used the power of your domain to destroy mine. It's not that my domain is too weak, but rather you've made your domain stronger. Xiao Hua was currently covered in armor and he was a zombie as well, so it was obviously impossible for his countenance to change, speaking is useless. You have to be able to do it. Can you do it? Long Houchen said, I want to try. Please give me guidance, predecessor. As he said that, he raised the swords in his hands once more. He looked at Xiao Hua in the distance and sucked in a deep breath. The light god domain slowly released from his body, but it was released very slowly. And, Long Houchen did not use the power of the domain of eternity from the divine throne of eternity and creation this time. He only used the light god domain. The clear, golden domain gradually became seven colored. Afterwards, it remained around 30 centimeters from him. A ball of light green light appeared with golden color before Long Houchen's chest. Every single eternal hero in the surroundings could clearly hear his heartbeat. The seven colored golden light god domain became hazy. Afterwards, it became illusory, while the amount released outside Long Houchen's body became thinner and thinner, just like it was gradually being compressed into Long Houchen's body. Under the influence of the Light God Domain, the armor of eternity gradually became multicolored and golden, while the illusory appearance grew stronger. After clashing with Xiao Hua twice, Long Houchen used his great observation ability to finally understand something. At the same time, he learned that Xiao Hua was not trying to test his strength when he wanted to spar with him. It was to impart him with some of his battle experience accumulated over several thousand years. Why was Xiao Hua immune to the light element suppression from the light god domain, such that his domain's power had even become useless? After the two failures, Long Houchen gradually found a reason, and that was a self-incarnating domain. The fifth rank of the ninth step just happened to be when the self-incarnating domain could be used. Xiao Hua was teaching him how to truly use the power of the self-incarnating domain. The self-incarnating domain was not just melding better with the domain. It was becoming whole with the domain when completely melding with it. Xiao Hua's domain definitely was not as great as Long Houchen's Light God domain, but he used his perfect fusion with his domain to turn his domain into his body and his body into his domain, which made up for the disparity between their domains. His domain had been completely drawn into his body. Long Houchen's domain was powerful, but it also covered a large range. When they clashed, it would obviously become dispersed, while Xiao Hua's domain was basically extremely condensed and refined. Although Long Houchen's domain did possess an advantage when they clashed, he was completely suppressed due to the size of his domain, which was why his domain was useless. What really happened was that within the range where the Light God Domain came into contact with Xiao Hua's domain, the Light God Domain was being completely suppressed and rejected. In the second clash, Long Houchen had fused his domain with the Domain of Eternity and had used the Divine Light Waltz as well, which strengthened his domain drastically. This time, even if Xiao Hua pushed his self-incarnating domain to the lit, he was unable to make the same thing happen where Long Houchen's domain became useless. However, the Divine Light Waltz was still unable to overwhelm him. Using his perfect self-incarnating domain, he easily broke free from Long Houchen's attack and sent Long Houchen flying once more. Now, Long Houchen was trying to copy Xiao Hua's state despite the unfamiliarity. Although Xiao Hua was calm on the surface, he sighed in amazement inside that Long Houchen's talent was just too great. In such a short amount of time, he had managed to understand Xiao Hua was trying to impart to him. Xiao Hua had rarely seen such great talent before. Long Houchen was definitely a child worth guiding. Xiao Hua even felt slightly jealous about Long Houchen's protection from the divine throne of eternity and creation. Truly completing the fusion between person and domain was actually extremely dangerous. The slightest carelessness could result in injuries from the domain, or destroy the structure of the domain. When it was severe, it could even result in a decrease in cultivation. However, Long Houchen was protected by the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation, so he did not have to worry about this issue at all. He only needed to attempt the fusion, without any fear of any backlash at all. As a result, it was obviously much easier for him to achieve this compared to what Xiao Hua had to go through in the past. Chapter 792, The Three Moves of Brahm 2. What Xiao Hua failed to understand that even without the armor of eternity, Long Houchen had no need to worry about this issue at all. He possessed the light god physique in the first place, so from a certain perspective, his body could even be described as a ball of the most pure light element. Why would he receive a backlash from a light element domain? The seven colored light on Long Houchen faded gradually. It was clearly rather difficult for him, such that his body shook gently. However, the light did not end up rebounding outwards, which demonstrated that Long Houchen's control over the self incarnating domain was very powerful. It was also a special characteristic of his powerful metal force. Finally, when the final part of Seven Colored Light vanished into his body, Long Houchen quivered and felt like he had been reborn. In that moment, he felt like his power had grown at least ten times as great as before. 
His domain had completely become a part of his body, a part of his power. It was no longer just an ability. The domain was him and he was the domain. The two golden swords in his hands unknowingly shone with multicolored golden light now, like divine tools. Senior, I. Just when Long Haochen spoke, he was cut off by Xiao Hua. You still can't beat me. The golden eye appeared once more. This time, it had appeared even faster than the previous two times. In the moment the golden eyes had opened up, Long Haochen only felt his chest grow heavy. Afterwards, he collided against the wall behind him once more. At the same time, the armor of eternity produced a loud hum and the three balls of light in his surroundings rapidly gathered in his chest. They shone with gentle light, stabilizing the trembling of the armor of eternity. What a terrifying power. In that moment before, Long Haochen even felt like his armor of eternity was about to collapse. Of course, that was just a feeling. However, he had complete the self-incarnating domain, yet he was unable to stop Xiao Hua's attack. This time, Long Haochen was completely at a loss. Do you think that when your cultivation reaches a certain level, techniques are no longer important? Xiao Hua asked calmly. Long Haochen climbed back onto his feet. As he regulated his body, he let out the air that gathered in his chest. Only then did he feel slightly better. He nodded instinctively, after reaching the ninth step, the power of techniques is completely determined by personal strength. Even a weaker technique can be used with great power. Xiao Hua shook his head, you're wrong. Your understanding comes from having not truly come into contact with powerful technique. Truly powerful techniques manicure the power of the body perfectly, erupting with power beyond your cultivation. All you can say that the techniques you learned before aren't truly suitable for powerhouses of the ninth step, much less for beyond the fifth rank of the ninth step. However, that's not your fault. After all, there are very few people among us humans who can reach the fifth rank of the ninth step and beyond. Long Haochen thought of something and asked, was the what you used earlier a powerful technique like that? Xiao Hua nodded slightly, the technique I just used is called the Eye of Brahm. It's the first move of my three moves of Brahm. I'm old now. This is what I created from thousands of years of constantly fumbling about, sensing the might of the world and the mysteries of heaven. If you're interested, you're welcome to learn it from me. If you can find another sword that is on the same level as the Sword of Eternity on your back, then I believe my three moves of Brahm will be used to their greatest power in your hands. After all, I'm an undead now. In my hands, the three moves of Brahm will only end up neglected. Reaching the end, he seemed rather gloomy, but every powerhouse present could sense his confidence in the three moves of Brahm. Long Haochen was overjoyed. He knelt before Xiao Hua without hesitation and said, Thank you, senior. He had personally experienced the power of the Eye of Brahm, and no matter how he studied it, he was unable to find its essence. The only way for him to block it was to use the three strikes of eternity his Sword of Eternity offered. However, from a certain aspect, the three strikes of eternity were techniques that accompanied the equipment of the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation. It did not belong to Long Haochen. However, the three moves of Brahm, created by Xiao Hua were actually able to rival them, which only demonstrated how powerful they were. And this was not as simple as just a technique. As the saying went, knowing one would grant knowledge in all. With Long Haochen's talent for comprehension, learning the three moves of Brahm, would definitely bring immeasurable benefits to his future cultivation. Whether it was his usage of spiritual energy or domain, they would both increase by leaps and bounds. As for finding two swords, indeed, it was probably impossible to find a second sword that could rival the quality of his Sword of Eternity in the entire world. However, he still had Haoyue. Haoyue had evolved to eight heads now. If it transformed into the purplish gold Haoyue sword for Long Hoachen to use, it would probably rival the Sword of Eternity in terms of quality. Using the three moves of Brahm. With these two swords, Long Hoachen seemed to be able to imagine his battle against the demon god emperor. Get up. Before I teach you the three moves of Brahm, you should tell us why you've come. Xiao Hua asked. Long Haochen answered, the demon god emperor discovered that I'm still alive, so it's very likely for him to wage another holy war, and the demons will use their full strength this time. The devil dragons, moon demon clan and star demon clan will all be taking part. The union has suffered greatly from the previous holy war, so our overall strength pales in comparison to the demons. As a result, we had a discussion and hoped we could ask you predecessors to assist us. With that, the eyes of all the eternal heroes there could not help but light up. Xu Yongxiao murmured, are you finally going to use us? Long Haochen followed up, don't worry, predecessors. We've already discussed that the Union will rectify your names, so that everyone in the Union will know about everything you have sacrificed for humanity. The effects of the magic film were better than expectations, which was why the Union had more confidence in announcing what happened with the Eternal Heroes. There's no need. Xiao Hua said indifferently, if we wanted fame, we wouldn't have chosen to become undead and slumber for so long. After all these millennia, how can we not get over matters like this? It's fine for us to fight, but please don't announce our existence. We have our ways to hide our identities. Indeed, covered with golden armor and radiating with an aura of light, how did he seem like an undead at all? Just when Long Haochen wanted to say something, Xu Yongxiao nodded, old man Zhao's right. We don't care about secular fame. However. Chapter 793, Launching the First Attack, The Army for Penetration, I. Xu Yongxiao only uttered a single word and she stopped. She studied Long Haochen as ideas flashed through her blood-red eyes. Who knew what she was thinking? 
However what? Please tell me, Senior, Long Haochen said in a hurry. Xu Yongshao said, in the recent years, we basically cut off our connection from the outside world in order to live longer, apart from when we listen to the news brought in by the Night Temple every few decades. If we leave this time, it'll probably be our swan song. In the past few millennia, apart from slumbering, every single one of us have been comprehending and have developed some great techniques. We hope the Union can select a group of outstanding young people for us, so we can pass down our abilities. They don't need to accept us as their master, but their talent for comprehension must be high. They must be good-natured as well. I don't care about the others, but at least give me someone as good as you. This. Long Haochen pondered over it silently and said with some difficulty, it's good news to the Union that the predecessors wish for their techniques to be passed down. I fully support that. However, finding someone like me will be rather difficult. Long Haochen was not being overconfident. In terms of talent, was there a single person in the Temple Union that could match his? His natural internal spiritual energy was 120. He possessed the light god physique. Xiao Hua chuckled, child, you've been hand. Your little girlfriend that you mentioned earlier has clearly caught Yong Xiao's eye. She afraid that someone else will take her, which is why she mentioned it in a hurry. She's the first temple head of the Assassin Temple. Only then did Long Haochen understand. He scratched his head, Kyer definitely won't have a problem with that. She'll be very willing to learn from you. Xu Yongxiao turned around to the Eternal Heroes and giggled, do you hear me? None of you are allowed to steal from me. Even without considering her talent, just her character has convinced me. She's mine. Little Long, you can't favor others like this. Another old voice rang out. An old man took a few steps forward and said, Old man Xiao and Temple Head Xu have already taken away the best ones. My conditions aren't very tough. I just want a successor from that bright glimmer of Hope Demon Hunt Squad you mentioned. Just when Long Haochen was about to agree, the other eternal heroes in the surroundings basically surged forth together, surrounding him completely. The predecessors who had been so composed earlier were now frantic. They babbled all sorts of things, targeting their bright glimmer of hope. It was not a surprise why the eternal heroes would be like this. They knew they would not have much time left in this world. If they could pass on their life's work, then they would basically be living on in a different form. Not to mention, it was normally always easier to find a powerful master than an outstanding disciple. Long Haochen had already mentioned it earlier. Even the oldest from his bright glimmer of hope was in the early thirties, with their lowest cultivation being at the peak of the eighth step. Eight of them were at the ninth step and half of them were powerhouses with domains. Where were they supposed to look for geniuses like that? Even if they searched the entire union, they would probably struggle to find people like that. Xiao Hua's actions immediately made them all remember this. Xu Yongxiao reacted the fastest, while the others were not slow either. Although the eternal heroes followed Xiao Hua and Xu Yongxiao, none of them would let up when it came to finding a disciple. Not only did they surround Long Haochen completely, just from how emotional they became, they seemed like they were about to start fighting. Seniors, seniors, please listen to me. Seeing how the situation was losing control, Long Haochen said loudly in a hurry. At the same time, the armor of eternity on is shone with white light, allowing the eternal heroes to settle down slightly in the special pulses of spiritual energy. The eternal heroes temporarily settled down, but their burning gazes all gathered on Long Haochen, waiting for him to give them an agreeable plan. Long Haochen said sincerely, predecessors, I can understand how you feel. Please don't worry. Perhaps we're about to determine victory between humans and the demons, the Union has gained many outstanding young geniuses recently. Don't worry, predecessors. I can promise you that I can find a hundred disciples to inherit your teachings that are below forty years of age and above the eighth step in cultivation. Our bright glimmer of hope will be included as well. As for how you choose in the end, I think it should be up to you. You can draw straws as to who goes first. However, I can't tell you the abilities of these disciples before you choose. They'll only be divided by their vocations. Whoever draws the straw can pick a satisfying disciple first, until everyone is chosen. How about that? These eternal heroes were all powerhouses of the ninth step when they were still alive. Apart from Xiao Hua and Xu Yongxiao who were the strongest, the others all possessed roughly the same cultivation. They also knew that if they really did start fighting, it'd end up as a mess. None of them would be able to convince each other. Long Haochen's idea was reasonably fair. Everyone agreed to it by nodding and finally, they had resolved the chaos. Long Haochen then said, since the predecessors have agreed to leave with E, do you have any particular requests, so I can arrange them for you? The Eternal Heroes had stayed here for several thousand years after all. He did not know whether they would be accustomed to the outside environment, or if they needed anything, which was why he asked. Xu Yongxiao said, don't worry, we're not that weak. Just prepare a great big cloak for everyone and that'll be enough. As for our identities, you can just say that we're your personal guards. Long Haochen said in a hurry, how can I do just that? Predecessors. Xiao Hua raised his hand to interrupt him, just do that. We've existed for over six millennia now. We don't care about fame anymore. We just want to achieve our objectives. However, we're still grateful that you have thought for us and wanted to rectify our names. As long as you lead the Union, repel the demons and reclaim our human world, we will be satisfied. That is also our only request. We can finally see that hope in that from you. Long Haochen said, predecessors, you're making me feel embarrassed. Xiao Hua chuckled, there's no need to be modest. 
If you were limited to the strength you used against me earlier, then how would you still be able to become the chairman of the union? In the past, I had personally witnessed the might of the divine throne of eternity and creation. You probably haven't even pushed your domain to the limit. Go out and prepare first. Once we leave, I'll stay by your side for a while, until you completely learn the three moves of Brahm, dot. Yes, Long Haochen replied politely. Xu Yongxiao said, hold on, little Long. You still need to understand the overall strength of TC-63 old hags, so you make arrangements for the battle against the demons. Old man Xiao and I are at the seventh rank of the ninth step, with sixteen at the fifth rank or higher. The rest was all beyond the third rank. Just bear that in mind. Long Haochen was truly shocked. Sixty-three powerhouses beyond the third rank of the ninth step. Even the entire union might not have been able to gather that. Not to mention, sixteen of them were beyond the fifth rank and there were two at the seventh rank. This force could nullify the threat of the strongest demons, the devil dragons, at the very least. In other words, with the support of the eternal heroes, not only did it give confidence to humanity against the demons, it increased their chances at victory by 20% at the very least. Long Haochen left the cavern, took back the sacred mountain insignia and returned to where the teleportation array was. As soon as he had emerged, Kyer immediately roused from her state of cultivation. Long Haochen had just faced against a group of ninth step powerhouses, so it would be strange if she really could settle down to cultivate. She did not meditate at all. She only relaxed when she saw Long Haochen return in perfect shape. Long Haochen gave a simple explanation of what he went through. Yang Haohan could not help but beam with joy. Long Haochen had benefited tremendously this time. Not only did he gain the recognition of the eternal heroes who had also agreed to fight, there was also the good news of the eternal heroes being willing to pass on their techniques. Long Haochen did not know the vocations of the eternal heroes, but Yang Haohan did. Among the 63 eternal heroes, a third of them were knights. Although it would be difficult to find powerhouses below the age of 40 with cultivations beyond the 8th step, they still should have been able to gather enough people since the Knight Temple was the leaders of the 6 temples. Just the bright glimmer of hope possessed 5 knights. Coupled with Li Exian and the other excellent young knights, there would be no problem in allocating the techniques of the eternal heroes. The 5 other temples would not be missing out, so everyone would obviously benefit, albeit not as much for the 5 other temples. Yang Haohan left Long Haochen to wait on the knight's sacred mountain. He returned back to the dragon-resisting mountain pass as quickly as he could and in just a short while, he returned with new clothes and cloaks. The clothes were all knit from the best silk. Not only was it tough, it was cool in summer and warm in winter, best for maintaining body temperature. The cloaks were the same. The clothes and cloaks were all lined with golden threads. It was not obvious there, but it would shine faintly with a golden light in the sun. It gave off a luxurious feeling, while maintaining a low profile as well. Long Haochen entered the cavern once more with these clothes and cloaks. He handed them to the eternal heroes. Only then did the 63 powerhouses leave with him, leaving the cave after four waves of teleportations. Standing in the center of the night's sacred mountain, all of the eternal heroes thought to themselves silently. When they sensed the dense light element and the unfamiliar brightness, they experienced many emotions. Having slumbered for thousands of years, they were finally leaving and this time, it was very likely that they would not be returning here. Even though they had slept for thousands of years, it was impossible for them to not have changed, even if just slightly. Chapter 794, Launching the First Attack, The Army for Penetration, 2 Xiaohua told Long Haochen that they needed some time to grow accustomed to the outside air and elements, so they decided to stay on the night's sacred mountain for three days. They would meet up with Long Haochen at the dragon-resisting mountain pass after those three days. The demon army could be mobilized at any time. As the chairman of the union, he could not afford to continue to wait here. They had yet to come up with a plan against the demons, so he needed to head back immediately and decide. Old man Xiao, this is the situation. Currently, we are unable to predict where the demons will attack. If the demons focus on a single point this time, not only will it be very difficult for us to stop them, we can't predict where the demons will appear either. I need to head back as soon as possible. The demons will be using their full strength this time. Most of our spies among the demons have been cleared out, so the information that we can receive is extremely limited as well. Under Xiao Hua's request, Long Haochen no longer referred to him as predecessor, but as old man Xiao. Hearing what he said, Xiao Hua thought about it for a while, before saying, the issue you speak of is very severe. If you can't make preparations, any fort of the Union will collapse against the demon army lead by over 50 demon gods. However, I think your thinking is flawed. Huh. Long Haochen looked at Xiao Hua in surprise, please give me guidance, old man Xiao. Although Xiao Hua had slept for thousands of years, he was still the first temple head of the Night Temple after all. In the final, critical moment when the humans were about to collapse against the demons, he and the other temple heads had worked together and created the Temple Alliance against the demons, even protecting the last area of survival for the humans. That was how outstanding he was in the past. In terms of battle experience, even ten Long Haochens would not be able to compare to this predecessor. Xiao Hua said, the flaw in your thinking is about the word defense. If you think of it another way, you might understand. That's right, it's very difficult for us to stop the demons with pure defense. Even if we know the movements of the demons, everyone's army is flexible, so what if they suddenly change their path of attack? Or what if they suddenly split up? How would we defend? The union would only exhaust itself by running around reactively. In a situation like that, we've already fallen into the pace of the demons before the battle has even begun. It's basically losing half the war. 
Do you know why the demons have never attacked us with their full force? After pausing slightly, Xiao Hua said coldly, that's because the demons are reluctant to destroying us completely. Back then, if the demons really wanted to make us extinct, we still wouldn't be able to stand up to the demons even after forming the Temple Alliance and gathering the final powers of the humans. A major reason why we were able to survive in the end was not because of our strength, but because the demons spared us. The demons are actually afraid of completely eradicating us humans from this world. They aren't even willing to conquer us completely. That's due to the nature of the demons. Long Haochun listened to Xiao Hua very closely. This predecessor had gone through everything that happened and the demons first appeared on the Xingma Dalu. He even personally fought against the demon army back then, so his experiences were just too precious to Long Haochun. Space ripped open and the 72 demon god pillars descended, bringing a terrifying pestilence to our Xingma Dalu. Back then, the humans had just finished their war against the slumbering Calamity Alux two centuries prior. Due to how terrifying the undead was, over a quarter of the continent was occupied by undead, which were gradually being cleaned up by us, so the continent would be complete once more. Back then, not only were the humans nowhere close to recovering from the war, two countries were making a scramble for territory as well. The 72 demon god pillars only descended in one of the countries, without reaching the other country. Due to Alux, the glorious church had been greatly weakened. As a result, the continent lacked a unified voice. It must be said that this was one of the disasters Alux had caused for mankind. Out of the three empires, he completely destroyed one, crippled another and almost destroyed the glorious church. That was why the demons had their chance. The 72 demon god pillars had descended in the country that was almost perfectly fine. Although they had also been affected by the slumbering calamity, their strength was still mostly unaffected. At that time, this country attacked the crippled country out of wild ambition, in attempt to conquer it and thus unite the continent. Under these circumstances, the weaker country even believed the descent of the 72 demon god pillars was a blessing from heaven for them. As a result, how was it possible for the two empires to work together? Even the stronger country where the demon god pillars had descended in did not take these pillars seriously at the very beginning. Only when the pestilence spread at a terrifying rate with various races rapidly demonifying, attacking and claiming cities, did they realize something was off, but it was too late. By then, the terrifying powers of the 72 demon god pillars were completely unleashed. Coupled with the weaker country adding insult to injury, they took advantage of the situation and fought back with full force. In other words, humans basically destroyed itself. Faced with attacks from both inside and out, the most powerful human empire at that time was forcefully destroyed. By the time the weaker country had discovered the horror of the demons, it was all too late. The demons had already grown in power, not only claiming all of the territory of the stronger empire, but also launching attacks against the weaker country. Even after several thousand years, Xiao Hu mentioned this like he was in great pain, and at such an important time, a fissure appeared in the weaker country, with two factions blaming each other for matters, causing the country to split in such a crucial time. Under the attacks of the demons, the countries gradually declined and suffered deaths. It was only at this time did one of them become alarmed, gathering all of the existing powerhouses of humanity to unite against the outsiders, separating themselves from the prejudice based off country. They were able to dodge the influence of a desire of authority, forming the six temples against the demons. There were two reasons why the demons spared the humans in the end. Firstly, the pestilence brought on by the 72 demon god pillars could not be sustained, failing to infect even more races and turning into demons. As a result, the demons' total force was limited, which also made the demon god emperor realize that if they kept fighting, the population of demons would rapidly decline. The other reason, which was also the reason why the demons did not continue attacking us with their full force despite clearly possessing an absolute advantage, was because of the demons' natural inability for production. Basically every clan among the demons is a born warrior. They are born with great battle prowess. However, they aren't skilled in producing food or tools. This was the factor that determined that while they could possess an upper hand in war, once the battle ended and the humans were rendered extinct, the demons would gradually die off on the Shinma Dalu as well. The demon population that would be able to survive would be very small and they would have to rely on nature to provide them food. Think about it. As a wise ruler, would the demon god emperor do something like cutting off the reason for their survival? They actually let us survive to rear us, and then plunder us through small-scale conflict, or even engage in trade, while also developing themselves and finding a way to survive on this continent. That was the reason why us humans were able to survive. Fortunately, in the past 6,000 years, the demons still haven't found a way to sustain themselves independently, which was why we still haven't gone extinct. Otherwise, do you really think the demons would be nice enough to let us survive? Xiao Hua's words seemed to open up a gate for Long Haochun, allowing him to see the reason of many matters. No wonder the demons would attack everywhere when they fought the Holy War, as well as waste away their personal strength and population as well as the humans. However, they would always end the war in an anticlimactic manner. As it turned out, they never planned on destroying mankind. The demons are about to this full-blown war mainly to deal with you, because you have the ability to destroy demon god pillars, which makes the demons afraid. They're most afraid of their foundations being shaken. Two demon god pillars isn't a lot, but it's an extremely bad beginning. Otherwise, the demon god emperor wouldn't be so persistent in killing you. However, what I am certain about is even if the demons successfully make it into the union, they won't destroy everything in there. They might even retreat in the end. Of course, you won't be able to avoid this calamity. You'll be harvested like mature wheat. Xiao Hua analyzed it completely and clearly. 
If it were not for the fact that Long Haochen was aware he had been slumbering in the cavern the entire time, he probably would have believed he was the wisest elder of the Temple Union. Reaching there, Xiao Huo paused and a golden light flashed through his eyes. He said sternly, we need to stop this calamity. Once we suffer great losses again, everything we've built up over the several thousand years would go to waste. We'd be rounded up and reared once more. We might never be able to overthrow the demons again. As a result, we can't let the demons make it into the Union no matter what. I've said earlier that the issue with your thinking is with regards to defense. If you think about it the other way and attack instead, how would we face against the demons? Attack? Long Haochen like he was just enlightened. He immediately gained inspiration. Although it was blurry, he seemed to have grasped something. Chapter 795, Launching the First Attack, The Army for Penetration, 3. Xiaohua nodded, that's right. Attack. We will definitely suffer greatly if we just defend reactively. The demons will be able to do whatever they want to us. However, if we move the battlefield to the territory of the demons, we might even be able to break the battle up into parts, where we launch a holy war against the demons from multiple locations. I'd like to see how the demon god emperor responds. Will he be able to ignore us? Definitely not. What he's most afraid of is having his foundations shaken. When that happens, wouldn't it be them who are lead around by us, instead of us who have to respond to them? Are the demons the only ones who know who to destroy? Haven't the demons always stationed many troops near our six forest? We'll start with those bases. Let's see who's more vicious. Yang Haohan hesitated on one side, but, in an open battle, can we defeat the humans? In the past, we've always relied on the defenses of the fort to barely repel the demons' attacks. Xiaohua snorted, you've locked yourself in. It's already been 6,000 years, so how is your thinking still so inflexible? Do you think the defenses of the forts will achieve anything before the devil dragons lead by the demon god emperor? Against true powerhouses with armies based off the ninth step, forts will only serve as a cage that will limit our strength. Moreover, I never said we had to engage in an open battle against the demons on flat land. I understand. Thank you, old man Xiao. An idea flashed through Long Haochen's eyes. He completely understood what old man Xiao was trying to say. Since the war was unavoidable, they needed the initiative. Whoever has the greater initiative would face fewer issues on the battlefield and even more opportunities would likely present themselves. Pure defense, which was also feudal defense, would only end in a tragedy. The most critical question that had always troubled him was finally answered, which overjoyed Long Haochen. He no longer wasted any time, immediately heading back to the dragon-resisting mountain pass. He wanted to mention old man Zhao's idea in the meeting as soon as possible. If everyone agreed to it, then they could begin immediately. The demons definitely would not spend too much time preparing for this holy war. Even if they wanted to unleash their full force, they would not take longer than a month. Kyer did not return to the dragon-resisting mountain pass with Long Haochen. She directly gave her voting right to Long Haochen. It was not that she did not want to leave, but that Xu Yongxiao refused to let her leave. After seeing Kyer, Xu Yongxiao took a great liking of her. Although the Eternal Heroes were rather fearful of Kyer's aura of purification as undead, Xu Yongxiao believed Kyer's talent was no worse than Long Haochen's after a conversation. Perhaps Kyer could not match Long Haochen in terms of natural internal spiritual energy, but as the saint daughter of Samsara, she was outstanding as well, the most excellent assassin. Kyer had begun cultivating since young, so her foundation was even firmer than Long Haochen's. As a result, Xu Yongxiao had her stay behind so she could pass on her techniques to Kyer eagerly. What made Long Haochen even more unsure as to how to react was that this predecessor who had lived for over 6,000 years wanted Kyer to call her sister Xu. Long Haochen was afraid to even think about how distorted the idea of seniority became by doing that. Compared to Long Haochen, Yang Haohan was in a great mood. Long Haochen, Kyer and the Eternal Heroes were becoming well integrated. With over 60 great powerhouses, they could have firmly become a great support for the Union. He could imagine the benefits they would bring to the Holy War. Returning to the dragon-resisting mountain pass, Long Haochen did not rest for a single moment. He immediately gathered the members for a meeting, mentioning Xiao Hua's suggestion. Old man Zhao's suggestion basically opened a whole new option for me. He let me see the hope of completely destroying the demons through the Holy War this time. In reality, we've always been using this tactic against the demons, which were the demon hunt squads. However, the demon hunt squads were just on too small of a scale. They're insignificant compared to just how large the demons are. Since the demon god emperor wants to lead a great army here, it's pointless for us to just guard our forts. As a result, I completely agree with old man Zhao's suggestion. We need to launch a counterattack before the demon god emperor arrives and push the battlefield into the territory of the demons. Li Xingxi nodded and said, this suggestion has come at the perfect time. I agree. Not only will we be able to take the initiative like this, we can force the demon god emperor to follow us around. When that happens, even if we're not their opponents, we can still retreat back to our forts against the demons. The main force of the demons will attack as we have imagined them to. Long Tianin nodded, I agree as well. The demon god emperor definitely won't be expecting us to attack first. We've waited for too long for this day of counterattack. Let's go all out with it. The demons do indeed pose a great threat to us now that they've mobilized all their forces this time, but if we can defeat their main force, then this will be the radical battle that releases us from this age of darkness. After embarrassing him in the previous meeting, Long Haochen had completely consolidated his authority as chairman. 
In the next few meetings, Long Tianyin stayed silent, before gradually turning back to normal as well. Someone as clever as Li Zhengji could obviously tell that the grandfather-grandson duo had put on an act, but there was nothing he could do. Long Haochen had already established his authority, while the Knights Temple already had six holy knights. Its status would not be shaken just from rebuking Long Tianyin once. As a result, the Knights Temple was still the one who benefited the most within the Union from this. Although Li Zhengji still felt rather unwilling to accept this, he was forced to accept this due to the situation. Not to mention, the demon army was about to arrive. Currently, all they could do was stand together against a common enemy. How could they afford to think about authority? Not everyone supported this suggestion of attacking. The priest temple objected, and so did a few members from the warrior temple. The meeting was fair. The decision would be made at the end during the voting process. The powerful influence of the bright glimmer of hope would not waver from just a few objections. The results of the voting was that more than two-thirds of the members supported this battle tactic. The war of historic significance between the temple union and the demons finally was about to start. With a battle tactic decided, they needed to pin down the exact details. After a series of discussions, they decided to launch attacks from all fronts, as well as an attack to pierce the lines of the demons. The six temples quickly mobilized their troops, combining the power of the six vocations. Every temple split its forces into five, sending them to the five other temples, which allowed them to arrange armies with people from all vocations. After the arrangements at each fort were complete, they were commanded by the respective temple. Time no longer allowed them to properly integrate together. After the vocations were spread evenly, the six temples launched an attack against the demon army stationed outside the forts as soon as possible, thus declaring a start to the holy war. They took the initiative to bring the flames of war to the demons. There were advantages and disadvantages to gathering 54 demon gods in Modu for meetings. At least, there were no demon gods among the six demon armies stationed outside the six great forts. Clearly, the demons had never considered the humans would attack first. Once the holy war completely began, there would also be a point of breach. This would also serve as the point that would truly keep the main forces of the demon army busy. The army responsible for this breach was the first and second armies of the Union that had completely integrated with each other, which would be personally lead by Long Haochen with the bright glimmer of hope. At the same time, the Union would place all of the demon hunt squads that had returned under Long Haochen's command. Their objective would be to pierce deep into the demons like a sharp blade and deal a heavy blow to them. Of course, this army would not wage war blindly. Firstly, they needed to avoid Modu as much as possible. At the same time, 18 of the 63 eternal heroes would accompany the army, as well as the entire bright glimmer of hope. These eternal heroes would include Xiao Hua and Xu Yongxiao, as well as the 16 powerhouses who had surpassed the 5th rank of the ninth step. This army would even surpass the Devil Dragons in terms of strength. And, although it would be tasked with penetration, it would not penetrate too deeply into the lines of the demons. The army would also be flexible, able to retreat at any time. With their destructive ability, they would definitely be able to keep the main forces of the demons led by the Demon God Emperor busy. The Demon God Emperor would be afraid of Long Haochen wreaking havoc among the demons with the army. Not to mention, his target was Long Haochen in the first place. Aside from the eternal heroes that had followed Long Haochen, the other 45 would be split up into five groups and sent to the Assassin Temple, Mage Temple, Warrior Temple, Spiritual Temple, and Priest Temple. The Knight Temple would not be allocated any eternal heroes, because the army led by Long Haochen would set off from the Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass. At the same time, they would also retreat to the Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass in the end, so they had sufficient strength there. The five simultaneous attacks of the five other temples would only have one objective, which would be to force the Demon God Emperor to separate his forces, so he would not have all of his forces by his side. This would reduce the pressure that Long Haochen's side faced. As long as they could determine the position of the Demon God Emperor's main force, then the Temple Union would be able to follow up with their next strategy. The demons were already using their full strength, so how could the Temple Union keep holding back? They were already prepared to throw some mysterious powers and useful treasures into this war. With the plan complete, they had to follow through with it as quickly as possible. If someone was able to look over the entire territory of the Temple Union, they would discover traces of huge armies being mobilized around all of the boundaries. Every temple had split its forces into five, sent to other temples. The orders and true intention of the battles would be kept strictly secret. When the six temples mobilized their new armies, Long Haochen's army had already set off from the dragon-resisting mountain pass using the night, rushing towards the demon army stationed 50 kilometers away like an unleashed tiger. Chapter 796, A God-Slaying Strike, I. The army lead by Long Haochen only amounted to 14,000 people. That's right, only 14,000. This was because he had only brought all the people with vocations from the two armies. He did not bring any regular troops. The composition of the first and second armies of the Union were the same. They were composed of 4,000 warriors, 1,000 knights, 500 assassins, mages, summoners, and priests. Each army was also accompanied with over 40,000 regular soldiers of various types, forming two 50,000-man armies. As the blade that would penetrate into the demons, regular soldiers would nowhere near enough, and they would heavily hinder the speed of the army. As a result, the people who actually took part in this attack were only around the 14,000 people from the temples. These people were all assigned the same mounts regardless of their vocation. 
There were not many mages, summiers and priests who knew how to ride horses, but they had vocations after all, so their body constitutions was much greater than ordinary people. It only took them a while to learn how to ride horses. Originally, as this army was the first army created after the founding of the Union, the temples had all chosen elites for this army. They included parts of the brilliant knight regiment. All of the warriors were above the fourth step, while the powerhouses from the five other temples were all above the sixth step. Although they amounted only a little more than 10,000, with a majority being warriors, these people were the elites of the elites from the six temples. Knight descended. The army left the mountain pass from behind, before looping around. They slowly approached the demon army camps from the south. The effects of using powerhouses in war was completely demonstrated at a time like that. With over 14,000 people all riding horses, it covered up quite a large area, but just Long Hoachan alone managed to envelope them with his powerful mental force. There was no scouting magic that could discover even the slightest trace of their presence under the Long Houchen's mental force, unless the person who used the scouting magic had mental force greater than Long Houchen's. Xiao Hua accompanied Long Houchen. He rode a large, tall horse, while below Long Houchen was the Holy Unicorn Star King. To Long Houchen's left was Kai er and behind him was Yiting. In order to conceal her dense spiritual energy as a fairy queen of light, Yiting was forced to wear a set of magic robes that could conceal her element. She was different from Long Houchen. Not only was her personal light element pure, she was also a fairy that was intimate with nature, so the light element would naturally become intimate with her. As a result, no matter when it was, she would automatically shine with golden light. She could not even control that herself. Unless she was in an environment without any light element, she would continue to glow. The other members of the bright glimmer of light were beside him as well, but every single one of them had an eternal hero beside them as well. Without a doubt, there was a correlation between insight and cultivation. All of the eternal heroes who had chosen members of the bright glimmer of hope as their successors had cultivations beyond the fifth rank of the ninth step. Currently, the happiest was Ling Exion, because beside him was a valiant female knight on a rose unicorn. When the first and second armies of the Union were created, Li Exion had been sent over by the Knight Temple. The two armies had been sent to the front lines, so she obviously came as well. Li Exion was only around 30 years of age, but she seemed more like in her twenties. She was obviously a popular choice among the eternal heroes. The person who had chosen her was also a female knight, who currently rode alongside her. She would smile and converse with Li Exian from time to time. If it were not for the prior knowledge, it would be impossible to guess that she was an undead knight. Ever since the Eternal Heroes returned, Long Houchen felt more and more admiration for these predecessors. None of the issues that the Union worried about had happened. As the Eternal Heroes had stated that they wanted to pass along their techniques and choose successors from the six temples, they immediately became closer to the temples. They were assigned to the five other temples with their great strength. Coupled with the fact that they would definitely be choosing their disciples from the group of people prepared by the six temples, the upper echelon of the temples welcomed them warmly as valued guests. Not a single temple could gather nine powerhouses that had exceeded the third rank of the ninth step. With the presence of these predecessors, it was equivalent to reassuring them completely. As a result, the eternal heroes were perfectly integrated into the system of the temple union. Kai er, Shu Yongshao said to Kai er from beside her. Sister Shu, Kai er smiled at her. Compared to Long Haochen, Kai er was not as constrained and polite before these predecessors. Instead, she acted more natural. Apart from the color of her eyes and her aura, Xu Yongxiao was a person of great beauty. Even though Kai'er's power of purification would surge whenever it sensed the aura of undead beside her, her control over her powers had become rather great with the drastic increase in her cultivation in the world of black and red. Xu Yongxiao had also taught her the ability of the self-incarnating domain like what Xiaohua had taught Long Haochen. She was much more skilled in terms of attack than Long Haochen. When the battle begins, follow me. Shadow me. You don't need to fight. You just need to pay attention to my attacks. Xu Yongxiao said to Kai'er extremely tenderly, such that even the other eternal heroes found it rather uncomfortable. With their understanding of the first temple head of the Assassin Temple, they knew Xu Yongxiao took an extremely great liking to Kai'er. Alright, Kai'er immediately agreed to the suggestion without any hesitation. Of course she could sense how much Xu Yongxiao liked her. She also liked this sister Xu very much. Although it had only been seven or eight days since they had met, Xu Yongxiao had already taught her many things, strengthening her battle prowess one step further. As they drew closer and closer to the camps of the demons, Long Haochen raised his hand to signal the army to stop. Follow my command. Dismount and leave 500 warriors to watch the horses. Everyone else, maintain your formations and attack with me. They really were people with vocations. Long Haochen's command reached the entire army very quickly and aside from the knights, all the other members had dismounted, leaving their horses where they were without creating any noise at all. Aside from the knights, the other vocations were not particularly skilled in battle on horseback. The horses were just for traveling. In actual battle, they would be more familiar with fighting on foot. Two thousand knights stood at the front, with the priests behind them. The mages and summoners were slightly further back. They were surrounded by warriors to the left, right and back. Assassins moved about outside the army. They slowly advanced while maintaining this perfect formation. Long Haochen specially had Han Yu stay behind. Of course it was not to watch the horses. Instead, it was to use the mental force of the demonic eye tyrant to disturb the scouting magic from the demons, to prevent these horses and the warriors from being discovered. 
At the same time, they could avoid any accidents as Hanyu would be there. There were over 200,000 demons stationed outside the Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass. During the Holy War five years ago, it had even reached as much as a million. However, the environment there was horrible, so in the end, only the defined demons stayed behind. It was very difficult for weaker demons to survive there. As a result, the demon army outside the Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass could be described as the strongest for any of the size forts. They were all above the fourth step. That demonstrated how powerful the demons were. It would take the entire Union to gather 200,000 powerhouses above the fourth step. This was also the important reason why the Temple Union had always been afraid of open battles against the demons. However, with the addition of the Eternal Heroes, the peak strength of the Temple Union no longer paled in comparison to the demons. They were launching a sneak attack as well under the lead of Long Houchen and the other peak powerhouses, which was they they were confident in dealing with a demon army that mounted to 200,000 people with just a little more than 10,000 people. They grew closer and closer to the demon army. They could already see the camps of the army. They could not get any closer. Although it was cold near the Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass and the visibility at night time was very low, the demon watchtowers would be able to spot them getting closer. Long Houchen said sternly, Stop. Everyone prepare for battle. Lin Exian. Boss, Lin Exian arrived next to Long Houchen quickly. Long Houchen asked, with the overall strength of the mages, how much closer do we need to get before they can fight? Lin Exian answered immediately, we're around for kilometers from the demons. We need to be at least one and a half kilometers from them for the mages to use large scale magic. If you want to maximize the damage, then we need to be 500 meters away. Long Houchen nodded, all right, I understand. Everyone gather over. The bright glimmer of hope were the commanders of this penetration army. They controlled an army of a vocation corresponding to their personal vocation. They quickly gathered near Long Houchen. Of course, the 18 heroes of eternity had come too. Long Houchen whispered, there's roughly 200,000 enemies. According to the information gathered by the dragon resisting mountain pass, there's only one demon god stationed here, which is the demon god of the 20th pillar, person. His cultivation definitely don't be weak to be able to rank 20th. His demon god pillar is present as well. Originally, there were their demon gods stationed here, but according to my intel, the other two have returned to Modu. The Eternal Heroes did not give any opinions. Back at the Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass, Xu Yongshao and Xiao Hua had already made it clear. During the war, they would not take part in any of the decision making. They would follow their commands and just fight. Their decision was clearly very clever, because they had slept for several thousand years after all. They did not understand the situation of the outside world. The current war between the humans and demons definitely would not be based off the situation several thousand years ago. Coupled with their seniority, if they really did give their opinion, wouldn't everyone listen to them? Chapter 797, A God Slaying Strike, 2 As a result, after discussing with the Eternal Heroes, Xu Yongxiao and Xiao Hu decided to not take part in the decision-making. They would only fight. As a result, despite the 18 Eternal Heroes here, the one truly in charge was still Long Haochen. In order to minimize our losses, in order to succeed in a single attack, we need all of our powerhouses of the Ninth Step to launch attacks first. We have to deal a heavy blow to the enemies, kill the demon god and throw them into disorder. Afterwards, we will mobilize our enemy and engage in a full-scale attack. We have to kill as much of the main force of demons as possible and make them suffer heavy losses. Before absolute strength, the method of battle was not complicated. Everyone nodded. The bright glimmer of Hope's trust in Long Houchen was evident, so nothing would go wrong with his command. Lin Exian had already began rubbing his hands. He was the only mage in the squad, so he would obviously hold the biggest advantage in a mission of massacre. Little Long, why don't you leave the demon god to me to handle? Of course, the demon god pillar will still be for you to deal with. I don't have the ability to destroy the demon god pillar, said Xu Yongxiao. Long Haochen nodded, I would have to trouble you then, senior. A gleam of light flashed through Xu Yongxiao's blood-red eyes, kid, are you still unwilling to call me Sister Xu? Long Haochen smiled awkwardly, I can't just ignore courtesy, senior. Xu Yongxiao snorted and said to Kyer, look at your man. He's a traditional little boy. Let's go. Let's go first. Watch how your sister Xu deals with that demon god later on. When we assassins enter the battlefield, we always behead our opponents. Long Haochen said to Zhang Fangfang, Brother Zhang, I'll leave you here to command in my place. Wait for my signal. Once the demon god pillar is destroyed, you can mobilize your side. Zhang Fangfang said, you don't have to worry. Long Haochen raised his head to look at the sky. It was dark. Although the wind was not strong that night, it was still extremely cold. It was very dark, as the moon had been completely obscured by the clouds. Let's go, Long Haochen said seriously. He lead the bright glimmer of hope and the eternal heroes together, approaching the demon base in the distance. They were so close, so there was obviously no need to hide the army, because the flames of war would be lit among the demons very soon. Over 20 figures covered 5 kilometers in just around 20 seconds. The eager Lin Exian was the first to launch an attack. The eternal dragon's fire appeared in his hand with dazzling light and the sky immediately gained a smear of red. Even the coldness seemed to fade away before the red color. The redness quickly turned to blue. 
As Lin Xian changed, his Sacred Sun curse was immediately released and the domain of the Sacred Sun was unleashed as well. There were finally patrolling guards who noticed the disturbances around the base. Such an obvious phenomenon had happened to the sky. Immediately, a sound of warning pierced through the cold night. A blue sun had appeared in the dark sky, as a dense, fiery aura descended from the sky. The entire demon base lit up with a dense color of blue under the dazzling sunlight, rippling about with the dancing blue flames. However, the blue sun did not bring them warmth, but destruction. In the next moment, balls of blue fire began to descend from the sky, directly towards the camps of the demons below. Lin Xian chanted extremely quickly and the sacred sun curse shone bright and brighter. Terrifying heat radiated from the sky. Super bursting fireballs descended from the sky, gradually gathering into a heart of fire version of rain of flaming meteors. It enveloped a wide range of the camps below. The base that held 200,000 soldiers was extremely large, spanning over 5 kilometers away. In order to repel the cold, these camps were all gathered together, which only made Lin Xian's reign of flaming meteors even more effective. Parts of the base caught on fire as the demons held out miserably. Lin Xian's attack targeted the center of the base. All he needed was a slight breeze and all the camps in the surroundings would catch on fire as well. Moreover, the fireballs that struck the ground would all explode immediately. Lin Xian was obviously not the only person taking part in this operation. Everyone else threw themselves into battle immediately. There were three warriors among the eternal heroes, which remained there. They were tasked with protecting the mages. Apart from Lin Xian, there were two other mages among the eternal heroes. One was of the wind element, while the other was of the water element. The two mages demonstrated their great abilities soon as they began their attacks. They fought by supporting Lin Xian. With their support, the lethality of Lin Xian's magic increased by at least three times. The two mages did not take action immediately. Only when Lin Xian's reign of flaming meteors had completely unfolded, lighting large areas of the camps on first, did they erupt with their own magic. The Wind Mage only used a very simple spell, Whirlwind. The spell was not particularly dangerous. It could only create a relatively powerful Whirlwind within a certain range. It was a Wind spell of the third step. However, the Wind Mage had chosen Lin Xian as his successor. Despite the differences in their elements, he still chose Lin Xian. Whirlwinds landed among the demon camp. Lin Xian was originally rather confused by it, but when the might of the wind was unleashed, he was surprised and became filled with admiration towards this wind element eternal hero. The whirlwinds seemed like they were alive, landing across the base evenly. Every single whirlwind would basically only land after a flaming meteor had exploded. The explosive power of the meteors was shocking, exploding loudly with light. The whirlwinds just happened to land in the center of the explosions. Swathes of blue sparks were sucked up and delivered into the distance, but not extinguished. His mastery of the usage of spiritual energy could be described as having reached the limit. The flames from the heart of fire were so hot that even if a tiny spark landed on a camp, it would immediately set the whole thing on first. With the help of these whirlwinds, the danger of rain of flaming meteors increased significantly, multiplying its destructiveness by several times. The water mage was even more skilled. He purposefully unleashed his spells where the fire burnt the brightest. However, he also used low-level spell, water pillar. This was only a spell of the second step and its lethality was not even as great as whirlwind. Usually, it could only knock enemies around, to prevent them from getting close. That was as simple as it was. Currently, the water pillars seemed to act against Lin Xian. They purposefully targeted where the flames were burning the strongest. However, something shocking happened. When the water pillars landed in the flames, they did not directly expand. They did not even smash into the flames. Instead, they paused above the flames, before slowly dispersing. As a result, not only did the water pillars avoid weakening the flames, they instead became its most terrifying fuel. With their support, the flames below grew at least twice as bright. Looking from above, it was quite the sight. The wind mage hovered beside Lin Xian and said, Magic is unbelievably profound. The higher the step doesn't necessarily make it stronger. Only the most suitable magic is the most powerful. Even a single sentence to the clever would be enough. There was no need for him to go into too much detail, but Lin Xian had naturally developed an understanding. Aside from the three mages and the three warriors that protected them, the others had already entered the battlefield. All of the assassins had vanished. Long Chen sat in the sky with his holy unicorn, Star King, below him. Translucent, white light rushed into the sky as soon as the battle had begun, illuminating the entire night sky. The huge divine throne of eternity and creation appeared in the air boldly. The terrifying pressure of a super divine tool immediately descended, suppressing the demon armies below. Would the pressure be lethal? Of course. When Long Chen had first gained the recognition of the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation, the progenitor Divine Hall's initial appearance had managed to shake up the demon army from several dozen kilometers away, which was why the demons had set up base 50 kilometers away from the dragon-resisting mountain pass and not the regular 15 to 25 kilometers. However, this time, the Divine Throne of Eternity and Creation had directly appeared in the sky above the demon base. Obviously, the pressure would be much more powerful. Long Chen's mental force had already merged with the pressure, making it erupt as hard as he could. 
Basically the entire demon army was influenced to different degrees. The ones most evidently affected were the demons within 500 meters of its range. All the demons below the sixth step were immobilized on the ground, while demons around the fourth step with weaker bodies even suffered huge casualties. Obviously, it did not matter if they were just immobilized. However, there was also fire raining down from the sky. The rings of dazzling light radiated outwards from the divine throne of eternity and creation. Even from the distant dragon resisting mountain pass, the powerhouses of the night hall could see it clearly. As the commander, Long Houchen did not completely devote himself to the battle, because he needed to control the situation and not lead a blind attack. As he powered the pressure from the divine hall, his gaze also locked onto the very center of the demon base. It was also when he looked over that a dark pillar suddenly began to shine with dazzling light. Chapter 798, A God Slaying Strike, 3 The dark pillar shone with an inky green light. The strangest thing about it was that as it shone, it rapidly lengthened, like a tree that was growing desperately. After just a short while, the pillar had exceeded a hundred meters. Branch-like objects began to grow from the pillar. It seemed just like a huge ant. An inky green figure also rose into the air and appeared in the sky. It immediately shone with a dense, green color which enveloped towards the divine throne of eternity and creation. A domain. Without a doubt, the figure that had suddenly appeared was the current commander of the demon base, the tree demon god who ranked 20 out of the 72 demon gods, person. Since he could make the top 20, he would definitely be a domain-wielding powerhouse. And, this tree demon god's fusion with his demon god pillar could be described as one of the best out of all the demon gods. Person was surprised when the base was suddenly attacked. As soon as he emerged from his tent, he sensed the terrifying pressure from the divine throne of eternity and creation. He had experienced this pressure recently, which shocked him greatly at that time. Afterwards, he immediately passed this news on to Modu. Before long, Modu had ordered the other two demon gods who were stationed outside the dragon-resisting mountain pass with him to return. There was no news from Modu so far, but he could sense the humans were growing restless, and his majesty would definitely respond to it. However, he had never thought the war would begin so soon, and it would be the humans who would initiate it. Looking at the huge divine throne in the sky, the tree demon god's scalp tingle, because he had absolutely no idea just how powerful the divine throne was. And, in his understanding, this divine throne had never appeared before. The demons did not have any detailed records of it, apart from the fact that the humans had never used this divine throne of eternity and creation before. However, as the commander, he still unleashed his demon god pillar as soon as possible after passing down a few quick commands. He also rose into the air and attacked Long Houchen. He needed to stop the pressure from the divine throne of eternity and creation, or the demon army's battle prowess would decrease drastically. The divine throne's presence was equivalent to a wide-range debuff. Long Houchen hovered in the air, but he did not direct his attention towards person. He did not have to deal with the demon god that ranked 20th. Kair had already followed Xu Yongxiao to the edge of the demons a long time ago. As soon as Lin Xian's attack had begun, Xu Yongxiao made a gesture to her, before silently infiltrating the base of the demons like a wisp of smoke. Kair quickly followed Xu Yongxiao. She was very confident in her speed. She stuck closely behind this predecessor, just like her shadow. She would charge when Xu Yongxiao charged, and she would dodge when Xu Yongxiao dodged. Very soon, all of the flaming meteors in the air had fallen and the demon camp had been alarmed. Large numbers of demons began to pour out from the tents. Some of the fiend and hell demon mages began to fight back. The armies that could fly also took off to enter the battle. Xu Yongxiao's advance did not slow down at all because of the appearance of these enemies. Instead, she moved even faster. Kair could vaguely see two straight daggers appear in Xu Yongxiao's hands. They were like a pair of venomous snakes in her hands. Wherever she passed by, all the demons she brushed past would immediately freeze up. They would only collapse onto the ground when they were very far away. Kair discovered that Xu Yongxiao's attacks were extremely simple and straightforward. What made her admire the most was that when Xu Yongxiao attacked, there was no ripple of spiritual energy at all. The daggers constantly moved around like black bolts of lightning. Whenever she attacked, she would never miss, and the location would be the same. Out of all the demons she passed by, every one single one of them would gain a hole on their forehead, such that their brains were directly penetrated. Xu Yongxiao was just too confident in her attacks, such that she had had already brushed past her opponents before she could take their spiritual energy into account. The only way to destroy the killing process was skillful. Kair followed behind her and paid close attention to her actions. Gradually, she discovered an interesting aspect. Xu Yongxiao's seemingly rapid movements and attacks actually seemed to follow a special rhythm. Kaya was unable to tell what this rhythm was, but it was like the constant thumping of drums. The drums would not be loud, but they seemed like they were accumulating something. That was all Kaya could sense. She was basically the strongest assassin of the Assassin Temple besides the Eternal Heroes, but after seeing how skilled Xu Yongxiao was, she could not help but feel inferior. Compared to this predecessor, just their level of skill existed a huge difference. In just a short while, over 200 demons had lost their lives when Xu Yongxiao slipped past them. Just what was she building up through this strange rhythm? It definitely wasn't the power of her domain. Just when Kair found this to be extremely strange, the tree demon god person appeared in the sky and unleashed green light towards Long Longhouchen. 
It was also in that next moment that Kyer finally understood what kind of power Xu Yongxiao was building up. Person's appearances finally made Xu Yongxiao halt for a moment. She just happened to stop below person. In just a single instant, Kyer could clearly see Xu Yongxiao completely change. Blood red light sonas in her eyes and afterwards, she shot up. What she accumulated finally erupted. It was killing intent. In the attacks earlier, Xu Yongxiao completely behaved like an undead, without giving off any aura at all. Kyer had even thought that she did not possess the killing intent a usual assassin would possess due to being an undead. However, she suddenly understood in that moment that it was not that she did not have killing intent. Instead, she had controlled the killing intent, preventing it from radiating outwards. This was the first time that Kyer had seen killing intent with such color. Xu Yongxiao's killing intent was black, pitch black. As a result, in the moment she rose into the air, her entire body was covered by that blackness. Regardless of the angle, it was impossible to tell that there was someone like her in the air. What was even more terrifying was that only Kyer could sense the killing intent Xu Yongxiao was giving off. Person was unable to sense it at all in the air, because her killing intent had become tangible like a solid. It was impossible to discover it unless it actually made contact with a person. No, it could not be described as a solid, because solids could not change in shape. It was not liquid either, because liquids would not be so firm either. It was more correct to describe it as gelatinous. Kyer had stopped following Xu Yongxiao. She had never thought killing intent could be used like this, especially in such a terrifyingly powerful way. Xu Yongxiao's movements did not seem especially fast, but to Kyer's shock, person who had been unleashing the domain the entire time failed to sense Xu Yongxiao arrive behind him. He just continued to send his domain towards Long Haochen. Xu Yongxiao finally launched her attack. In that moment, even Kyer who had been constantly paying attention to her movements felt like something happened to the sky. Afterwards, person's domain automatically dispersed in the air. A smear of pitch black shot by and person froze in his spot. He did not move at all, but his aura vanished at an astonishing rate. Xu Yongxiao had completely vanished now, such that even Kyer failed to find her. In the moment she had launched the attack, Xu Yongxiao had vanished. It was just too terrifying. Despite also being an assassin, Kyer could not help but feel chills run through her body. At the same time, she grasped something special. As an assassin at the seventh rank of the ninth step, Xu Yongxiao did not give off any aura or presence from the beginning to the end of her attack. Even when the tree demon god had been attacked by her, the demon army below failed to realize anything. Even Kyer who had been constantly paying attention to her and was very familiar with the abilities of assassins failed to capture where she was. With a god-slaying strike, the world fell silent. Something finally happened to Burson. He suddenly began to fall to the ground and the aura of his life also vanished in the moment he began to fall. Even his demon god crown did not appear. It meant that in that moment he died his demon god crown had already been shattered. It was also at that moment that a hand suddenly landed on Kyer's shoulder. Kyer basically reacted immediately, sweeping behind her with his sickle of the god of death. However, it missed, while the hand remained on her shoulder. Sister Shu, Kyer cried out. In that moment, her heart was filled with admiration towards Shu Yongxiao, you really are just too powerful. No one saw when Shu Yongxiao had appeared behind Kyer. The red light in her eyes had completely dimmed down when she struck out earlier. She had just killed a great powerhouse who ranked 20th out of the demon gods in a single strike. Kyer, the attack earlier used up around half of my power. Tell me, did you see anything? As she said that, Xu Yongxiao turned around and twisted with lightning speed. There was not a single demon left behind in the radius of 50 meters. Kyer said seriously, I saw the true essence of assassins. Xu Yongxiao did not seem to be very satisfied with Kyer's answer. She followed up with another question, what's the true essence of assassins then? Kyer's eyes gradually lit up and answered as she stared right into Xu Yongxiao's eyes, mysteriousness, certain kill, and a single strike. Chapter 799, Prelude to the Holy War, I. Hearing Kyer's answer, Xu Yongxiao's gaze softened once more, your understanding is alright. However, I must tell you and I must stress that the true essence of assassins isn't three things, but one, which is a single strike. The tree demon god's cultivation is worse than mine. I have many ways to kill him. I don't even need to use half of my strength. So why did I use my full strength, going as far as to expend so much yet use only a single attack? Think about it. This isn't the true essence of assassins, but a habit that assassins should truly develop. There will never be a second assassin's attack. Otherwise, it's a failure. Xu Yongxiao did not say a lot, but just those words opened up a path that lead to the peak of assassination in Kyer's heart. Xu Yongxiao looked at Long Haochen who hovered in the center of the battlefield and her gaze changed slightly. He must have discovered by attack. Otherwise, he would not have turned a blind eye to the tree Dion God's domain. However, how did he discover it? Over the huge battlefield that included over 200,000 people, countless things would happen in a single moment. Just when Xu Yongxiao had killed the tree demon god, he took action. A ball of green light lit up from his chest. Afterwards, the green light turned into a thick, dazzling beam of light in the dark night, directly shooting towards the tree demon god's demon god pillar. 
The green light shot through the sky as a beam, directly landing on the demon god pillar. Immediately, the demon god pillar that had transformed threateningly into a huge ant seized up. Afterwards, it began to wither at an astonishing speed. The green light lasted for three seconds. In the moment the light vanished, Long Chun flashed with a layer of green light. Long Chun took a step in the sky and lines of purplish gold symbols appeared on his forehead. He sent a palm strike towards the top of the demon god pillar. The sight that shocked the entire battlefield appeared. The demon god pillar began to tremble violently and afterwards, cracks appeared on it. Originally, the cracks should not have been obvious in the night, but they shone with purplish golden light, so it only attracted attention. With a great boom, the demon god pillar scattered into the surroundings as countless fragments. Long Chun continued to remain in the sky boldly. A huge beam of milky white light of judgment shot out at the same time, using his lofty figure and the mysterious divine throne of eternity and creation to bring judgment to the several hundred personal tree demon guards that protected the demon god pillar below. This was already the third demon god pillar Long Chun had destroyed. Hao Yue did not appear, but Long Chun still possessed the power to destroy them. The most important aspect of a battlefield was morale. With the tree demon god dead and the demon god pillar destroyed, the morale of the demon army was torn to shreds. In the distance, the human army used the knight to secretly kill their way over. They only needed 10 minutes at most and the first wave of magic rained down on the center of the demon base. The demon mages were unable to fight back under the pressure of the divine throne of eternity and creation, nor were they able to lock onto the ninth step powerhouses in the air. I've saved up that ability just then, Yi Xiaolei's voice rang out in Long Chun's head. Afterwards, there was a flash of green light near his chest and a petite figure emerged from the light, landing on his shoulder. She was three inches tall and as delicate as a jade sculpture. Her gentle aura of life was not powerful, but her deep, green eyes were filled with intelligence. This was Yi Xiaolei now, as well as Long Chun's intelligent spiritual stove. His light elemental fairy had turned into a fairy queen of light, but he had gained a new fairy of god. You can save up techniques? Long Chun looked at Yi Xiaolei on his shoulder in great interest. Yi Xiaolei giggled, I'm an intelligent spiritual stove, so of course I'm the strongest. Not only can I save up all techniques of the nature element, I can also use your power to evolve them. In the future, you'll learn more and more just how great of a help I can bring. For example, your domain technique of being able to control life has evolved drastically. Even the portion of the divine throne of eternity and creation's power that has merged with me can evolve under my influence. Long Chun smiled, if I get the opportunity in the future, I will definitely find a suitable body for you. I still like you more when you were in the form of a human. It's too tough on you for you to follow me around like this. Yi Xiaolei shook her head gently, thank you for your kind intentions, but you don't understand. Although I was very happy when I lived in the illusory paradise, I didn't have a sense of safety. I'm very happy when I follow you around. You can't chase me away. If I really want to leave, I don't need your help. When a huge, golden sword swept through a thousand meters and slew all the stronger hell demon mages who had managed to gather after so much difficulty, the demon army's final ray of hope was snuffed out. It began to collapse heavily. The human army had arrived at this time as well. It stabbed into the back like a real blade. Under Zhang Fangfang's lead with his divine throne of wisdom and spirit, they began a full-powered attack. Long Chun remained in the air, controlling the situation, while the bright glimmer of hope and the eternal heroes all focused their attacks where the demons fled. They did their best to deal with the defeated demon army that tried to flee. At the same time, they slowed them down. The 200,000 demon soldiers were all the elites of the demons. Forcing them to stay behind would definitely deal a great blow to the demons. In particular, the main forces of the demon army were fiends and bear demons. Just how great of disaster would these two clans of great battle prowess cause for humans on regular battlefields? The battle seemed like an easy victory, but just how many powerhouses had they used? They had used almost 30 powerhouses of the ninth step, with over 20 that could use domains. Even the demon god emperor would treat a force like that carefully, let alone a demon army led by a single demon god. Of course, the demon army failed to unleash their full battle prowess as well. If it were not for the element of surprise, it would take quite a toll on the humans to defeat them if they had sufficient time to react. They fought all the way until it was daytime. The human army also pursued for 150 kilometers. In the end, they managed to kill 150,000 enemies. Only several tens of thousand demons managed to escape. Among the humans, the person with the most kills was not the mage Lin Exion, but Yiting. The rain of flaming meteors covered the largest range out of all the attacks used in battle, but it did not kill as quickly as Yiting. Her king's sword domain swept through the demons. Not a single one of them could stop her attack. Within the disordered army, just a single sweep of her hundred meter long sword would lead to several hundred casualties. Yiting had probably killed over 10,000 enemies just by herself. Even many of the eternal heroes who had seen many things in their eyes could not help but glance at her in fear. Yiting's ability was special and her cultivation was powerful as well. Coupled with the fact that she was a fairy, the eternal heroes had not chosen her for their legacy, but her killing power and almost endless spiritual energy had greatly shocked the eternal heroes. In comparison, basically none of the eternal heroes had used their full strength. Instead, they served more of a role of supporting the bright glimmer of hope, leaving the glory all to them. 
This was also an aspect that arose from the experience of the Eternal Heroes. Who knew what could happen in battle? If the enemy suddenly gained reinforcements, just how powerful would the reinforcements be? They maintained their strength to deal with these possible changes. This could be described as an unprecedented, great victory for the humans against the demons. Over the past 6,000 years, the Temple Alliance obviously was victorious in a few battles, but in order to prevent any full-strength retaliations from the demons, not only did the humans rarely launch the attack, they would not pursue the demons either when they retreated. However, the situation was different now. The addition of the Eternal Heroes, the destruction of the two title demon hunt squads and the gathering of over 50 demon gods ready for attack had changed it all. The Union obviously had no need in holding back. Damaging the demons as much as possible was the objective of this human army. They were to beat the demons until even the demon god emperor was pained, so they could completely attract the main force of the demons and bring the final battle to the dragon resisting mountain pass. After a whole night of fighting, even people with vocations would feel exhausted. Long Haochen ordered the army to rest within a forest in the territory of the demons. At the same time, he let Han Yu to lead all the horses over. He also gathered the bright glimmer of hope and the eternal heroes for a meeting. A detailed map written on sheepskin was unfurled. Long Haochen crouched down on the ground and pointed on the map, we're here right now. In the battle earlier, we basically destroyed the entire force that the demon had stationed outside the dragon resisting mountain pass. Our army hasn't suffered significant losses under the healing of the priests. The army's battle prowess was even greater than what Long Haochen had been expecting. The six vocations from the six temples merged together perfectly. It also demonstrated the absolute advantage that existed when multiple vocations worked together. Continue the advance to the east and we'll enter the Sa Demon province. The Sa Demon clan is a relatively weaker clan among the demons. Apart from being resistant to the cold, they basically aren't very powerful in battle. In the past battles and wars, they've basically served as the logistics for the demons stationed at the Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass. Han Yu, have you passed on the news to the Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass? Han Yu nodded, I've already reported back with the victory as quickly as possible. The Mountain Pass should send people to clean up the battlefield very soon and collect the spoils of war. The demons have poor facilities to store food. In particular, they aren't very good at storing food like seafood. Long Haochen smiled, the Sa Demon Province is one of the furthest provinces from the center of the demon's territory. Chapter 800, Prelude to the Holy War, 2 Long Haochen smiled, the Sa Demon Province is one of the furthest provinces from the center of the demon's territory. Unless the demon god emperor only leads his devil dragons and all the demon gods over, it will take at least 20 days to reach us from the center of their territory. After breaching the army stationed outside the dragon resisting mountain pass, at least 5 or 6 of the nearby demon provinces had been exposed before us. Their defense will be extremely limited. Currently, what I'm most worried about is that the Demon God Emperor will lead his army to attack the Southeastern Fort and the Myriad Beasts Mountain Pass regardless of everything. As a result, we have to draw the serious attention of the Demon God Emperor. As the greatest Demon God, the Demon God Emperor will definitely sense the destruction of the other Demon God Pillars. Only I have the power to destroy Demon God Pillars within the Union, so I'm sure the Demon God Emperor will be able to confirm that I'm near the Dragon Resisting Mountain Pass with the Tree Demon God's death. The Demon Army here is completely fallen apart as well, so if they want to return with the news of the battle, it'll take 5 days at the very least. And that's the most conservative estimate. Coupled with 20 days of traveling, we have ample time right now. In this time, we have to do our best to make the demon god emperor become aware of us. Xiao Hua asked, Little Long, what do you plan on doing then? Do you plan on massacring the demons in the nearby provinces? Long Haochen shook his head, No, large-scale massacres are immoral and against the course of nature. And, pure demons only form a fraction of all the demons. I've met a demon organization before. They're composed of people of both demon and human descent. They've been secretly rebelling against the demon god emperor and they have accumulated some power. And, I heard the leaders of this organization is an extremely important demon god. Perhaps this strength won't be enough to influence the entire war, but if we can get their help, our chances at victory will increase slightly. If we engage in wanton massacre, this organization definitely won't make contact with us. They'll antagonize us as well. Xu Yongxiao, are you sure this won't go against their agenda? Long Haochen said, it shouldn't. The organization's actually more willing to merge with us humans. From the member I've had contact with, they said that if the humans defeat the demons in the end, they just hope that we can leave some territory for the people of mixed blood. It doesn't need to be too large. Afterwards, they will remain in contact with the humans and gradually assimilate into the humans. Kyer said, then what should we do? Long Haochen said, war is brutal. Since we can't engage in wanton massacre, we have to target the main forces of the demons, as well as find a way to deal enough damage to the demons as quickly as possible. As a result, I think we need to split up. Look. As he said that, he pointed at a few locations on the map. They were all capitals of the nearby provinces. The most powerful forces and most important resources of each demon clan should be gathered in the capitals. At the same time, the demons always put on a strong front which cannot be further from the truth. Their external defenses will be powerful, but their true internal power will be rather hollow. Didn't the demon god emperor transfer away a lot of the demon gods? We can use this opportunity to destroy their foundations. As a result, we should target the capitals of the six demon provinces near the dragon resisting mountain pass and kill the major demon forces there, as well as cause some damage. 
We don't need to kill a lot, but pillaging the resources gathered in the capital or causing damage will cause problems for the demon god emperor. The demons have a total of 24 provinces. The six provinces in the north form a quarter of them. According to the special characteristics of demons, they will gather most of their resources in the capital of each province. If the plan succeeds, it'll be very difficult for the demon god emperor to directly venture to the southeastern fort and myriad beasts mountain pass. The demon god emperor will have to consider how to attack the union as well as pay attention to the instability behind his army. Everyone nodded in agreement over Long Houchen's battle strategy. Actually, they had already formed a rough strategy before the war had begun. Long Houchen only went into more detail now. Kyer said, let's do that then. Once we have rested and reorganized, we'll split into six groups and wage war deep among the demons. Long Houchen said, the six groups need to maintain a close connection with each other. Once any of you discover any demon gods that have remained behind in a capital, contact me immediately and I'll hurry there as quickly as I can to destroy the demon god pillar. Compared to resources, the demon god pillars are the origins of the origins for the demons. It's also the very foundation of the demons. Lin Xian said, what we're most afraid of is the demon god emperor staking everything in a single attack. If he ignores us and continues to lead the army to the Myriad Beasts Mountain Pass or the Northeastern Fort, using it as an entry point to kill and pillage within the Union, we will be in an extremely bad position. Most importantly, the resources of the Union was much more abundant than the demons. We might be able to pillage, but they can do the same. Long Houchen nodded, I've considered this question seriously. It's possible that it will happen. However, the Demon God Emperor does need time in order to lead his army over. As a result, I'm assuming the Demon God Emperor will most likely split his army into two. Xiao Hua's eyes lit up, why into two? Long Houchen's simple assumption matched up to what he was thinking as well. Long Houchen said, the demon god emperor wants to eliminate me, and we're creating a mess up in the north as well. He will never let go of this opportunity to deal with us. As a result, I think it's very likely for him to lead a group of the strongest demons to hurry over here as soon as possible to fight us. This group will likely include some of the 54 demon gods he has gathered as well as a part of the devil dragons, moon demon clan and star demon clan. The demon god emperor has complete confidence in his own strength, so he won't bring too many demon powerhouses with him. The total number won't even exceed a thousand. Under normal circumstances, a group like that will be enough to defeat us, because the demon god emperor won't know about the addition of the predecessors. The demon god emperor will probably have his other group target the southeastern fort. Perhaps the demons already know that we've mobilized our forces, but they won't know some of the important deployments within the union too well. They will definitely believe the southeastern fort guarded by the warrior temple will be the weakest. They won't know that we've spread the forces of the six temples evenly. And, before we set off, we've even sent additional forces from the assassin temple to reinforce the myriad beasts mountain pass and southeastern fort. The size of the army that the demon god emperor has mobilized this time is terrifying. He'll leave at least 20 demon gods to command the army. If they directly go for the southeastern fort, it will pose as a huge threat to us, but it won't be that easy for them to take the southeastern fort. After the holy war last time, all of the forts have strengthened their defenses. And, once we find out about the exact direction the demon army is heading in, the myriad demon pass and tombal mountain pass which are the closest will send reinforcements immediately. Most importantly, every fort is being watched over by nine predecessors. Once a fort is attacked, the predecessors can reach there in one to three days with their strength. There will be over 40 predecessors together. Even if the enemy army is powerful and is further lead by over 20 demon gods, it won't be easy for them to breach our forts. They might even suffer heavily when trying to. Everyone could not help but become visibly moved by Long Houchen's analysis. Xiao Hua's expression did not change, but the admiration and appreciation was clearly shown in his eyes. He thought, Little Long really didn't become the greatest in the Union at such a young age through luck. Not only was he extremely talented in cultivation, he was level-headed and meticulous in his thinking. With that child controlling the union, they would have a much greater chance at defeating the demons. Long Houchen had thought exactly the same as him, so he did not have to add anything. All he did was watch Long Houchen set up arrangements. With the battle strategy and tactics determined, they had to split up now. The human army split into six groups, which were led by Long Houchen, Kai'er, Chen Inger, Wang Yuan Yuan, Han Yu, and Zhang Fang Fang. Every single group was further protected by three eternal heroes. Sima Xian went with Qin Inger, Lin Exian went with Wang Yuan Yuan, Duan Yi went with Han Yu, Yang Wan Zhao went with Zhang Fang Fang and Yiting followed Kai'er. The six groups set off at the same time. Long Haochen was responsible for the province that was in the center of all the provinces. That way, he could hurry off to other provinces that had demon gods as quickly as possible to destroy their demon god pillars. Although Long Haochen did not have another companion with him, he was the strongest and he also had Xiao Hua helping him. As a result, their overall strength was no weaker than the other five groups. After the army that had amounted to over 10,000 had split up, they became even flexible. They were like six sharp blades, stabbing into the northern territory of the demons. The gamble between the Temple Union and the demons over their survival had finally unfolded completely. Demon Race, Demon Emperor Palace The tree demon god person's dead and his demon god pillars been destroyed as well. The demon god emperor's expression was warped. He sensed the pillar's destruction the moment it had been destroyed. This was the third demon god pillar they had lost now. Several dozen demons stood in a tight crowd below. 
Every single one of them gave off a powerful aura. They were the foundations of the demons, as well as the most powerful group among the demons, the demon gods. However, these powerful existences that usually dominated among the demons had all become submissive in that moment. They quietly stood there, even afraid to look directly at the demon god emperor, apart from the few at the very front. The tree demon god person had died. He was responsible for watching over the dragon resisting mountain pass. His demon god pillar had been destroyed as well. Without a doubt, it meant that Long Houchen had taken action. Your Majesty, I've already passed down orders for accurate news of the situation there as soon as possible. However, the Sa Demon Province in just too far away from the core city. It'll take three days at the very least for us to receive reliable information, the Moon Demon God Agars replied politely. He knew very well that the Demon God Emperor wanted to know about whether it was Austin Griffin or Long Houchen who destroyed the Demon God Pillar. If Long Houchen had only used the power of Austin Griffin's bloodline to destroy it, then the issue would be slightly smaller. However, if Austin Griffin was still alive, then there would be a major problem. 